Uh, welcome, everybody. The Pulp and Mech Show presented by Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, Decal Works. Coming at you. It's Monday, April 1st. April Fool's Day. Must be the reason why we have these guys in the studio. 5 p.m. Pacific. Thank you for watching or listening on uh, on YouTube and listening on any kind of podcast app. Appreciate that. Lots to get into tonight. We have a shit ton of, I don't want to say controversies, but yeah, controversies from St. Louis. we got a flag, Red Cross flag issue. We got, we got Justin Barsha involved. He was quiet all year, but you just knew he was going to strike at some point, and uh, he did. Uh, so we got lots to get into, but man, we have a great show lined up. We got the two riders who swept the Triple Crown in St. Louis, Eli Tomac, Levi Kitchen calling in. They're five-time Arena Cross champion Kyle Peters calling in. Justin Shanty as well, Monster Energy Kawasaki uh, mechanic who's hanging up the wrenches. Uh, got a couple of my friends in studio as well to talk about the race and more. 702-586-7857 if you want to give us a call. Uh, let's talk St. Louis or whatever else you got. I know my co-host probably uh, will get a few calls asking him his thoughts on things. Thank you to Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, Decal Works, Race Tech, X-Brand Goggles, Renthal, Michelin Motorcycle Tires, Acherbys, Firepower, Maxima, OGO, ORW, Pro Filter, FMF, Guts Racing, Renegade, Atlas Neck Brace, Works Connection, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com, Get Data, WUSA, Wisco Piston, MTX Braking, Ethica, Troll Training, Lift Trucks for Sale.com, and Factory Chassis Parts, all on board with us. The codes to save for those companies, a lot of those companies are on PulpMXShow.com. So all the codes are there. Go to uh, there, PulpMXShow.com, click on Sponsor Deals. Codes to save are all there, and uh, man, we really appreciate it. I hear from a lot of our partners that you guys are using the codes, and they're doing well, and you're saving money, and the, the companies are moving product, and yeah, man, appreciate that. Thank you. It's going uh, going well. So PulpMXShow.com for those codes to save on many, many of our sponsors. Again, great show. Tomac, Kitchen, Peters, Shanty, all on board with us, and uh, also couple of riders in studio, a couple of guys who raced this past weekend as well. Uh, first up, uh, he is everybody's grumpy, favorite grumpy rider from Club MX FXR, Phil Nicoletti. What's, What's up, up Philip? What's up, Stephen? How are you? Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for uh, yeah. bringing me out here and squeezing me in on an off weekend, Yeah, um, spending my Easter holiday with, with you. Wow. It's great. I was trying to spend it at Outback. <laughs> that was not happening. Jeez. Yeah, Steve tried to sell me on, oh, let's go to Outback for dinner. I was like, not a fucking chance I'm going to Outback for my Easter dinner. So. $650 later. Yeah, a couple for, of espresso yeah. martinis later. Oh. $650. It was good. It Fle was good. Fleming's was good. <laughs> I, can't, I can't complain. So. Uh, also in studio, the man, he's having a really solid 250 East season for the Rock River team, and uh, raced arena cross this past weekend here in Vegas. Uh, Marshall Weldon, what's up, Marsh? How are you? I'm good. How are you, Steve? <laughs> the, uh, the, the reaction to Outback, the suggestion of Outback yesterday, last night, did not go over well, Marsh? I was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a quick shutdown. We, we were in a group chat together, and <laughs> he goes out back, and we just didn't even respond. We just looked at each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh. was like, I'm not doing fucking The outback. best restaurants in the world are in Vegas. We're yeah, literally like but, minutes from the best restaurants in the world in Outback. Come I on. mean, I just, I was trying to get off easy is what yeah, I was trying yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. You probably uh, have some Outback gift cards, too, you're going to use. Yeah, you know, you why, know can't, why can't you show me the way? <laughs> uh, lots to get into on the show tonight, and appreciate it. Phil, you had a DNF, but but then eight, nine rides in the next two, uh, pretty good. Good yeah. starts from the outside. Yep. Um, so overall, I think your riding was good. Um, improvement from Seattle where you wanted to ghost ride the bike? Yeah, that was, uh, that was a tough rebound. Didn't ride all week, then rode press day and thought I shouldn't have rode press day because press day was pretty freaking gnarly as well. Um, uh -huh. And then it continued during the day. It wasn't good. 16th in qualifying, which is about right. And I stress out and triple crown thinking I'm not going to be able to make it through right you know i was thinking i'll have to go to lcq but uh yeah dnf uh nine eight so bummed about the first one because i was in a decent position around yeah. ninth or tenth when it happened so should have been an eighth overall but that is yeah. what it is God, so. your starts are good they, they've been good yeah you know they're yeah. always a strength of yours for sure and, yeah and you put yourself in a good position you yeah. know yeah. i think uh yeah our bikes are a lot better this year and uh even though i'm on the outside i know that we have a little bit more power than yeah. we used to and uh yeah i can 
finagled my way around the first corner okay and down the rhythm lane so um it worked out all right and uh we got a shout out the, the lee diffie got a shout out i know i can't <laughs> even believe that For, he actually came up to me on press day he goes hey phil i'm, uh, I'm lee it's very nice to meet you okay. listen to that i'm like am i in fucking trouble or something because normally broadcast guys like never come talk wow. to you about besides anything the one, besides the one idiot but yeah besides one of them but yeah. uh the rest of them like RC, you know, like, yeah, I like RC, but yeah. we never talk about, like, what happened during the week or yeah, anything, yeah. you know? So, Lee was. Yeah, Lee was full on, so it was actually pretty cool. Pulp Show listener. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That's um, awesome. Taking the calls over there, holding things down in the corner. The Talon Taylor. Oh, what's up, man? What's up, Steve? How was Arena Cross? It was good. It was pretty exciting. A little smaller track than usual, I think, but yeah. I don't know if it's just who are leads, they, but. They, they mentioned the track wasn't, like, very. I mean, it's arena cost, but they marsh. They I, I thought it was put together really well. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'll take, suck on that talent. Uh, it just didn't seem like there was a skating. ton of passing opportunities in the rhythms or anything. But mm, yeah, I, I mean, uh, it's just tight arena cross. But I mean, comparing you know tracks, uh, I think so it was it was I wasn't pretty well there. put together. These gentlemen were, and I, I had no complaints okay. on the track right. yeah. from the old arena crosses I used to watch at Vegas. You know, with yeah. um, Cape, uh, Hayes and Hayes yeah. and Blows and those guys. Right. Like tracks don't look anything like that anymore. But uh, it looked like it was one of their better arena cross yeah. tracks that they had. But uh, there was a, almost a small moment. They uh, so w- they had like a twenty foot start straight away, and then you went left into a wall jump. Yeah. And then after the wall jump, you like got back into the rhythm lane, and I don't know what I was thinking. I whole shotted. One, I think it was a heat race, and uh-huh. I came over the wall jump. But the problem is, you had about a twenty foot surface into the ceiling after the oh. wall jump and I aired it. Oh no. And it was like I don't know I had to Dude, be close. I almost got, almost I almost got close. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awesome. And it was like uh, I just like ended up jumping right into the know, face of the next jump yeah. and it just, just occurred to me farted. midair and I'm like wow this could be really bad. Dude, that could have if you got decapitated that could have made ESPN that could have blew up a oh, sport yeah. like, yeah. you know. That's a missed opportunity. You fucked up, Marsh. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was that's, that was fun. Uh also uh working the camera angles, uh working on the Nas Travis Marks, what's up, Marks? Hi. How was Arena Cross, Marks? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Good times. Uh, I want to thank I'm Robbie for tickets for Vitus Legendary, Berludi, Marks, uh, Talon. They all went, so it was mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Pulp They're party. Really cool. Yeah, big pulp party there. We didn't get a pulp party at Fleming's for uh, cr- uh, Christmas dinner, yeah. but that's apparently tough. these guys get to go. That's did tough. did you get recognized? No. Oh, no. sad. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. And then also, Tits's kid ran the track and ate shit. Yes, he did, and there's video proof. Oh, that's awesome. That's good stuff. <laughs> he did the during good the stuff. autograph session when you guys are on the floor. I guess he, yeah. Really? Yeah. He wanted to do the handlebar race, his own little handlebar race, and uh, uh, he took a digger. Mm-hmm. So, but and the dad thought it was hilarious. Of course he yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. And course. he's he's filming it, and he goes, "What an idiot!" <laughs> uh, all right, lots to get into when it comes to St. Louis for sure, and Arena Cross. Kyle Peters coming on, Phil. Well, last time I saw Kyle Peters was at Daytona, and him and Marsh. Yeah, a little, yeah, a little bit of drama, a yeah. little bit of issues, yeah. a couple meltdowns here. There, are we gonna, are we gonna address this? Yeah, I think we could play we uh, Doctor Steve and Doctor Phil. Right, work right. a little therapy yeah. session, see what we can come up. Because I mean, you know, you guys are all Charlotte buddies. No, we're boy, boy, boys. Like we're all yeah. pretty tight. And, and then yeah, we had some, uh, we had some group chat right. drama. <laughs> 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 um, let's. What? Do you, okay, I'm gonna give you the chance, either both of you, to weigh in here. Do you want to take? Barsha on Jet, do you want to take Red Cross Controversy or do you want to take Eli Tomac? You can pick the bingo card on where to start with this show. Like, what uh, What do you want to talk about? Uh, I don't know. I <laughs> Obviously, the Jet and Barsha thing's a lot of drama, but I have a serious issue with that Red Cross flag. Okay, let's issue. start there. Okay. Why is there a Red Cross flag out for Vince Freeze, who literally stalled his motorcycle and is on the right side of the yeah, finish line, yeah. like nowhere near? But meanwhile, if there's a bike or hay bales down in the middle of a rhythm lane, we have a yellow flag flying, and we're still allowed to double. Mm-hmm. Like, how does that even make sense? And it then, doesn't. No, no it, doesn't. it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And <sighs> I think on top of that, they didn't even wave the Red Cross flag. There's well, no, no extra. No, I, I, I got to the bottom of that. Uh, they didn't wave it, but... When Dunge lost the win in Detroit mm-hmm. years ago, they were waving it. And it was decided that the white waving doesn't look like a red cross. Mm-hmm. So let's hold it out. You know what I mean? Like that's, that was the reasoning why. But why at our level you're in the gap of the finish line to the right by the manager's yeah, he was, tower? I He's was, off the fucking he was, track. He, he was uh, a quarter on it, but why? basically off. Jet yes. just rode a flawless fucking race, and you're going to dock him for that bullshit? Wrong. Well, all of them. None of those guys should have been docked. 
Okay, so I disagree. The flag shouldn't have been out. I agree on that. But I think if you you can't dock guys all year long and then come in and be like, oh, we can't, we're not docking anybody. Like, you can't do that. Can you? I don't know. <laughs> It'll change next week anyway, you know. But I, that's what that's what I mean. Like, the Red Cross is for if somebody's on the landing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, and yeah, there's people yeah. attending to them. Okay, I get that. Vince wasn't even hurt. He yeah. stalled his fucking the motorcycle. The flag shouldn't have been. I mean, the flag should not down, have been out. There's a guy down in a rhythm section. There's a guy but that's, sitting in between but the that's rhythm what, double. Uh, yeah. Then you still jump past them. So why is there a Red Cross flag yeah, out? Yeah, listen, you? I, yeah. I'm fucking. Pissed. Flags shouldn't have been out. Okay, but so it was. then we penalize Jet. We penalize Anderson. We penalize Coop. We penalize all these guys. Like, yep. okay, yep. Eli saw it. He did his due diligence. All right, but where where the AMA screwed up? So where's the penalty on those guys for that? The flag should not have been out. Okay, so yeah, that that I suppose after the race, Pelletier and the AMA mm-hmm. could review it and be like, hey, the flag shouldn't have been out. You know, I don't know. But but then if you say that and Tomac and these other guys don't jump it and they lose no, spots, I, I mean, I get, you I, can't do I, that. I, I you get can't. that. I just have the problem. It's like, to, like I said, yeah. in a rhythm lane, if there's a six-foot tough block in the middle of the fucking track, okay, that's a hazard. Yeah. We only have yellow flags waving. Yeah. That's well, it. I don't know where that because, hay bale is, Because though. flaggers don't have red crosses. AMA officials have the red crosses, okay. I believe, right? But that hey, Bell, am I right about that? I think so. Yeah, no, you're right yeah, about the, that. The, the, there's certain flaggers that they only get a yellow flag. Okay. And and there's six AMA guys or whatever number that have the all the dude's flags. dude's not on the track. Get it off. There's yeah, no yeah. reason for it. I, I, I'm with you. I was so mad about that. I'm not even in the race. <laughs> you know. I just, uh, listen, I, I, I in the press box in the moment, I was telling Lewis or Kellen or somebody. I'm like, there shouldn't be a flag. He's off the track. Mm-hmm. And what? Technically, like his rear fender was on a little bit on the, but dude, no one was going to land on him. It was fine. No, yeah. Even if you wanted to try and land on him, I doubt you could have landed on him. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, and to roll the inside like Jet did and then like focus on the ruts up the face, like it's actually pretty hard. AP said that he got docked and he said he, he was taking the inside, coming in, head down, looking at the rut. And then yes. as soon as he came up, he was like, oh, shit, yeah, too late you're, then. You're yeah, screwed. Yeah. You know? But so. the comeback from the A would be like, look, Tomac saw it, and this guy saw it, and that guy saw mm-hmm. it. But that, that, but that, for instance, that instance is like, that judges millions of dollars one way or the other by the end of the season. Yeah. It could, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, and it's just yeah. like, uh, you know, <laughs> that piss, it just pisses me off, you know? Yeah. Meanwhile, in practice, like I said, there's a bike down in hay bales, and you can't even double through the rhythm, okay? But there's no medic flags or nothing. I mean, it's a severe hazard, to even if you wanted to try jump through the rhythm. But then I got RJ to the left or right of me, triple, tripling, weaving through these bikes and stuff, which is, like, deadly. No medical flag, no nothing. I know? mean, even all year, you, you can see people down at a rhythm section, and there's almost never been a red waving or a red ever in the rhythms. There's a guy down in the middle of the right. rhythm, and you're still jumping yeah. right past him. Yeah. No, listen. Uh, Bad call. Flagging's Bad call. an issue. It's always been an issue. And outdoors, I would say it's worse. It's, and outdoors, it's mm. sometimes horrific. But when does the AMA ever take the fault? Be like, hey, sorry, yeah, we screwed up. They never get penalized for it. You know yeah. what I mean? It never, ever gets put back on them. It just always gets brushed off. Oh, it's always the rider that gets Right, shafted with it. I, you know? I, look, I, I, I'm 100% agreeing with you. If they went back and reviewed it, though, and said, hey, we were our bad. The flag shouldn't have been out. Everyone's good. Well, what about the dudes that singled and lost time or mm-hmm. could have passed somebody? Mm-hmm. Or how do you do that? Like, how I do mean, you? For instance, uh, San Diego, heat race. Billy Leninovich went down on yeah, the landing of on the, the finish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Took forever to get the flag out. Yeah. Okay, there's a red cross. Why are you not hustling, or why do you not I, have it? I think they didn't see it. The guy didn't see it. He's on the face of the takeoff. He didn't see what was going on in the line. Okay. Yeah. Well, they, exactly. Yeah, yeah. no so, fault for AMA there. No, no fault for AMA there. You got dudes crushing each other <laughs> on the landing. <laughs> yeah, it's like put dude, Bill out for what? the year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, listen, I, I agree. I agree. We're in the press box going, oh, my God, wave the flag, wave the flag. Yeah. yeah. My blood pressure's through the roof already. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a long show. Yeah, um, I hate that. Yeah, so... Okay, so in your eyes, no penalty, Marsh. I'm. I don't see where the penalty. I don't see why there should have been a penalty. Jet 
none of the... I think it could be easily excusable saying, like, okay, we made a mistake. We should not have had the Red Cross flag out and, just, as, and just maybe, as much as the and other And maybe way. if they review the film and someone passed someone or someone made up time, maybe you put the guy back. Yeah, the race is Do you know over. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but but I'm saying, like, well, it was... Oh, it was up. It was up the second last lap, right? It was, yeah, but it was, Jet had crossed it yeah, though. Yeah, it, yeah, You know, like yeah. it didn't have. I'm saying Anderson right jumped after, twice. Anderson jumped twice, right? But, Which is such an Anderson thing to do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Degaff, dude. Oh, Degaff. He probably saw it. He He's probably, like, ah, screw it. He probably saw it. He <laughs> He's jumped. like, everybody else is jumping. They're not going to dock everybody. It turns he, out they dock everybody. Yeah. <laughs> he probably jumped the first time and then noticed it, and it was like, fuck it. I'll jump it again. Yeah. I mean, I'm, already yeah. I'm screwed there. already. I'm screwed already. Knowing Anderson. They can't, they can't find me twice. No, they can't. No, they can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they can penalize you twice. I mean, it, and when you're in the moment, though, and you just see guys jumping the Red Cross in front of you, it's almost like you have to make like a – conscious decision it's like oh do i want to keep up with the race maybe yeah. they didn't see them jumping it or maybe yeah. this won't yeah. happen yeah, yeah. you know and then it's like it. yeah. yeah and then like look uh justin hill flat out ignored blue flags i oh, watched it with justin Kate. was so bad i love justin no awesome but and, and like Even he cost sex in a spot yeah a hundred percent he cost sex in a spot he did not move over he didn't care he was weaving and racing yeah. and getting the blue flag like he was even in jet's way and jet was revving it at him yeah you could hear jet revving yeah. behind him so like to me, AMA should go to Justin and be like, "You're docked two spots, three spots. I don't know. Yeah. You, but there's cost no, there's no, yeah, there's yeah. no rule for that. There no, there isn't. I know. There's no rule for I it. Know. So, yeah, what are you gonna do? But like, I don't know. Like, yeah, it is. It is pick and choose what for the AMA at times on what they want to enforce and what they don't. And then oftentimes too, they flat out miss dudes uh, jumping on red crosses. They mm -hmm. just don't miss it. They just mm -hmm. miss it. Like they they make mistakes yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah, you should not have to. You know, blue flag stuff. You're not. You should not be able to overtake on a blue flag. Ever, yeah, you should not be able to like. Yeah, that happens every weekend. Every weekend, which <laughs> yeah. is screwed up, you know. Yeah. Like there was a yard. What was that second main when Jet was coming up through, or somebody? There's like five or six lappers, and they're all racing each other. Yeah, and they're trying to get. You know, the yeah. leaders are trying to get through, but the other guys are trying to advance under the blue flag. It's like what? Yeah. No, I felt bad for Cade because I mean, Cade was. I was watching that race. I don't know why. And Hill was like, "Yeah, he got Cade by Cade slowed down." <laughs> He got Kate, and then he would not move over. Coop ripped. Kate, a new one. Everyone yep. knows that. He said, get out of the way. He's like, I'm racing for 15th, and obviously Coop doesn't care about 15th, you know? Like, that yeah. does not bother him. But then Coop also ripped. Justin Hill won, too, and Justin said, yeah, I apologize. I'll be more aware next time. <laughs> Whether he is or not, yeah, but yeah. that's all Coop wanted to hear was just like, all right, yeah, okay, he recognized he was wrong. Cade yeah. didn't want to recognize he was wrong well, listen, or whatever. Uh, uh, Hill gave, gave Coop a spot. He gave yeah. him the second place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, he, there's no, he doesn't get sex in without it. So, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Phil is brought to you by the folks at ORW. Uh, this is the butt patch that the the Club of Mex guys run on the back of their butt. It's o Off Road Warehouse. The code is Pulp Mex. They got stores all across America. You've done some signings for these guys as yep. well. Awesome. Uh, they take get your truck to the track in style with ORW. Thank you to those guys for coming on board. Use the code Pulp Mex. Stores all across America, like I said. So, and they install everything they sell. So, I took the new I took the new Silverado there. When I got it, and your new gas guzzler, it's yeah. awesome. Nah, I Love got the it. smaller motor, so I don't know if it's still a gas guzzler. But Phil's a Dodge guy. You're not gonna sell him on it. Not gonna do it. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so thanks to the folks at ORW for bringing us Phil Nicoletti from Club MX FXR, and uh, also Decal Works bringing us uh, Marshall Welton. Uh, decal Pulp MX24 is the code to save with decalmx.com. Uh, they do the graphics for you guys over there. They do graphics for Red Bull KTM as well. So thanks to the folks at Decal MX for bringing Marshall Welton on the show. Uh, and again, use the code PulpMX24 to save. Thanks you to those guys. Also, um, yeah, thanks to those guys. So uh, we got Kyle Peters coming up as well. Um, so, Phil, I did a little bit of recon. Mm. Um, you told a story at dinner last night that you really ripped into RJ. <laughs> Do you feel bad? No. About ripping into RJ? Yeah. This past weekend? Yeah. No. You said at dinner last night. Maybe you were a few martinis deep, but you were like, <laughs> I feel kind of bad. I, I did feel kind of bad. And like after, before the third main, like I tapped RJ and I kind of like winked at him because after the first main, I was pissed yes. at him because he ran me out and I barely hung on to you, it. Because you, There's, okay, you, you, I'm going to be honest. Cute. You gave him a little wink like that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'll be honest. There's three people I really don't want to mess with just because of RJ, Levi, and Smitty, yeah. like they're in a championship. Like if I'm behind them or I, I'm ahead of them, I'm not. Other than Anaheim two, when I was out front leading, like yeah. listen, I'm not gonna really try and screw those guys yeah. up. You know what I mean? I'm gonna hold yeah. my line. If you're running it on me, okay, I'll give it to you. go. You know, like yeah. I 
I get that part. Yeah. RJ went in the corner before the finish line. You know, his first lap, like, I get it. But he put me up into the into the fucking bales. And, like, I was teeter-tottering. Like, I almost whiskeyed off the berm, you know? So I was pissed. So I went into the next corner, and I was going to center punch him. <laughs> but I let it go, and I went down for the second main, and obviously I was pissed because my bike had broke. You yeah. know, we had an issue or whatever, so I was already pretty revved up. And I walked up to RJ, and I <laughs> I said some bad words. And I said, listen, I said, you ever do that again? I said, we're going to have a fucking problem. I said, I'm going to put you on the ground, and I'm not even in a championship hunt, dude. Okay? Like, I don't care. <laughs> he has got don't? two weekends in a row where he's getting interactive with yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah, just give me my give me my space, man. Like, I'll <laughs> let you sneak by on a straightaway or whatever. He goes, oh, I didn't mean it. You know, did you go down? I said, no. I said, I held on to it. But yeah. you do it fucking again, RJ, because... RJ's hit me before. I kind of let yeah. it go, you know. And like I said, I like RJ. Just don't fucking do that. I have a response know? to RJ. Yeah, what'd he say? Phil was not happy, and the bad part was I truly had no idea what he was talking about. I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to like uh, stoke the flames here, but. He doesn't know why. I don't think RJ knows half the stuff. Well, ninety <laughs> percent of the shit that's going on out there. Anyway, he's just wide closed. Wide open. He's right, just wide right. open. You know. <laughs> I mean, in the way he was riding, well, he, he was got wide bad starts, open. So yeah, he was so. on the move, right? But I was maybe in sixth place. You know yeah. what I mean? So it wasn't like he was terrible. Right. But yeah, he put me up against the rings, okay. and I was just like, dude, what the fuck, <laughs> you know. All right, we do have a caller. Uh, he has a take on the on the red flag. Scott, what's up, man? How are you? Sorry, I, I'm probably a few minutes uh, behind on the stream. No, you're here. fine. So, what's up? So we understand that that he shouldn't, or that you know, he shouldn't have jumped on the red flag, and the red flag should not have been there, right? We understand the red cross flag shouldn't have been out for Freezy. Mm -hmm. But the rider doesn't know that the red cross shouldn't have been out, so it shouldn't change the fact that he got penalized or not. Like, he should understand that the red flag means don't jump, right? Like, how are we not talking about that aspect of it? No, 100%. But when you come out of the right hand or before that finish line, do you know how hard it is to stay focused on which rut you're I, taking? <laughs> I do not. And we all heard JT's take on that. That's 100% fair, right? Mm -hmm. But, and for, forgive me for not knowing, but did Eli see the flag? Yeah, he must have. But it was last minute where he, he checked up. Because he was going to go for that finish line. So when you see Jet go over and he, he lands right after the finish line, he looks back and he knows he screwed up, right? Yeah, he must have just saw right out of his peripheral as he took off or something. I think for the amount, of people, that, yeah. I think the amount of people that did it that shows that it wasn't it was, visible yeah, enough. Yeah. Because like, th so, it's not like they always jump yeah. it. That still shouldn't change the fact that he should get penalized, right? Like whether the, it should have been there or not. Yeah, I mean, uh, regardless, yeah, I mean that that's that's the rule, right? He should get penalized, but so, it's the fact that he couldn't. It's just like when Mosman went down on the Supercross trip on our main. It was all very visible that the Red Cross was out, so everybody rolled it. You know, if so Jet could have saw uh, it, he would have. Right? Did they get any further? Because JT said on the review show that the AMA was possibly not finished looking at it. And yeah, it's could... official. No, they're not doing anything else. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Well, that's all. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of with Scott. Like, No, yeah I, get, I, yeah. I mean, the AMA, I don't think the AMA can be like, hey, man, our bad. The flag was out. Judgment call from the official. Yeah, no, I get it. Judge yeah. you yeah. Gotta, and we dock guys yeah. all the time on Red Crosses, so we can't stop now. No. If we did nothing, people would – like Yamaha is running over to talk about – I really about, wouldn't want to be an AMA official. I just wouldn't want yeah. to do it. Think about no. running over. If they, if, they, if they say our bad. Then you're running over to, oh, Jet Lawrence? You guys want Jet Lawrence to win? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, you know. I mean, Jet jumped it, like you said. Yeah. And he looked back, and he was hitting himself in the head saying, he yeah. fucked up. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But, again, it was just a last split-second thing. I mean, this stuff happens so fast. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm telling you, you can watch the video. Eli was getting ready to go for it, yeah. and he checked up last second. I mean, look, you know? AP was like, I was focused on the rut. My head was down. I came around the inside. I was looking ahead, and then as soon as I hit the top of the jump, he goes, I, I saw it out of the corner of my yeah. eye. So, I mean, I believe them. I yeah. believe them. No, yeah. You know, 100%. he didn't, he, yeah. So. No, but yeah, that's the rule. You get docked, plain and simple. Right. It right. just should not have been out. Right. You know. Uh, all right. Uh, Barsha on Jet Lawrence. He felt bad. He ran over the Honda truck afterwards to have a meeting. All he did. Um, Lars's comment in the press release was fantastic. He said he did not enjoy St. Louis T-bones. Um 
Look, I mean, I, he, he was trying to – I think we, we talked about in our review show, he was trying to cut Freeze off from getting him back, right? Mm-hmm. And that was not really a line – but he could have made it work. If, there, if nobody's in front of him, you just go out there to that rut and you pivot and you, and you bounce off it and you go. It's not real fast, mm-hmm. but at least you protect the inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, he takes most of the blame, but Jed is not blameless mm-hmm. is what we think. Um, <clears throat> Jet's angle that he took was taken by 98% of the guys. In the race, right? But, and all day, but you have to understand your first lap. Your I understand, there's a but, pack of riders behind you. But if you're behind you, if someone's behind you, the person behind you should know. It's just like if you're driving a yeah. car. If you rear end somebody, you're at fault. Yeah, Barsha's at fault. I'm yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I said on a blame pie, eighty five percent Barsha, fifteen percent Jet. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Barsha is to blame. Mm-hmm. But I mean. <laughs> I think it comes from. I mean, Jet Jet is winning, and he has the most confidence right now. Yeah, and he's, he's taken whatever line he's taken. Like, yeah. and he's not really considering like the other stuff. He's like, I I got this right yeah. now. So uh, yeah, no, I agree. Right. Um, I think that's kind of where I, it stems from. It's classic Stu. Stu did that in traffic all mm. the time. It's like I'm I'm Stu. I don't I can, care. I'm I doing it. Yeah, I'm James Stewart. I can yeah, do yeah, this yeah. right. And yeah. then yeah. bit him a yeah, few be times. Be aware of what I'm doing. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. look, Barsha has. I wrote in my yeah. column last week. There's been no controversy from Barsha. Yeah. Well, here we are. Yeah. But I, th- I, he did not mean to do that. But no, no, it's yeah. not. No, no. Yeah, I don't think anyone means to really tease somebody. Well, up no, like there's that, people on the internet that say, yeah, 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 yeah. it's definitely not like okay. I'm gonna go Dude, take out I, the race. I mean, at Indy, at Indy, Barsha did go after Sexton pretty good too. Mm-hmm. You know, he kind of teed him up a little bit. You know, but that sort of tee up is kind of. Eh. I don't think you get like. Uh, aggressive Justin unless he gets aggressive someone gets aggressive towards mm-hmm. him first he's not just going to go out of his way to still really hit somebody no, he's only going to do it if you yeah you know he was do what yeah. I mean, look, he fill. had Vince Freeze to yeah he, well about. he must have stuffed Vince yeah and then he was trying to mm-hmm. get out of Dodge yeah shit and yeah. get <laughs> and that's what happened but dude if he would have just rolled around the inside yeah around that tough block like they were doing there in the was LCQs, a rut there right there, there, there was a rut. not in the mains but there was during the LCQs and stuff that they were all taking okay I would get that. But, fuck. So should Bar should be penalized? Um, He's not getting penalized, but no, should he be penalized? No, I mean, fuck. I don't know. I mean, dude, that was really hard. That was hard. It That's was... You, you could have broke his forearm. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, that 100%. was that was absolutely ridiculous. But, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so No one should give Jed a hard time about anything, ever. That kid took that on the chin and carried on. Lost how many points? Eight. Eight points yep. because of that. Mm-hmm. Didn't bitch. Didn't complain. Literally took the fucking hit. Yeah. Talked to Bam. Just like, listen, okay, yep. I get it. Yeah. And moved on. Right. No? You're going to tell me somebody else in a championship spot at, at that point in time wouldn't have had a fucking meltdown? Respectfully, you look back to like San Diego and you had the Jason Jet incident and how he reacted then and then how he reacted there is yeah. a completely different yeah. situation. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's a great point. Uh, you know. So kudos to Jet for doing that, for oh. sure. Like, because if that was me, I'm going to jail in St. Louis if that <laughs> happened to me. <laughs> I'm, I swear. Do you post his bail money, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. We, we'd take a go for If me. someone hits me like that, I don't care if it's on accident or yeah. whatever, you're. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think, I mean, Ollie Stone, team manager told me that Justin told him he thought about pulling off. He felt so bad. Now, whether that's media talk, I don't know. But Barsha yeah. did feel bad. He put on Instagram today. I don't know if you guys mm-hmm. saw it. Yeah, it's not his style to do that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Bam actually said that's not his style yeah, to do that. Yeah, he did say that. <laughs> <laughs> Might have just, yeah. yeah. yeah let's right. walk that one yeah, back yeah, a little yeah. bit. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah. I mean, look. There's people who are like, yeah, he meant to do that. Take out Jet Lawrence because he doesn't like. Like, no, no he didn't do. No, he didn't no, mean any of that. No, but. but I, I did have to laugh. Is that the red flag was Vince Freeze's broken bike? Barsha was Vince Freeze behind him. <laughs> Vince Freeze in Dallas took Jet down, just riding, just getting lapped. And then we, of course, we have all the other things that Vince has done, mm-hmm. dude. The aura around the one two five is <laughs> insane, just... and the fact that Mitch Oldenburg goes down in main one, yes. and he's being blamed that it's Vince, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, even yeah, better. Vince. Ricky's just like, oh, Vince, Vince freeze, freeze, Vince. It's just like, dude, oh. for fuck's sake, it's fifty five. <laughs> You're we're watching the same monitors, right? Like yeah. we are, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. 
if you've been around the sport, you should know Vince does not look like Oldenburg on a motorcycle. Right. I can just. Yeah. Oldenburg's taller. He's tall, skinnier. Yes. Yes. I, yes. Come on. <laughs> Why are we calling Oldenburg Vince fucking Freeze? You know? Okay. Oldenburg felt really bad about that. No, I know, yeah. but that's just yeah, a race. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, right, like right. I, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't blame <laughs> Oldenburg for that. Did you see Malcolm take Oldenburg out on his Instagram? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh no, but I did get on the plane with Oldenburg, and I said, "How was he?" He goes, "Malcolm fucking clean." <laughs> and me. then so he said in the interview, "It's on Freckles' Instagram." Oh, it is. Yeah. Can I watch yeah, it real you quick? Can watch yeah, it. yeah. And then he said, "Malcolm came up to him before the next man was like, did I hit you?'" <laughs> Shut up. Oh, yeah, did I? <laughs> Oh yeah! Watch, Did I watch, get you, bud? Watch it! Watch the Instagram. Um, you know, yeah, it, it's it's something is, else. Is it on the start one? It's the next no, one, I, need I think. To slide. Yeah, you got to slide. Oh. One more. And then it's like oh, that's it. there it is. Yeah. And then, yeah, did I get you, bud? Oh, no, oh, like, oh, sorry. No, I even looked back. Oh, did you go down? I'm sorry, dude. He drug him up the face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <oops. laughs> I thought that that was about maybe the funniest oh. thing I heard all night. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Malcolm was like, "Hey, man, like." Like he was like feeling bad about it, but <laughs> nah, he didn't feel that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so did I get you? D- yeah, you got me. Yeah, you, <laughs> you got you. Fucking got <laughs> you me. You got all right. me. Uh, uh, all right, we're gonna talk more about Tomac and uh, and more coming up here. Uh, Wisco Piston, the Honda HRC guys have been using Wisco for a couple of years now. Obviously, to a ton of success. Uh, 450, 250 programs using the pistons. They got a full range of performance components for dirt bikes, UTVs, and more. Pulp 24 is the code to save with Wisco. They've been manufacturing pistons right in the USA for over 80 years, so that's the code. You're looking for a, p- a piston, you're looking for a Garage Buddy engine rebuild kit, two stroke, four stroke pistons, all of it. Uh, Pulp 24 is the code to save with Wisco. Wisco bringing you our first guest of the night. He's now a five time Arena Cross champion. He uh, clinched it here in Vegas over the weekend at the Orleans Arena, the AMA Arena Cross Series. It's Kyle Peters. What's up, KP? What's going on, boys? How are we doing? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah that, that was uh, pretty cool. Like, are you – you had eight points going in. Brees swept it. But, I mean, in your mind, you're like, look, dude, I'm just – just do the – jump the jumps, basically? Yeah. Essentially, just uh, just here to get the job done. <laughs> right, right. Was it – was it, I mean, look, you've won a bunch of these before. Was it nerve-wracking or what? how was it? Uh, this one was definitely different. Um, just throughout the season, um, all the adversity, being sick to my thumb injury in Daytona. Mm-hmm. This one was uh, probably the toughest mentally and uh, just everything that came along with it, for sure. Yeah, five-time champion. We had Buddy Antonis on the show last week, and he was oh, like, yeah. he was like, ah, I kind of, he goes, KP's awesome, but record, that's a nice record I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, KP. What are you doing? Uh, I'm uh, laying on the couch living the Phil Nicoletti life. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Only I'm not a champion. You are. Yeah. You we, know? We've, got, we've got all the lights off, uh, TV off, just oh, you, sitting well, here in the dark. With all that money you made, shoot, yeah. man. What's he, what's he making, 500 700k nah, a easy, year? Easily. Easily, right? Easily. Yeah. I'm yeah. almost making as much as Phil. Oh, boy. <laughs> Phil well, has a – It ain't that much. <laughs> Phil then, has huh? a sweet <laughs> deal. Phil dude. has a sweet deal. <laughs> dude. I do not have a sweet you do. deal. You have a good deal. No, I no, I don't. Yeah, Motorsport.com on board. Oh, I, yes, know. I do have great sponsors, 100%. That's what I mean. I don't know if my deal is so – my. <laughs> I don't think I have a sweet deal, but I have great sponsors. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, KP, how was the Vegas round? How was the crowd? How was the track and all of that? Like, what was it like for you? Uh, for me, I, I feel like it was probably the best round that we've had all year. Um, it, it seemed like the, the stadium was pretty crowded. Um, I w- starting on the outside, like you couldn't like go around there and see mm-hmm. who was all there, but, uh, it, it seemed pretty packed. Uh, track was awesome. Um, it seemed a little bit more technical than, than what we've had in the past mm-hmm. and the dirt. I mean, it, it's Vegas dirt, yeah. so it yeah. was, it was hard packed, but I mean, it held up well. Um, Marsh, what, what do you think about it? Yeah, I thought the track was put together well. I mean, I thought it was a good racetrack. There, I I made quite a few passes. The last main, I came from last to fourth. So, yeah. I think I think the opportunity was there. Yeah, the, the the obviously in the arena cross, the second main, you guys start the top six go to the back row, mm-hmm. but then Brees yeah. won. KP, you got third. Marsh, you got fourth. No, uh, or, I got third the first. KP got second. No, I mean the second main. Oh yeah, the I second got, main. I got fourth in that. Yeah, like main. so, Brees, KP, and you. All got through the pack mm-hmm. from a second row yeah. in the second main. 
right? right? Yeah. yeah. Which tells me the track was a little tougher. Is yeah. What I was, yeah. You know, like for an average guy. Yeah, there's some yeah. separation in the whoops for sure. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So, KP, uh, you did catch and pass Brees in the heat, though, as one of my spies were, were telling me, the guys that were, went to the race. Yeah, yeah. Um, the heat started off really well. Um, felt really good on the bike. There was a little bit of traction out there, and I was – it seemed like I could I could find it pretty good. Um, had the old Phoenix Honda 250 on on the rev limiter. <laughs> I was going to ask you you went so you went back to a 250 for this weekend just just yep. because you're more familiar with it. Just that, that was you know. Yeah, just yeah. kind of. I, I have more time on it. I know what it's going to do. I have I, I just know it mm-hmm. better. So uh, we talked last week, Marsh, about the ideal bike for arena cross. Mm. What do you think it is size? 350. I, I mean, we were probably, it probably would be good. I think a, a properly tuned 450 would be great. I just like a mellower. Yeah, 450? if you could you just get the a little more traction, yeah. like with in like lower first gear, I think that'd be great. Yeah. I think just a little more tunability on a 450. I, I didn't mind riding the 450. Yeah. Was there any shenanigans with Brees, KP? Any shenanigans? No. Okay. No, no shenanigans uh, at yeah, all. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's eight yeah. back, like, and they, they do single points. So, yeah. I mean, if you're Brees, you're like, uh, it's kind of over. It can't really do much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it it definitely could have went either way, obviously, because uh, you know how racing goes. Mm-hmm. Anything can happen. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, it wasn't uh, one of the Daytona rounds where it was <laughs> <laughs> super sandy and, and it was just a toss up. But, uh, but yeah, it was it was good to finally lock it up and get some weight off the shoulders. This was uh, this is your fifth championship, and it's is this the hardest one, KP? The most drama, the most uh, stuff you had to overcome. Definitely the most drama, the most I've had to overcome yeah. um, from from being sick with COVID for four rounds, and then the Daytona incident, and just all of it together. Yeah. Uh, very, very stressful. Uh, a lot of anxiety there. <laughs> Think about this. And we've talked, we talked about it a bunch when Danny and I were there, you were third in the LCQ with wow. two fucking we were turns to go. We were announcing it. Not yes. like it's old KP. Two mm-hmm. turns to go. Yep. And KP gets in. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that was, <laughs> I mean, I've never seen, I've never seen that. So that yeah, was, it was full blown God thing in there. Oh uh, yeah. I, Cause it was over. I was like, oh, like there's nothing. I, I did everything I could do. I was gave it a hundred percent, and that that's all I had. And if that would have happened, it would have been over. Yeah, like, championship yeah. over uh, everything. Like, yeah. like, well, maybe not. I mean, who knows? But probably for sure. Probably, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Un- it would unreal. Have been very difficult to come back from for sure. So, uh, Phil, are, are Marsh and KP, what's the status of of them right now? Where are we at with that? I'm not K- <laughs> KP. Where, where are we at? I, I asked KP. <laughs> he said they were fine. So. Uh, so uh, Marsh and I, Marsh and I talked. Okay. Uh, okay. Friday, in between practice, <laughs> um, and I, I went up to, to him and apologized, and I was like, "Listen, I, I was hot headed. Um, obviously, when you, when you get third in the heat race, it's not good because your second row starts <laughs> yes, from yes. from the start, and it's like that the way it was there." Like you were second row, it was going to be bad night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because Mar- uh, yeah, Marsh called me after after the whole deal. Because after that after that heat race, I saw you beeline it around the track. You <laughs> cut Marsh off. You roosted him, and then Marsh sure. said, "Fuck I was ready. it." I yeah, was, Marsh I said, was "Fuck ready this." To go. And fired, like I said, yeah. if everyone doesn't know, we're all really yeah, good buddies. Absolutely. You know, like yeah. we would take a bullet for one another. And like, sure. next thing you know, Marsh saw, caught me off guard. <laughs> Marsh saw red, <laughs> and then it just came out to the parking lot. We're screaming at each other. I'm yeah, ready to just I didn't know it bike. went into the parking yeah. lot. Oh, yeah. I didn't know it went. It escalated yeah, yeah. KP into the parking lot. <laughs> so I, I went full Phil Nicoletti, <laughs> <laughs> blacked out. Yeah, blacked yeah. out. He blacked out. Yeah. but I have to say, KP, and we talked about it on our show. I'm I'm Team Welton on that. I know you were a little mad that you know he didn't let you in the main. But they only took the top two, mm-hmm. and I know he's not racing the whole series, but he's got to get in the main to make money. So I, I feel, KP, like you said, you apologized. I felt like you were in the wrong there, to be honest. You and I are friends, but I, I thought you were a little bit in the wrong also there. I mean, I, I was definitely in the wrong. Um, I, I'm still learning, still trying to find things. Um, Student yeah, of the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, but I'm glad it all worked out, Marsh, right? We're, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's worked out. So yeah. this weekend, Marsh, you were, yeah. Well, KP, let me ask you this. 
talking about, did you think that he was there to kind of help Brees because they are on the same team? I mean, te- team tactics. He, oh, Mark shot me up. KP comes at me KP. saying, well, you know how it looks like. You know, it looks like, you know, you're here to help Ryan. I'm like, well, you should know. I mean, I feel like we've had enough yeah. time together to yeah. know. You should know whether you hear it from somebody on I mean, a, a hey, thread somewhere. Mar- like, Mar- okay. Marsh tried to even take me out first main Friday. Oh, oh wow. Gosh. Oh, and we didn't know this. Oh. <laughs> now, hey, hey. I was barely staying awake watching the first main, and I'm like, you can't count me. That was spinning out in a circle. <laughs> I even stopped in what the happened? middle of the what well. Happened? So there's like after the finish, there's the 180. He yeah. went inside, and I like came off the outside berm, and I spun like oh, okay. almost in a oh, and, on a 180 degree yeah. circle. <laughs> and when I spun out, he was on the inside. Him? Well, I was on the outside, but then we we connected. And then, like, I had a moment. I'm like, oh, oh shit. And then I just, like, we both stopped and almost looked at each other. Then rolled the entire rhythm. Did uh, you guys see that, Talon or Travis? Did you guys see them? It was no, I didn't see Yeah, it was right behind the pillars. It would have been hard oh, to okay, see. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm all for, like, I've ripped Marsh a lot since I've known him the past, what, 11 <laughs> years. Like, when Marsh is an idiot, I'll I'll tell him. But at Daytona, I didn't think he did anything bad. Right. Like, I'm like, hey, I back you. You know what I mean? I think KP yeah. is just like, you get a lot of pressure. Just yeah. like, I would have snapped like KP, too. I would have yeah. went after Marsh as well. <laughs> a, lo- you know? a lot of things weren't going my way. And it was, like, <laughs> you really think? just starting to get to me. And then it just it exploded, yeah. and Marsh got it. <laughs> oh, man. We are we're talking to five-time Arena Cross champion Kyle Peters, brought to you by the White School Pistons. Pulp 24 is the code to save. Yeah, that that I can't believe you guys made contact again, Mark. Mm. Jesus. Yeah. Um, well, that was definitely it was a mistake on my part, yeah. but it, I actually just I came from like sixth to second, so I was just like on a mission, like I was yeah. kind of reeling it in, and I think I just was like trying a little bit too hard, and when I got on the gas, I just made a little mistake. Yeah. So. Yeah, it definitely yeah. wasn't intentional for sure. Right. And then uh, but, that you know and, of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Team tactics, dude. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then for and then so the next week in Daytona, we talked about this too, but not to you. You grabbed your 450, much better, much better results, KP Daytona in the sand. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been, you know, that it was a very difficult decision, um, kind of what to do, because it's all track position with, with some of the tracks, like you really need that track position and, and the 450 on the start is it's really tough to beat. Yeah. Um, especially in Daytona in the sand, like, and I knew like that, that was the only, only option. Um, so, but even after that, like, uh, like Marshall was saying, like yep. the four, a really good 450 tuned dry, right, I think it would be incredible. Um, mm-hmm. especially with the series, like with how many elevation rounds there are, um, yeah, the the 250 just isn't quite fast enough. Right, I, I it, it does make it tough. You go 250 to 450 on the grid, and if you if your 450 is like you can, if you can get a smooth release on the 450, it's yeah. kind of like, I mean, it's just yeah, that yeah much after, more. Was that yeah after Daytona when you had your bad night, KP? Like I want to be sitting there. I'm like, dude, you have to ride your 450 here next week. Yeah, you don't have a choice. Yeah, yeah. ride it this week just for track position. Gear it so you have to do a start in first gear and leave it in first gear. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Pull a whole shot. If you go back to second, that's fine. But if you start eighth, you might only go to fifth. You yeah, know? I mean, like, you could see in Daytona he was getting garbage starts. Oh, yeah, just getting anything. ripped apart. Right. I'm like, dude, you can't. Yeah. I know you think you can't ride the 450 good, but yeah. <laughs> you can't start great on your 250 at the moment here yeah. at Daytona. So you just have to fucking deal with it. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Uh, made the right call. Made the right call. Yeah, it, it, it does seem that was a, wow. The pivotal, the pivotal point was going third to first in two turns uh, yeah. of the series. But then the grabbing the 450 yeah. for the next, the last yeah. two rounds was really yeah. the next thing. Yeah. Uh, KP, it did seem like Arena Cross made a nice little comeback a little bit. I know talking to Robbie and everybody, like, I think it was more successful with fans, uh, a little more successful buzz. Um, you know, we need to get Arena Cross back to where it was, I think. For and, sure. And it does seem like it. You know, I think I think Robbie did Robbie get the series last year for the first time. Was it last year's first yep. year? So last year, yeah. Yeah, it seems like they made steps forward. Do you agree? For sure, um, they're they're definitely doing things right. Um, f- fans this year, like we had pretty crappy weather at at some rounds, and like w- it, Grand Island, Nebraska, I think it was like negative twenty two or something yeah, that that there cold. Friday night, and it's like. If I'm a fan, like I don't even want to go out and watch. <laughs> like, mm. I'm not leaving the house. So like, 
definitely some some things were out of their control um, as far as the fans and stuff sh- and stuff go. But I do think it is getting better, um, mm-hmm. which it, it's tough. You know, um, they need more sponsors, more teams to come back in, and uh, and, and more guys. Yep. Uh, Marsh, the solitaire guys told me they might put somebody in arena cross next year. Like thinking about that, would you? Is that something you would do? Would you do the whole series? I know you have your. I'm going to talk to you about the Canadian National. Oh later. God, I don't know if I'm ready for Marsh and KP to do a whole series of arena <laughs> would, cross you, together. You did, you did two I'm rounds. Okay. Would you do it the whole time? Th- like I don't know how the money is. I, mm-hmm. Would you do it or? I, uh, I I mean financially speaking, if it was there and I got a, an opportunity where it made sense, I would I would definitely consider yeah. it. Like um, a team paid your salary and said, "Hey, you're going to Arena Cross." Yeah, right? if yeah. if if that was there and that I would still have the option to race Supercross, I'd like to do it. I yeah. think right now, um, you know, I'm not going to be racing forever, and I'm trying to just maximize as yeah. many good races as I can for the rest of my career. So, I think for me speaking right now, if I had the option to still race Supercross as well as Arena Cross, yep. I, would, I would consider it. Because Brees told me, like, Brees told me I'm going to do the first couple of Arena Crosses and I'm going to do all Supercrosses. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, he was like, I'm making too much money at Arena Cross. That's what he told me. Like, I'm doing mm-hmm. too well mm-hmm. financially wise. And he wasn't really getting, you know, he was just getting purse money and I imagine some travel stuff, like not a lot. Purse money's good, though, for That's that what stuff. I, yeah, but so Brees decided... Don't get KP were, started on the purse oh, money. Oh okay. You know, I think they were they were also putting him in the one v ones to kind of help him out a little bit. Okay. Each weekend. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know exactly that whole right. whole deal there. But yeah, I was surprised when Brees told me because he's the borderline main event guy, main event guy. He's mostly. a good rider. He's a great rider for and, sure. And so when Brees told me, "Hey, I, I, financially, Arena Cross is better for me," I was like, "Oh, really? Like, oh, huh. you know?" If you're sleeping it, I would I would say it's it's definitely better. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. KP, so are, are we are we coming back next year? I don't know. Um, that's 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 the question, honestly. Uh, Got to talk with with old David Eller, the, the mm-hmm. Phoenix Phoenix team, and and see kind of which way he wants to go. Um, I, I'm I'm definitely open to to going for six, yep. and hopefully breaking breaking Bud Man's record. Uh, that was, that would be the dream, but. Uh, yeah, as of right now, uh, I'm not really sure. Um, KP, so there's weekend off this weekend, and then there's uh, Foxborough, there's Nashville, oh, yeah. there's Philly. Sure is. The Phoenix Ray goes to those. Well, hasn't lately, but Yeah, does. is Dylan coming back? He was lung infection. He's calling back? No, I don't really care about Bob Dylan. I'm not sure. <laughs> is KP going to race? Soupy. Well, that, that's that's the hard thing. Uh like I want to, uh-huh. uh, I've, I've been wanting to, yeah. and now if the rig doesn't go uh, for Dylan, mm-hmm. uh, I don't, I don't know what I can do f- from there. I don't know if David would be willing to to take. All right, KP, I'm uh, I'm tenth in the heat race. You're ninth in yeah. Foxborough. What's hey, happening? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let him let him go. Let him go, are KP. You, He's in the, the <laughs> payback. <laughs> Payback's a bitch. <laughs> he did. He did have. He did have a good. He asked if you were first in points, yeah. like him. So I mean, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be an issue. I should be gone, dude. It should be around me. What Just What is going buddy. on with Dylan though? Like I don't understand. He, he was sick, lung infection. There was no update this week. Something's fishy. <laughs> are, are we? Do we all agree? No. I comment. I honestly have n- not. Well, a I don't expect KP to have a comment, but Phil, <laughs> do you have a? Something's up. I have, to, I have no idea. Something, yeah. It's right. Weird. Okay, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's just. I'm not saying I'm. I know or anything. I just. This, something's. Is going. it a lung infection or is it a knee issue or right. is it not like the bike? And I don't know. Yeah, it's I know. a lot of little. Is it I signed nothing. a deal for next year yeah, and I'm good to I, go? Yeah. Like, is I it that? I don't know. I, make again, sense. KP, I don't expect you to comment. Yeah. But, I think. I think you need some of that. Uh, that triactin. Yeah. Um. What's triactin? I don't know. Try acting like a man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, we um, all need that every once in a while. So <laughs> if the rig goes, KP, you, and you can do it, you, you'll do some soupies if it works out. Right. I, I would like to. Yeah. Um, David hasn't. I, I asked David a while back if he wanted me to do some, um, and he told me no. He was like, just get through this Arena Cross season, and, and we'll talk after. Um, I haven't been able to talk with him since since the race, so – if he would let me, I, I would love to do it. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. not really sure yet. What number would you be, KP, if you did come? Uh, it'd have to be three digit. Yeah, I know. Um, are we going one seventy? I, 
I would love to go back to the old school amateur 110, but 110. That's what it was. AMA would let me. Should run the 715. Yeah, should run 715. Yeah, do it. Do it for like a tribute. Yeah, should be a tribute. (laughs) Show some respect. I like that. (laughs) Show some respect. (laughs) Or the 285. Yeah, 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 valid. Um, Yeah, I think that would. I think that'd be really cool. KP to see you back in Supercross again. I mean, you ride it every damn day anyway. Yeah, you know? I know. Like, I try to try to keep up with you guys out there. Should uh, uh, did Bree say anything to you after after the race? Yeah, uh, yeah. He congratulated me. Oh, cool. uh, we shook hands. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's a, like we said, he's he's a great rider. Um, yeah. He he made it tough for sure. Yeah, yeah. It was exciting to follow this year a little bit. Watch some of the highlights, and then you got dudes like Marshall coming in and fucking everything up. I mean, what about I a talk know. like Wageman raced them too? I yeah. just saw Telly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just wish Talk was really there to like throw a wrench in the program. <laughs> yeah, like what? <laughs> and, like, he, he, he had a rough year. Let's face rough it, rough year. Rough for year. Our boy Taco. And then Cody Groves took all his, uh, his, his took his lady, took his spotlight took, away. Yeah, took yeah. Entertain, entertainer of the year from him. Yeah, yeah. poor guy. It yeah, all came crumbling down. <laughs> yeah, someone, someone. We had Taco on the webcast, uh, you know, and he was just. Telling us he's coming back. He's, he's gonna really. He's coming back he's hungrier than quit. ever. Quit. Quit. Huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's boy. in the gym today. He's there. Taco's in the gym. Yeah. yeah he's getting ready for he's twenty-five. Three hundred and sixty-four more days. <laughs> <though. laughs> Can't read across season. <laughs> Taco had a rough year. I still back him. I still believe in him. We can. Mm. We can pull oh, this through. One hundred percent. Yeah. Well, you're about the only one that does because <laughs> we roast the well, poor guy. If if Phil would help him out at the track, everyone. Shut up. Long. You're. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that on me. Some people are just uncoachable. Taco's one of them. <laughs> you know, and me. You can put me up there. You know? Um, put me number three then. Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll see. Um, be interesting. Can Taco, I mean, is there any role for Taco as a racer slash a street bike wheelie guy outside after the event? I think Definitely. there's an option, yeah. He's got some serious yeah. talent wheeling yeah. Harley. Yeah, he seems like he's pretty good at yeah. that. Maybe he could race and then, and then come in and do the street wheelies and mm-hmm. – I don't know. Join the concrete cowboys. Robbie, if you're listening, Robbie, you can you know put him in there. <laughs> so. Give give him give him a mic as well. Uh, so him. so KP, you will probably take a few weeks off of, of riding, like just depending on Supercross uh, stuff. Yeah, it, it honestly, like I I want to go back out this week um, and ride a little bit. I have some actual Supercross suspension now um, to try, so mm-hmm. I'd like to go try that and see how it feels um and whatnot and then yeah i'd love to go back to foxborough um got a podium there so yeah there was good mm-hmm. vibes i mean look it seems like your team needs you <laughs> yeah they need somebody out there yeah, poor, I mean, poor guys yeah poor guys i mean they were sending it all the way across the country for dylan so why not just send it to foxborough i mean it's only 14 hours from salisbury you know I mean, I'm not the number 14, dude. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, you're five time, though. Yeah. You, that's what you should race with, 5X. And, yeah, and that's and what the AMA should let you ride with 5X. Yeah. And it's guaranteed you'll get press for the team, too, because the Arena Cross champ will be there. I mean, there, there's a story behind it. So, yeah. I mean, I, I think it'd be a, a bonus. It'd kind of be a no brainer, you know? So, yeah. and I, KP you, would go there and do his typical be a 5 through 10 guy, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Be just a Are sleeper. You, you going to go, Phil? You're going to coach me? Uh, I am going to Foxborough, but uh, oh. to uh, help Futures Kid. You know. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, Ryder Malinowski. So it, uh, Very cool. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah. Well, we could have used you for Ryder McNabb this weekend. Could have used some of that. It uh, didn't yeah. go very well for No? Him. No. Mm. Bad start, crash. I mean, yeah. It, but for Ryder, a bad start's typical, though. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's yeah, kind of fair. Probably, probably so. a good point. You know. um, well, yeah. maybe you can coach up, coach up him, Manitoba's next great rider. Mm, he's got fasciati. He can help him. Okay. Uh, Wisco Pistons bringing you Kyle Peters on the show. Pulp 24 is code to save. With uh, with Wisco, get some Pistons, get a discount, Garage Buddy engine rebuild kits and more. Kyle Peters, five-time Arena Cross champion. Well, buddy, uh, thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. Congrats on the title again, and congrats on you and Marsh rekindling the friendship. <laughs> yeah, I was stressing about that. You know? It's gone on a while, yeah. It's had, had a little bit of yeah. tension. Yeah. Well, is there a group text that he you're kinda, all in? KP kind of like, cornered me yeah. in, in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. I did. You know, and, I, and there's a group text that you're all in, like Webb's in there and everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, then, what, eight or nine years now? So. Yeah. And then, so, know. and it got weird? 
They just no. didn't say it. Never got brought up. Never KP got brought up. Never brought it up. <laughs> KP just kind of went ghost, you know. But it was only what? That was four weeks ago? It wasn't even that yeah, long Yeah, it was Daytona. You know? Yeah. I've yeah. been mad at Marsh for about six months before. So yeah, he's went, really... went four months straight when we even trained together every single day, and he just didn't even look at me. Didn't even talk <laughs> no. to him. Not even say Phil, a word. Phil doesn't hold a grudge. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not the Phil we know. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Imagine that. The, the one, the, hey, you um, want to know what it took to get me back talking to Marsh? Him laying there with a dislocated shoulder. Oh. And I doesn't like, hey, come on, buddy. I'll take you. All right. I'll, I'll help you out. <laughs> is, that, is that really? Yeah, that's no, that's what really happened. Actually, yeah. I think it was actually slightly before we did a moto together, and he didn't get around me, and then Phil came up and shook my hand after the moto. Then I dislocated my shoulder. Then the next you day. dislocated your shoulder. That maybe that's yeah. what it was. I'm like, all right, dude. Uh, all on. right, KP. Thanks for the calling uh, in. Congrats again. Appreciate it. We'll hopefully, hopefully, see you at Supercross, man. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. Maybe we'll. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can have a beer at your house sometime, and maybe you can invite some of your friends over <laughs> on Lake Norman, and like we can have a grill out sometime. <laughs> KP built yeah, this you, massive you, house up on Lake Norman. Okay. Hey, none none of his fucking funny. buddies been there yet. Really? I've, I've been no, there. Nobody's been. There. I, Only Marsh. Only Marsh. I've stayed there because we're friends. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yep. KP's been to my house the whole night. Yeah, yeah. But and, no. and Lake Norman sounds nice. Yeah, uh, it's about as nice as it gets. I'll yeah. vouch for you it. You can't yeah. really get you can't really get Phil to leave Waxhaw other than go to go because to I race. can't afford to be up where you live, KP. I don't make the Arena yeah. Cross money. That just shows how much Arena oh. Cross pays. <laughs> yeah, at you the know? end of the point, yeah, like go. you're up there on a lake with Denny Hamlin. Yeah, Kyle Busch. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then, yeah. And you're saying, you're going to compare Waxhaw? Shoot. Dude. Fuck. You know? Uh-huh. I'm just trying to be like you, Phil. Well, just okay. let me let me know when I can come up there. And Listen, you... let the man enjoy his spoils of his success, <laughs> yeah. okay? Him and Denny and MJ <laughs> yeah. are probably on exactly. the boat every day. I know. Right. Uh, unreal. Yeah, I heard Denny yeah, Hamlin's place is unreal. Unreal. Yeah. Yeah, Denny's place is sick. It, it's, it's, it's next level? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. KP's I, is almost I'm the far same. away from Denny's place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just on the other side of a peninsula. Not that far. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks, 20, KP. 20 miles. Yeah. Thanks, boys. Thank Appreciate you for calling. It. Appreciate Everybody, it. Bye. 12 text messages. You, you and KP are good now? Question mark. Oh, you yeah. Good? yeah, yeah. You good? See? <laughs> See? Uh, we do have uh, Tiffany on three, I think. Is this Tiffany? Tiffany? Hey, guys. How's yeah. going? Good. How are you? What's your What's your question? Um, yeah, so, hey, Phil, it was a real bummer to see that you DNF'd in Moto1, but we were really happy to see you make that comeback in Motos 2 and 3. Mm-hmm. Um, we were at St. Louis this weekend, um, and while we were waiting, my husband noticed that you had a cover over the top chain roller. None of the other Club MX guys had one, so we were just wondering if it helps you get, like, a better grip with your boots or if you have it on there for another purpose. Oh, uh about my top chain. Okay, yeah, I do have a I have a guard on my subframe because my boot, it's kind of common on a Yamaha. If you're like size 9 through 11, <clears throat> your boot gets caught in between the subframe and not with me. I guess I'm not going fast enough. Yeah, it would happen okay. with you. Yeah. yeah, and like so my buddy Ben Graves actually makes me a uh it works at club a uh carbon fiber guard so my boot doesn't get caught on the hinge because I've had some close just like it's it gets wedged, like wedged in there, in there wedged, above wedged the it, master cylinder. Yeah, and yeah. The, uh, on the left side. Oh, left side. Okay. Yeah, and I can never get my foot out. It like okay. it gets stuck. I like think Brees runs one too there. Yeah, I think maybe Ben might have made one or somebody, but yeah, it's becoming quite popular now. So, um, yeah, that's a good look, uh, good eye. Okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yeah. you. Thank have a good you. night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Seven zero two five eight six seven eight five seven. We're coming up with Levi Kitchen as well, and then. Uh, we might have a celebrity caller as well, another rider calling in with Kitsch. So looking forward to that. Uh, Ethica, Ethica.com. Uh, Foz was in here last week. He, he finally got hooked up on the program. Yeah, Foz, yeah. Foz, I can't talk shit on him. He's actually pretty cool. Yeah, he's, he actually, he's a rad dude. He actually hooked you up. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, actually, because I sent a picture of the Mandalay Bay Hotel where yeah. we're sitting there at the pool, and yeah. uh, he goes, wow, he goes, Steve uh, really splurged on you. Oh. This I said, yeah, I said, we get top notch when I come oh, out here. Oh, stop it. <laughs> stop <laughs> it. Meanwhile, I'm sharing a hotel room with two other dudes. Yeah, <laughs> listen, I got, the, I, got the, I got the one room. That's Shout all I'm responsible Anthony. for. Yeah. Anthony roughed it on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he did? Yeah. 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 Well, no, listen, yeah. he, he he's the mechanic. I was the mechanic. That's what mechanics do. You're lucky he's he ride or die. You're lucky he didn't put us out in the, in the van. <laughs> I, the van's comfy. I got a good bed in the van. Um, so thanks to the folks at Ethica, ethica.com. Uh, really appreciate that these guys coming on board. Pulp MX 20 is the code to save with Ethica. Great socks. Ethica socks. Next level. They're good. Yeah. 
Uh, PulpMex20 is the code to save with Ethica. Thank you to those guys for coming on board. Use that code and save. Also, uh, our next guest brought to you by the folks at Renthal. He uses Renthal on his Monster Energy Kawasaki. A fraction of a second, a few grams, a couple of millimeters, it all counts. Welcome to the winning world of Renthal. Uh, Works Fit Tool is on the um, website, an inventory locator as well uh, for the USA is on the website. And you look at all the championships, they won more than all the other brands combined. And, uh, yeah, thanks to the folks at Renthal, chains, sprockets, bars, all of that, mountain bikes, stems, and bars as well. Bringing you our next guest of the night. This man is on a roll right now. When you look at Seattle, you look at all three rounds in uh, St. Louis, and uh, it's been quite a few races for Levi Kitchen. What's up, Levi? How are you, man? Uh, pretty good. How are you? Good. Thank you for calling in. Appreciate it. Great job at uh, St. Louis, man, and Seattle. Like, I said this in Seattle. I felt like you could have just rode for 30 minutes and, you know, just kept stretching out your lead, and I kind of feel the same in St. Louis, man. You've really taken it to another level. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, it was a pretty – pretty good couple weekends i must say it was uh, a lot of fun and did um did you change anything did you find anything before seattle was there any like more work on starts or, or a, a suspension setup or anything different no i mean honestly i just <laughs> had a lot of talks with my my guy rob who's out here in florida and was like you know you i think those first uh four rounds i felt like there was um a lot of positives to take away from them, but mm-hmm. I didn't uh, really get, you know, I didn't win except for A2, but uh, there was a few of them where I felt like I had potential to. So, you know, I just went into the break knowing that, and then when I came out to Seattle, I knew it was like, you know, it was kind of a turning point. It was like I need to either get going or, uh, I don't know, I just wanted to, do, you know, going in with the red plate, I wanted to try to put some points between me and, and whoever, you know, RJ and Jordan and stuff, so. Five hole shots on the season too. That's certainly helping the bike. The bike's working well. Yeah, no, the bike is is phenomenal, and um, yeah, off the line. I mean, it's it's helped me a ton. <laughs> Obviously, I think I think those other guys are for sure. Um, you know, that's probably what what they're trying to uh, to improve on. I'm assuming over the break because uh, yeah. we're all going so fast that man, when when one of us gets a start, it's it's tough, so uh, I've just been trying to be that guy getting them. Phil, why can't you just ride like Levi? <laughs> Phil? I tell <laughs> Levi every week, and I said, dude, you're riding fucking so good, you know? I, I'm glad you're he talking does. to him now because at one point he Levi does. said you just you mad-dogged him all the time. Did I? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did I? He did. Uh, not. Re- I mean, my rookie year, but you didn't even know who I was. Yeah, I mean, not really. Legit, I mean, uh, which I get that. Yeah, you you got validation through J Mart. J Mart vouched for you. I said you were okay, so <laughs> I kind of was just okay. like, all right, maybe <laughs> Levi's okay, kid. You know, uh, yeah, I, yeah, Levi. I don't know. You're riding Seattle, and obviously this past weekend, just going three for three. I don't, I'm riding the same track as you, dude, and I'm like, fuck, <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Seattle was rough, Levi. I don't know how many times oh, you he, lapped he him, but n- yeah, <laughs> how many times <laughs> he did lap me once. I haven't been lapped in fuck a long, long time, and Levi did. And I'm like, dude, just pull it in, dude. It's over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he, Le- he told me he was ready to just send his bike into the stands. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Seattle was so, rough, but yeah. but yeah. we rebounded in in St. Louis. Phil. Right. Two yeah. top tens. Yeah, so. it was okay. Yeah. yeah, it was all right. Still not Levi speed, but right. I mean, even the first main, like it's smooth and it's hard to pull away from people. And Levi was still pulling yeah. away from us, and I'm just like. Fuck, dude. Yeah, Juju thought he wanted some of Levi that first lap yeah, of, the, yeah. of, of the first one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was ripping. That was pretty fun. Yeah. And uh, after the whoops, Levi, you were getting that roll 3-3 three, three pretty consistently. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, I didn't catch on to that until main two, like halfway. I was going, early in the night, actually, I was going 2-3-3-1, three, three, and I almost crashed <laughs> one time, and I was like, that was pretty technical to do, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I was like, "Why am I even doing this?" Like, so then I did the little wheelie, and that was faster. I think. Yeah, so. yeah. The way you would pump that, and then the way you would pump the left hander before the whoops, after you went triple single into the corner, like yeah. fuck, just unreal how lengthy you are, but how you can get the power to the ground and stuff. Like, did you ride BMX or anything growing up? Because you ride a bike like you grew up on a pump track and <laughs> shit, you know. I did. I, yeah, I rode a lot of BMX. I wouldn't ride pump tracks, but I would ride like 
skate parks and bowls. And yeah, stuff. fuck, yeah, dude. Right. It, dude, it looks he, like it. He reminds me, I, I said this on the pod, he reminds me of Anderson without all the extra stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, Anderson's all over, but like sideways. Yeah, he's clean. Mm-hmm. Levi's more straight Put up and the, down. Yeah, but yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Yeah. And he, Levi was getting that three out of the corner after the second Supercross trip almost all the time. You know. Uh, um, oh yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Like a hug. Yeah. Yeah. You know. What? What? Dude, was... Phil. Okay. What? I loved your line. I thank you. you. <laughs> yes, thank you. What? Triple, <laughs> just sneak the inside roll double. I was like, this is a smart man. He doesn't want to be in them ruts. I was not. After the triple? Yeah, after the triple, yeah, you left. roll. If you didn't three, you had to go two three. But yeah. when you went two. I mean, that transition, just another transition dirt works, Miss. Don't worry. They were prepping another transition that shouldn't have been fixed. <laughs> but I went down in there one lap, and I'm like, holy fuck. I can't do this for 10 plus one. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm not three in this bitch. So I <laughs> just ro- you rolled? I super cross triple, yeah. tight inside, tight. roll, two, two, three, three, single. I don't think I ever saw it. Noticed that. Yeah. Good job. Uh, thanks, <laughs> Levi. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was pretty awesome. I yeah. must say. And it was. I mean, obviously, I still going two seconds lap slower than you. But for the guys that were, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten that I was around, like I was staying within the yeah. wheelhouse. Yeah. It, it was, so was working. It was yeah. working. So I'm like, I'm good. What, what yeah. was the ultimate? Like on a 450, what was the ultimate best way to do the the rhythm out of the first turn? Two in. Or one. Out of the first turn. Yeah, like because you know how they started jumping across. The, Two in. Well, they're basically doing the rhythm Levi was doing, but on a 250, you couldn't double yeah, across. Yeah, you couldn't double across. But so, but the ultimate best way yeah. was two, three, three, three single. single at the end, right? Or no? I don't know. A lot of guys are three and into that the turn. Was, the yeah. best was, uh, well, the 450s were jumping across the start, and yeah. then they'd go three, three, two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then I started going roll and then wheelie, wheelie over the first got one. Got it. Yeah. Three, Three, two. Because yeah. the single into the corner before the mechanics area, the way it would pinch you up against the wall kind of sucked. Okay. So Levi, the way he can flow, yeah. he could double across the corner and then kind of hit the apex really But good. in practice, two of these guys were, were doubling over the start, no? I, I did a few times. Okay. Time. Yeah, a couple. Okay. Yeah. I thought I saw a few guys uh, do some it. Some star guys got it, too. Yeah, right. um, okay. But to, to actually get it on a 250, that was a stretch. Yeah, I was thinking know? the track just got yeah. too beat for that yeah, or there's, whatever. There's but, no way. But was that the fastest way? Two over the star straight? Yeah. 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 If you if, if yeah. you could get yeah. it, yeah, if you, yeah, yeah. 100%. If, okay, that's what I thought. Because I was, I was timing it with my phone, my mm-hmm. iPhone, and my mm-hmm. fat fingers, but it looked the best to me. It was like point yeah. three better than going than, mm-hmm. you know, the, not not the wheelie like Levi was doing. That was probably second best. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How uh, Levi, how gnarly was the landing on the Supercross trip after the mechanics area? Dude, <laughs> it was outdoors. Was brutal. Fuck. I'm like, what the? I hell? really was surprised. Like, I felt like they, you know, I don't know if they didn't see it, but I felt like it was. They should have fixed that before they fixed the face a few times. <laughs> it looked like uh, it looked like High Point Moto Two. Yeah. You know, High Point Moto Two. <laughs> oh, with the landing. Yeah, the landing. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know 100%. what I mean? It just looked like yeah, a, yeah. you could yeah. see guys just suspension. Bam, bam. Yeah, yeah. I watched. Yeah. I was behind Jorgensen in one of them. And he just went, landed off the Supercross triple, and he just hooked a right yeah, into the 3-5-3. Three, yeah, I saw that. Three. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm uh, like, it's on, see It's ya. on uh, one of my group texts. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Dude. Just like, you're on. <laughs> God. I'm like, bye, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, me, and, me and him, we, we got into it with two laps to go in the last main, and uh, – the, yeah, Yor- the Jorgensen pretty, kid, he wouldn't get out of the way. Yeah, that's a strike two for him. Was it San Diego where he got uh, out of the way, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got in Garrett's way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Garrett was pissed at him. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. We traded some paint big time before the triple, but, um, <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I, what it is. And I told him, this is me. I said, hey, if you're going to roll, this is in practice. He might, he's probably a nice kid. He, had, it, he rides at uh, Lawrence's place. Yeah, he so reminds I me. I heard of, he's a nice guy. Yeah, he reminds me of uh, the Russian guy from. Oh, Bobrashev? I uh, know uh, from Rocky. Crater, oh, Drago. Drago, yeah, he looks <laughs> like him, only a little skinnier. But I told him, I yeah. said, "Hey, man, if you're gonna do a roll lap, get out of the main line in the whoops. You know, like get yeah. to the way left. Why are you all the way to the right? You know, this is me. Obviously, like I'm putting in a real fucking practice heater. You know, <laughs> <laughs> fucking ruin my fast lap for me. You know, so uh, yeah, it was funny watching him yurt it off to the side. Yep, uh, Levi's Marshall. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on working with Dave Cruz for the year. It seems like PC's had a lot of great success with bikes set up, and I know Cruz just got on the program, and I don't know he's a 
helping yeah. you guys out. Yeah, it's been phenomenal. I mean, I don't. I've kind of asked uh, like Cameron and and a couple guys a little bit, and they say it's been really good. Um, obviously, for me, I don't know any different because he's been there since I got there. So, um, you know, I don't know how it was before or whatever, but uh, he's pretty intelligent. And so far, I mean, we've uh, we've pretty much nailed everything that that we went after. And um, I like that he understands like what I'm confident in. He doesn't really try to. You know he'll give me input, but he doesn't try to change too much stuff, which which I appreciate. So um, it's been it's been really good, yeah. I uh, also have a question. <clears throat> so uh, this might cause some issues, <laughs> but your PC bike, um, why? Like I hear him all the time. I've heard him for years. But why does it that tick when it's idling? <laughs> Why does it sound like? Why does it sound like it's about to break? Why does it sound like it's about to fucking grenade? So hollow. What? What is? It feels like the piston is hitting on the top of the head, or the crank <laughs> the is about to come out. Yeah, but like if I was, you know, a rider and I had to hear that, I'd be like, dude, what the fuck? It's a ticking time bomb. You know what I mean? <laughs> it literally it sits there at idle and it's knocking. Like yeah, like what the yeah, fuck is that? I know that? I'm. I know I'm going to be a little wrong on this. It's something with the. Uh, it's a certain type of valves. I don't remember what they're called. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think PC runs Dell West but, valves, but they used to anyway. Oh, they used to, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't remember what they're called. There's a name for it. It's kind of funny, but they're. Uh, I'll tell you what, my valve anyway. start. My valve start something like that. You're, yeah. I'm out. I'm not right. <laughs> you know? uh, oh, the the first time I rode the bike, um, I was a little concerned. Yeah. Uh, I asked, I'm like, yeah. You okay. Yeah, a, and uh. Yeah. And how do you like the hydraulic clutch? Because you've been on a cable clutch for a long time. I mean, did you? Is that a benefit for you on the starts? Because obviously your starts are a lot better now than what they were on the on the star bike. Basically, I mean, you weren't. I mean, when you pulled us a whole shot on the star bike, you were up front, but you're quite inconsistent. Now it seems like you're, you know, you're eight out of ten on whole shots versus you know being fifty fifty. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that hydraulic clutch has a lot to do with. Um, my starts now Mm -hmm. honestly uh Mm -hmm. i like it a lot i i feel like a cable clutch is really um you know you're either going or you're not like Mm -hmm. it's it's really abrupt i felt like where the the hydraulic i can almost it almost slips itself if that makes any sense Mm -hmm. like i feel like i don't really have to do a whole lot Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. i don't know and i'm glad i was worried you know because when i first got on the bike i was going through a couple clutches a day on supercross um, but like now, I, I mean, at the race and stuff, I don't know how many clutches I do go through, but it's, yeah, it's yeah. all, all the way through a main. So, I, uh, um, I'm the same with that too. On my Yamaha 450, I don't go through many clutches and, with the hydraulic, but cable and, I do. And then Tomac, you know, yeah. he prefers the cable way over the hydraulic. Right? Yeah. For it's funny you say that. Cause yeah. I've got the hydraulic in my 450 and it's like, it must be the way that's cylinder is but mine's so on off it's there's oh, yeah. no slip yeah mm. and, and coop went the other way he went back to hydraulic yeah that's you know? right so yeah i was just curious because you've just been on cable for a long time i didn't know if that was a yeah because your starts are a big big difference nowadays but also yeah. pc has figured out something with the starts as well because toward yeah. the end of nationals last year yeah. i don't know what who mitch or whoever came up with some but i mean it's quite yeah. obvious that they had uh they found out something mitch told me uh air boot stuff Mm-hmm. was part of it mm-hmm. near the end of last summer. Yep. I'm like, what the hell? What's going on? Because your bikes are better. He's like, yeah, some air boot stuff. Yeah. So uh, I don't, you know, I don't yeah. know, whatever I don't it was. Know. I don't know. I think, Levi, yeah, I, feel, I, think, I think you look good on that Cowie, you know? I, I really do. I think the whole setup, the Fox gear, bell helmet, you know? Yeah, I, I like it. I think it's sick. I'm glad to be back in Fox. I was with them for like four or five years before anybody really knew who I was. Oh, okay. They helped me out okay. a long time ago. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a nice nice year for you, Levi. Uh, Renthal, by the way, bringing you Levi Kitchen on the show. Uh, please check out Renthal.com for more information. We do have uh, another caller. Mm-hmm. This gentleman is an arena cross specialist as well. Crockett Myers, what's up, buddy? How are you? Oh, Thanks for calling. How's it going, guys? What's up, Crockett? How are you, man? <laughs> I'm back from some oh, no. and got some Chipotle. Where are you at? You're in Vegas or you broke up? Oh, sorry, I went under a bridge. No, I just got done fishing, so uh, oh. I went back to the crib and uh, sandbox. Oh shit! There we go. Uh, fishing, Levi. That, 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 don't wonder why you guys are friends. 
I was just he was just with me. We were just fishing. So I'm sitting in my driveway, wait, like oh, just getting home. Okay, all right. <laughs> hey, I, uh, I didn't want to say his name. I'm under the bus. I just couldn't go fishing. Oh yeah, no. Hey, listen, it's it's an off week. He's fine. He's a points leader on an off week. You could get. I mean, look. If this was Chad Reed in 08, you just get blitzed all week. Yeah, yeah, true. You know, yeah, well, you never know what these factory guys, man. No. Well, Levi was, was supposed to be. Me. Levi was supposed to be on the beach last weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad you made St. Louis. Yeah, Kitch, yeah. that was nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> how do you not know that? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> because how is St. Louis a West round? It's been. It's West been on Coast. the schedule since about fucking <laughs> last July. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really look at the schedule. <laughs> Obviously. <Yeah. laughs> uh, it was funny because I tweeted that, Levi, that you didn't know it was a West round and, you know, you hope you can make it. You haven't had a plane ticket yet. And then on my Twitter, people are like, is he serious? Like, he might not show up? I'm just like, oh, my God, Come face on. palm, face Come palm. On. I think he'll show up, guys. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, Crockett, how was Arena Cross life? Dude, I mean, it's going good. It's – uh. It's gnarlier than I thought it would be. Um, watching it from, like, years past, I always thought it was kind of a joke. But um, now that being in it, the shit's actually pretty gnarly, dude. Like, all those guys go pretty dang good on a track that's only 24 seconds. So, yeah, it's uh, it's intense for sure, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, Crockett, I forget. Um, by the way, I like your UFC move in uh, in Daytona. That was pretty legit. Yeah, can we talk about that? Yeah, hold yeah. on. I want to well, oh, okay. I want to ask him. Crockett rides a 350. In arena cross, don't you, Crockett? I do, yeah. Yeah, do you? I mean, so that's what I was saying. I think that bike yeah. is ideal for that that sort of track for, or those tracks for starts and stuff. You know, I mean, do you think that's the way to go? Um, yeah. I mean, me personally, I wouldn't mind a four fifty. It's definitely not needed on that small of a track. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the three fifty is like right on the money with power wise and and not being too much. Mm. So it's definitely. Yeah, I was stoked when I got the opportunity to ride a Husky. So, yeah, no, the 350 is the, the perfect bike for arena cross, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, no, it's perfect. How many followers did you pick up with the Brawl on Instagram? Uh, not too many. I oh. think maybe like 100, 150. Oh, shit. I was not more than that. Yeah. 100, 150 to the team. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would be more than that because like, it was in my it was in my uh, feed. Like oh, I saw it everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it was everywhere. Myers, you yeah, were so, I, it was I was thinking the same thing too. I'm like, I'm gonna get flooded with followers, but no, it wasn't. It wasn't anything crazy. I think I went from like twenty point through two k to like twenty point three. Okay, I had a really similar situation with Justin Rob Dylan, like. 2019 or 2020 and phil was actually there and it was like the slowest takedown and like ripping somebody <laughs> off the bike. and i'm sitting there just watching like fuck uh, <laughs> hey crockett so this this husky ride is pretty new for you from what i understand um yeah it is so yeah. like i was riding a cowie i had this little deal with a team out of california they were going to try and help me out and i was planning on doing some supercross rounds um and then that kind of fell through and the next best thing that we could think of was arena cross. So I had already bought two Cowies. So we just signed up for arena cross and committed to the full season on uh, these Cowies. Mm -hmm. So I did the first, I think it was six or seven rounds on Cowies. And then we couldn't get my Cowie to run. Like my practice bike was just bone stock. So it was running fine. But then we built a race 250 uh -huh. and I we just couldn't get it to run. So it cost me in uh, Oklahoma, it wasn't running at all. Like, it was cutting out and the throttle, not the throttle itself, but it kind of like, I call it cruise control. Like, I would let off and it would go for like two more seconds after <laughs> I let off. So, it was, it was kind of hairy and I pretty much just told my dad, I'm like, dude, I don't know what to do with it. You don't know what to do with it. Like, I'd say we park it at a dumpster and go buy a KTM or something like this. It ain't cutting it. And he pretty much agreed. Pretty much, I think we might have had a weekend off, or it might have been the next week. But we uh, we bought a Husky 350, and we showed up to a round in Prescott, Arizona, and that's that's, so that's pretty much started. how we okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Listen, Levi's got a bunch of Cowie parts. Just take those. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's got some spare engines exactly. and stuff down yeah. there. Yeah, Levi, come on, man. I offered, dude. He, he wouldn't take anything. Oh, that's sad. I'm kidding, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Go down we, that. we should we should make that clear. <laughs> hey, I wanna. Can we talk about Hardy for a second? 
Like, did they train with Hardy? Hardy's there. Oh God. And I've been told from people there that he just lives his life. Like what we see on Saturday is how he lives his life every day. Levi, can you confirm or deny this? Hardy's a good kid, dude. I'm not. I'm not throwing him. No, any I, shade. I'm not. Say, he's a great rider, but, but like, yeah. No, but like his will he, to die. Like, yeah, there's just no. no he, I, I'll, I'll butt in. I'll butt in. Levi's scared. The dude sends it every single day. <laughs> he's definitely, he's definitely I got, I got Hardy to Indy bad. He got me good. This is what I hear. This is every day. But I will say, yeah. in training, he's he's pretty. He seems safe to me. Like he never gets out of control from what I can see. But he does rip, and he's not afraid to send it. That's for sure. I, I, I don't know. when I, w- I was there one day, and he had two near-death experiences and then did tip over in a sand turn. <laughs> the, the one time that I was at Sandbox, he had yeah. three huge get-offs. Okay, Every time he got back up, <laughs> like it didn't even happen. Right. Just like, I'm like, it's this is what I'm told. Nothing affects him. No. Bill, I, I wish I was I like mean, that. I've been here for a minute, and I've only seen him come down one time, and it was in the woods. It was about a few weeks ago. Okay. And it wasn't anything crazy. Levi? But that's what I've seen so far. I've I've seen him go down pretty good, but he, uh, yeah, he never fails. He gets right back up, dude. And, he's built different. Yeah, and, and yeah, he yeah. just sends it like he's he's full send all the time. Is what I heard. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Um. Um. That, that that's that's exciting. I was standing there going, I guess I was, I was watching Hardy more than anybody. I was like, look at this dude. <laughs> so, Levi, obviously, I uh, you, I mean, you probably talked about this before with a bunch of people and whatnot, but. Leaving Tallahassee and going to Claremont and doing your own thing and riding. I mean, do you and obviously you're enjoying what you're doing, or you know, do you think you would have had this success on the Yamaha as well, just because you're a year older and a little more mature, or do you think the fresher breath of air, seeing a new front fender, a new facility, everything just kind of gave you a newfound light to be able to excel at this point? Yeah, it was um, because we're not going to lie. You were a hot commodity last year. There were a lot of teams that wanted you, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think had I taken the Yamaha here Mm -hmm. to Claremont, Mm -hmm. I think I would have done pretty damn well. Also, Um, Mm -hmm. but I think that was the biggest thing. It wasn't necessarily a change of, of bike. Um, it was more so just a change in my, my life. Yeah. Lifestyle. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Everything, just what I see every day and, and who I'm, surrounded with so and who um, and who's your trainer now uh peter Park. oh Pete, you are okay all right yeah gotcha. yeah. yeah yeah so he does all my off the bike and then at the track i mean we kind of just talk and and agree with what i'm gonna do the next day and mm-hmm. then my practice guy rob he trained me uh as an amateur for years in louisiana so he's he's my practice mechanic but also kind of can be there for me and mm-hmm. he knows what i should and shouldn't be doing on the dirt bike so he tries to keep my feet on the foot pegs as much as i can yeah it's kind of funny when you first made the switch you know how just the pit gossip is it's like levi can't yeah. handle the star program you can't yeah. handle the star program and i'm just like ah, uh, yeah i don't think so i don't think that's it i, I don't think he's gonna just get lazy all of a sudden you know what i mean no kitchen that's how but that's how these things go in the in the pits right so. for sure yeah and i mean i can see how people would think you know different ways but um, in reality, it was like, I, I enjoy working, you know, for, for what it is that I'm, um, you know, I guess working at. And there was just times where I was, uh, not enjoying it there. So I was like, if I'm not enjoying the day to day training, then yeah. I mean, it made it kind of difficult. So, um, and I don't you, know. Yeah, and, I and, don't you, know. and you wrote, I mean, you can probably say now, I mean, you wrote some different bikes. Did you ever get to ride the Honda or no? Cause obviously I never, I never did. Okay. No. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, there was, we talked to them briefly, but, um, uh, they were, their eyes were pretty much set on Joe, I think at that point. And that was kind of the, I guess almost the battle of like, it was pretty much me or Joe mm-hmm. where it, I feel like every team was kind of, those yep. were the two picks for last year. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I talked to a couple teams, but, um, once I rode some, <laughs> some bikes yeah. I, I really enjoyed the cow <laughs> yeah well it shows it it's, now it's working yeah. yeah uh hey crockett are we doing supercross what are we doing uh yeah i'm working on it right now i'm okay. signed up for foxborough um 
We just got one little issue. I don't know how to get my machine there. That's what we're dealing with now. <laughs> that's uh, an issue. That can be an that's issue. Always a yeah. Dilemma. Yeah. yeah. That's, Marsh is like, yep, got that. Yeah. Been there, yeah. Uh, what class are we going to ride? 250. 250. Okay. All right. 250. Uh, yep. Kitchen, where, where is Crockett finish at Foxboro if he gets his bike there? Well, it depends what Crockett shows up. Now he will whole shot. I would put okay. some money on that. All right. That's half um, the battle. Yeah. And then, I don't know. He's going to have to let his nuts hang. I know that. And he could, uh, I think he's got a, I really think he has a fair shot at, you know, if he can rip a start and uh-huh. um, put some laps in. I think he can make it into the main. And I think that should be his goal is just, uh, sure. I mean, that's everybody's goal at their first first race or even first couple. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how the nerves get to him. I know how that can be. It, it might be tough. I don't know. Yeah. Absolutely. No, you're right. And should we put the call out on the Pulp Show? If, if there's a team that wants to pick Crockett Meyer's bike and take it to Foxborough, contact yeah. them. I'm sure someone's Please going up there. Make my life happen, dude. I'm working my balls off down here. Listen, <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm, I, where, sounds like it. Just straight off the bass day. boat. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough, dude. <laughs> hey, dude, you can ask anybody at Sandbox. I was, do you know how hard it is to put a shock in on a Husqvarna bike, dude? <laughs> that is brutal. You're complaining to the wrong guy yeah, about you know, swapping a shock out. I, I Every time I ride, I got to swap suspension. I, I can get around the bike okay, but the rear shock on that thing is just, it ain't it for me, man. So where where are you? Done, you're, but... you're, you need to go from Texas to, no, Florida. Florida to Foxborough? Got it. Florida to Foxborough, yes. All right. Putting the call out. Get a hold of, DM the guy. Slide into his DMs. Get, well, get his bike there. Your buddy, your buddy, uh, 47 is going to need some write-offs here at the end of the year, so maybe we can use this as a business Yeah, tell them that. Yeah. Oh, get you a gas card. Yeah, you know, put on a chef's hat on the back of your pants, yeah, and, exactly. and, and there you go. You know. I'll do whatever need be, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go, kitchen. We've done the deal for you. It's done. You got to- <laughs> No nah, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm not helping my friend. <laughs> Fuck him. That's my, that's my Listen, this this he sounds like a points leader now. Yeah. He sounds like a points leader yeah. right his, now. Yeah, his wallet got super tight now. Hey, so uh Phil, uh we're coming up with showdowns. This is gonna be good. Yeah, I was actually talking to JB we about got McAdoo, this. Yeah. We got Kitchen, we got Deegs. Hey, Vial. hey Phil, I got Okay. I got a question. Mm-hmm. And I know you're on west but like truly where do you think the speed's at uh, i know i oh it's gonna be I phil's coast yeah it's phil's coast, <laughs> phil's every coast. Time, yeah every time well i i put you know i put you levi at the moment you're top 250 guy east and west for sure just because he's on the line but if we had no, McAdoo on the line no i don't okay. i mean i i think you, I, if I you agree. go head to head i do agree. levi wins yeah. you know you put McAdoo still in the same range as rj and joe you know it depends what rj you get if rj's on you know he's yeah. really good but uh i think the other guys are around no one asked me by the way i'm just going to interject i think deegan vial and mcadoo are real close mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then rj yeah. is in there joe i'm yeah he's, i don't know yeah i mean I, I i do think west you know just from experience and speed wise i mean uh with smitty and depends what thrasher you get to yeah um yeah. But I think uh I think you kids you actually have it everyone kind of somewhat handled, you know, at the moment. So uh, no, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think it's gonna depend like I mean, I know the last couple of races that I've done well at have been um a little ruddier. You know, been pretty rutted. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like also on that east, you know, like I'm waiting for a set of whoops to finally hold up. I know shit, huh? You know? Yeah. Fucking telling me, like, dude. <laughs> yeah. And mm-hmm. I actually, I struggled when I was skimming the ones this weekend. Mm-hmm. I wasn't very good at skimming them for some reason. I Like, I feel like I've gotten a lot better at it. And something about those whoops this weekend, I don't know if it's because they were so sticky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I felt like I could not drive across those at all. No, but, um, the, but the way you would come out of that left, wheelie over the roller, sometimes jump yeah. off the roller, and then go 3-3-3, three, 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 like, fuck, man, it was fast. Jet was you doing know? that, too. He's, like, pulling yeah. the wheelie, dropping it right in, and going, yeah. 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 I mean, what do you, okay, Levi, what do you think about the nine whoop, whoop thing? I'm not a fan. I think it needs to be – if I, they're going to build them that, 
that small, and I'm not saying they're tiny, but yeah, build them big, big. Then. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. Either build nine big ones or eleven of that size. Yeah, you know, I agree, hundred percent. Because I'm going to be honest, I don't think Vial has two Supercross wins if the Whoops were yeah big no, and long. I agree. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. I don't think sure. like. That's just a no-brainer. I mean, he went down in Indy in the whoops, and the whoops aren't even really yep. – well, they were a little bit rutted. But yep. when they were fresh, it's yep. just like, dude, what? Yeah, you I mean, know? it definitely made JT look really smart because on our pod, he's like, I want to see him in whoops. Yeah. And then the next race. I know yeah. It, yeah. I know Cameron I know Cameron because his mechanic was at, at St. Louis, and he's just waiting for a set because he's – yeah, he's pretty nasty in a big set of whoops, mm-hmm. so he's just waiting for it. Like, <laughs> yeah, and, and I remember, like, the only thing that saved me when I almost – would have won the one triple crown in St. Louis in 2022 when the only race in history RJ doesn't tip over in. <laughs> there was an on-off, and there was probably 15 whoops when Dino put a yeah. big oh, yeah. hole in his butt cheek, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. like And those whoops were sick, yeah. you know? But it gives me a chance to be able to, you know. Yeah, it gives – yeah. No, it, it, it should be – I remember uh, that. Yeah. yeah. I don't uh, – And actually – Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, uh – Oldenburg rode a phenomenal race there too. Correct. Good in the whoops. Yes. That round. Yes. Yep. He he got a podium that weekend. Yep. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The the no whoop thing. Like I agree with you, um, Levi. If they're going to be nine, build them so like, hey man. All right. Yeah. They don't Either. want that. They don't. There's purposely nine and tame. Yep. Like both. They're both doing both on purpose. You know. So. Um, I disagree. I so you might see them to pull into Supercross then. Yeah, yeah, really, right? Small whoops and only nine of them. <laughs> yeah, there's bigger whoops at Arena, uh, arena yeah. Cross this past no, weekend sure. than we have in fucking Supercross. Yeah, for sure. No, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, our, our view is I wouldn't have won Daytona if there was whoops. Who? But what? What, what, you, believe that what, what? what was that? That I cut out. Yeah. Carnell, yeah. Carnell was giving me shit saying I wouldn't have won Daytona if there was whoops. Oh, but what does Carnell know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would have lo- I would have loved to see Carno out there floundering around in the he, sand. He's hammered in the stands. <laughs> he, does, he doesn't know anything, Crockett. Um, <laughs> all right, boys. Uh, thank you for the time. Appreciate it. We're gonna we have Tomac coming up next, so you know we can't leave him waiting. Although mm-hmm. I would like to carry this conversation on, but mm-hmm. it's Eli Tomac. Yeah. Um, good right. job. He did sweep it. Yeah, he did sweep it. <laughs> yeah, well, it all counts. It's, it's a sweep in the record books. <laughs> I know. I'm- um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, hey, listen, uh, Crockett, first of all, thanks for calling in, buddy. Good luck in Foxborough if we get there. And good job in the arena cross. We watched in Daytona. And, uh, yeah, man, thank you for calling in. Yeah, thank you, guys. All right. All right, see you. And then, Levi, thanks, buddy. Good luck. Good job this weekend. Enjoy the weekend off. Thanks, man. I'll, I'll see you. Uh, Phil, I'll see you in a couple weeks. Man. Sounds good, buddy. You're all crushing right. it. Talk to you. Yep. Thank you. See ya. All right, see you. That's Levi Kitchen, everybody, brought to you by the folks at uh, Renthal. Coming up with Eli Tomac next. Uh, sorry, we had a bunch of calls for Levi. We couldn't get to him because Crockett Myers called it. Mm. Fair enough. Do we do we like Crockett Myers? He looks all right. Looks like a good kid. Uh, he was at club last year. Was he? he was doing 450 stuff. and Yeah, he's a good kid. Uh, yeah, he seems all right. And then uh, that Daytona race, he was he was good at when we were there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, didn't he me. win? What? Yeah, he beat me. Did he beat you? Yeah, he won. Yeah, I don't think he did good the first main, and then, and then the, the second, second one. The second one he won. The second one. Yeah, yeah. Anything, first yeah. first yeah. row. Uh, um, yeah, he, yeah, I think he was first row and just said, "See you later." Yeah, you know. Uh, all right, let's get to our next guest here. Brought to you by the folks at OGO Power Sports. Pulp fifteen is the code to save with OGO. Roller bags, backpacks, all of it. Uh, thank you to the folks at OGO. We had Levi Kitchen on. He swept the uh, race in St. Louis. We have the other guy. That swept for his first win of the year, and it was super cool, popular win as well. Nice to see him get 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 that done. Eli Tomac, what's up, man? How are you? Hey, how's it going? Just, Good. Uh, chilling at home right now. Yeah, going to take a couple of days off, and yeah, that's about it. Thanks, yeah. thanks for the time. Appreciate it. I want to know. I guess first off, what like checking the results and texting people. Like, you guys were kind of on the line before we knew that Jet was for sure docked. Did you know way earlier what you needed to do? Like, how did that go down for you? Um, well, I guess we didn't really know. I didn't know until I was basically on the starting line, the, yeah, okay. the point, uh, the actual spread. So, um, uh, Coker ran up to me when I was, like, literally picking my gate and then showed <laughs> me the point spread. So, yeah. I didn't know what the, the penalty, whether it was going to be – two points or four points or whatever, yeah. you know, whatever the penalty was going to be. Um, 
you know, I knew once we got to picking that he was Doc because Hunter was right behind me, and, and obviously he wasn't, mm-hmm. or and you know, he wasn't right behind me. But um, yeah, like I said, I was yeah. like literally on the gate, and then he showed me, you know, hey, you have a three point gap on him now. So, yeah, because I was yeah. refreshing, 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 texting Pelletier. I'm like, these guys got to know what they need to do before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know, like it makes all the difference in the world to know that you have to beat Jet or you don't or whatever, you know? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so I guess it was late, but we did get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Got it. Uh, listen, I think you've been riding really well lately, um, qualifying wise, and, and, and some of the heats were really good, even the one that, uh-huh. you, and, but the starts in your, in your, your main event starts were no good. And then your yeah. fake start in St. Louis was no good, and I'm like, oh shit, like uh, you know, like yeah. oh well. And then you pulled it, uh, you pulled them all, you, you got back to where you needed to be. Did you change much on starts? I, I didn't change much on starts, um, and I, like I, I said, like before, is like I, I haven't like figured it out exactly what uh, what what was happening. Um, you know, it's, I've obviously been showing some inconsistency with them. Yep. Um, so that's that. That's that, man. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say exactly uh, yeah. what, the, you know, what the difference is. Yep. Yeah, like just – yeah, because whatever it was, you know, you nailed them at all three times and, and, like, you could have done much better at the other races had you gotten starts, right? So uh, – I mean, yeah, this is this is definitely true, yes. I, if I would have put myself in better position – Yeah. Like in Seattle, I probably would have done better. You know, it's just like I was so far back in Seattle at the start. It was, it was uh, horrible. And then you told us at the press conference you, you've been battling an ankle injury. Yeah, so after Daytona, this is – it's a weird thing because I, I I think I did it literally just dabbing in a corner at home, and then it kind of just crept in on me and was just getting worse like the more I was practicing and the more I was hitting whoops and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um one of my tracks at home, I've got two sets of loops and a dragon, and I was riding that track um, around that time, and I think it irritated it more after I had, like, the foot dab. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I guess it was getting a little bit worse. I didn't really think about it or thought it would just get better, but I had to take, like, with real time off during the week for it to get better. And that's what I did this last week is, like, I – I, okay. I didn't even ride here at home. I did some starts and a couple of sprint laps um, to get the inflammation out of my ankle. Like it was, yeah. it was just a, an ankle sprain, but I needed to take time off. And I wasn't doing that those first couple of weeks. Um, and it, I was struggling on the weekend straight up. Like yeah. my range of motion, I'd lost the range of motion. I couldn't wait to peg right. I, you know, I was probably, I don't know, like a 30, 70 weight bias on my feet in the, in the whoop. So it was, it was messing me up. That, and and that was your Achilles. Is that your your one from last year as well? The one you did your Achilles on, Eli? No, it's the opposite foot. Oh, great! Could could oh. you have, could you have told us idiot idiots in the media, Tomac? At any point? I mean, <laughs> we're we're sitting here, we're having referendums it's a about to you. No basis. We're, right. we're having hour long discussions about Eli Tomac. <laughs> well, here's the thing: is, is I didn't know what to blame like some of these poor finishes on, whether it was the start or or the foot. Okay. So I just, I didn't want to like make up all the excuses, so yeah. Um, I don't know. Okay. Like, finally, I had to say something. But I, I can't stand being that guy that's like whining and complaining every weekend. You know, if I if yeah. something doesn't go my way. Yeah, so. I mean, I get that point yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, Eli, I'm. I'm gonna ask you. I've been around for a while. You've been around for a while. Last year, your starts were on point on the new bike, and then this year, it's kind of like so hit or miss. But how, like, between you and I, how do you go from? not even being in the ballpark to being, okay, you're three in a row this past weekend, you know, like where, um, where does it, where does it come from? What changes, you know? Well, I, I was messing around with different body position cause I was getting kind of lost. And then, um, at one point we even had a start map in, so yeah. I was flip flopping between start maps. So, um, mm-hmm. like this week I was, um, like no start map, mm-hmm. so that was good. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Yeah, that's that's crazy. I mean, it's no start map because you're taking too much power away because it's pretty tacky on the other side. I mean, getting bogged down. I mean, because Anderson had the same thing. They he he told me this past week because his starts were so bad. He was using a start map, yeah. and then uh-huh. it was taking away too much power. So then he just stopped using the start map, and that's yep. when his starts came back around at Indianapolis. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just crazy how it's just like a light switch. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's it's tough to say, man. But all I know is I'll take it. And I hope I keep those going. <laughs> has it been the most frustrated? I mean, has this been the most frustrated you've been in a long time? How's how's the the you know the anger level and all of that with you on taking this long to get a win? How's it been? Um, I was to the point where I was kind of past frustration and was just kind of lost and. And then you're like really wondering, have I completely lost it? You know, and then mm-hmm. you're kind of just depressed. So I was getting just kind of down in general. I was almost past the match stage and just getting in <laughs> depression. So I needed to put up this result. That's for sure. It seemed like the last couple of weeks you came out and qualifying. And you're like, watch this. Like, watch, like, you know, like I'm, you know, we know you yeah. go out early. You want to get your arms pumped up a little bit and then get into that. But it seemed to me like yeah. you were like trying to make a statement like, I'm still good, everybody. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I have been feeling really good in qualifying. Yeah. And even the heat. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you've won a lot, Eli. Right. Um, Are you asking for advice, Phil, on how you can win? No. <laughs> no or that, is that that, that ship's fucking sailed? <laughs> okay. <for me>. <laughs> 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 that's that's long gone. But this win that you had this this past Saturday, and like I said, you've won a lot. You've come back after shoulder injuries. You've done a shit ton of winning since then. But this one after last year and going through the ringer the first couple, you know, eight, nine rounds and not winning, and then finally getting this one, where does this one rank of all your – how many you got now? 50 well, – how many? 51? 50, 52. Holy 52? Fuck, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 So that sigh of relief for crossing the finish line, I mean, how was that compared to all the other ones? Because when you're clicking them off, you just take them for granted, right? I would assume. Not like I've yeah. won, but – well. A little bit, but at the same time, I guess the biggest. Like, I wouldn't know if I don't know if I can really rank it. Yep. It was just a goal that I had, mm-hmm. you know, on the list, and I wanted to achieve it. Was, hey, I can come back from this injury and still get a win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as where it, you know, where it stacks, it it's hard to put it in a yeah. specific yeah. position. Yeah. 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 Uh, Levi, uh, sorry, Eli, Eli Tomac on the show brought to you by the folks at OGO Power Sports. Uh, Pulp 15 is the code to save. Uh, I do have a question, and Eli, I was asking. So after practice, I texted somebody who has uh, dart fish, and I'm like, hey, man, uh, after the Supercross triple, three, two, three over the big, and three over the big, and one, is that the fastest yep. way? And they said, yep, it's the fastest way to do it by a little bit. And I'm like, okay. Uh-huh. And then you're out there winning everything. By going big to big, uh, what what was the what was the thought the thought process behind that? Okay, so the thought process for that was is I was out of the rut the whole way. Okay. Um, if you, you obviously you know everyone was going three, and then uh, the guys that were going two after the two you would line in the in the two fifty you know most of the lines that the two fifties were taken. Okay. And um, it just got more rutted up, so I didn't want to take the risk of missing the rhythm even though I was maybe giving up a tenth or two. Yeah. Um, okay. It, for me, the consistency was, was the benefit over over that. Yep. Yeah, so I, was, I, I was like, yeah. uh, I'm like, I know he can do that. He's capable of it, but he's not doing that. So, And, and I, I was trying it in the, in the third qualifier. Yep. I was trying it, uh, and I did it a few times, but it, I knew I could do the three all the way down every single lap. And then I'm guessing – and missing. then uh, Phil, we were talking earlier in the show, Phil thinks – that you saw that Red Cross right at the last minute, second even. Uh, I saw it late. <laughs> yep, I saw that sucker late. Mm-hmm. It, it looked like you were about to boost that finish line, and then it was like last second you rolled out of it, you know? And then, like, you even yeah. happened to look back over your shoulder to make sure someone behind you didn't jump the finish yeah. line because you didn't know what exactly. the fuck was going on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So That was a good eye. You. <laughs> You were pretty much yeah, the only I was, one. I was lucky to lucky to catch it. That's for sure. You know the fact that you know five other did. You know yeah. got the penalty for it. So yeah, yeah it, it definitely it definitely was a, a turning point for a few guys for sure. And um, yeah, we just talked to Levi Kitchen, and we were talking about the nine whoops, no dragon backs. I like how Eva, Eli he's says still he, practicing he still has a dragon, dragon back. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> Eli's a fucking man. He's right. just like it should probably. He's probably like it should be out there. You know what so, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Coop. Coop was on our show a few weeks ago, and he said, I would have loved to have known that before I had <laughs> hit two Dragonbacks every single day in the offseason. But I guess Eli's still hitting Dragonbacks. But, anyways, the question, yeah, nine whoops, no Dragonbacks. I mean, this yeah. is not this does not help you. 
Uh, what are your thoughts on no. these things that they're doing to keep you guys safer? Uh, uh, yeah, what do, you, what do you think about it? I, I guess um, my first question is, is like, is there, do we have statistics on, on people crashing after the ninth whoop? They say okay. they do. Yeah, they say they thir- okay. 12, 13 whoops they've said. I didn't see it, but they told me were dangerous. It would be nice to see that, like a real number. And then, and then I could like make my case, but mm-hmm. um, I'm not a fan of it. Period. And and I, I, man, there's I could go on and on. Like mm-hmm. if we're gonna start going down this rabbit hole, like they should ban 90, 90 degree left hand, you know, first turn. Yeah, you know, those are dangerous. Everyone gets jacked up. Um, yeah, it's it's a bummer because it's it's limiting um, elite riders from being elite, in my opinion. And yeah. this is, you know, this is the top, you yeah. know, I, this I, is the top. This, I is, agree. this is AMA Supercross. Like, I think, I think it's an obstacle that you should have to deal with, you know, I, I, um, even though it could be a little bit more dangerous, I guess. So. Yeah. No one's saying blitz off the dragon back. If you're not comfortable, don't just do it. Don't Correct. do it. Don't yeah. do it. That's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's full option. Yeah. 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 You know, so it's, yeah. it's unfortunate for sure. I think, uh, well, like I, like I said, I yeah. like you go down the rabbit hole. Like, the, in my opinion, get rid of the ninety degree left hand starts, man. They're a disaster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, listen, I, 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 they told me they have data, and I'm like, okay. And then, and then they have data on loader whoops versus dozer whoops, and I'm like, okay. Uh-huh. And I'm like, okay. But like you said, Eli, yeah, yeah let's see it. I guess. But I mean, like everyone references the dragons back back to Nashville, Nashville with Barsha and a few. But like, dude, Bam could hit a dragons back blindfolded and be okay just like one instant where it like yeah. pegged them you yeah. know what i mean like i just like dude i can whoops and dragons have pegged me too but that's just unfortunately yes that is part of it and there's some rhythm sections that are gnarly that should be fixed but they don't get fixed so i'd I, again yeah. i just think that's flawed yeah you know it's it's yeah it's a bad i think thing. it's flawed i'm on the same page yeah well i mean eli Phil broke his wrist in uh, a, a long section of whoops made with a loader in that, Oakland. That was and on so me. We, and I should have blamed Levi for that because <laughs> Levi fucked me. But other than that, <laughs> it's just like that was part of it. I had to pay the due on that. Okay. You know? Yeah, like, I, know. I, I, I know. I don't know. I, I'm with you guys. Like, look, I'm just sitting in the press box. But, yeah, it's super cross. It's dangerous. I don't it's like just dangerous. Uh, Eli, I fucking hate three ins, okay? I will not. If there's a million-dollar bag on <laughs> in a rhythm at the end of it and, Phil, you got a three in, I'm not three in it, okay? I I don't care, but they're not going to change that for me. Right. I still got to deal with it and go the slow way around the fucking corner, you know? Hey, yeah. Eli, Phil told us earlier. Here's another thing. Okay, go one ahead. More point, one more point yeah. on the nine move thing. I don't like it how it's like a guarantee that you can get in and out of them in two hits. Yeah, also, I agree. With yep. the jump combo. Yep. Yeah. Because the triple, triple, triple is just, it's a two hit and you're out. Yeah. You know, like quads are a lot harder in the whoops, but the fact that we can just three through them that easy is another reason. Like the nine whoop thing is a disaster, and, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Again. yeah, I mean, how about jump? ten? Like, if you yeah. literally added one whoop, yeah, so they have to single out. It yeah. would you change know? something uh, or do something. It yeah. would change it. Right. It would. It would change be way whole, harder in the quad out. Yeah. There would be some more of a negative. I Even agree. though Jet was pulling me with the little skim and the you know little yeah. jump this weekend. Yeah. Still, most of the time, once there's a goat trail down it, yeah. you just jump in and out twice, and that's it. They're over. 100%. But you know who probably loves it? Coop. Coop's probably <laughs> over there. Like, he's probably paying these guys on the back end. Like, hey, guys, <laughs> just <laughs> hook me up. The Coop, the Coop, Coop, loves it. I guarantee yeah. you, the Coster oh, uh, loves everyone it. Everyone at Don't every weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone at Austrian Brown wow. probably loves the nine whoops. Eli, you know? this is how much Phil hates three in. The rhythm that we just hey. talked about after the Supercross triple, <laughs> he uh-huh. said he was r- inside roll, double triple. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, I would wow. <laughs> don't fucking wow me. I would land off the Supercross triple, well, go tight inside, go roll two, two, three, three single. <laughs> hey, sometimes those work. I was doing one of those in Indy. Yeah, in Indy, you go inside roll yeah. double. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty crafty. I wasn't going outside and three and into that, dude. Ah, I'm yeah. out. I'm out, but I do want to. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna change it for me from getting pegged here. Uh, when you were behind Jet and you were hunting him down, <clears throat> how was and you guys yarded Coop? What was that first main? Yeah, second first, main. Second, second, second main. Second, yeah, because AP yeah, was on. Yeah, yeah. And you guys pulled away from Coop and everybody. <clears throat> um, how was that speed when you were latched on 
onto him? Uh, it it was just um, for me. It was just a, a good normal race pace. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I I was slower in the whoops. Mm-hmm. That's where he was getting me. Was on those end zone like those two nineties. Yeah, getting me in there with the whoops. So yeah, and he was really good after whoops in that ninety, and then jumping across the start. Mm-hmm. I was losing a lot of time, but everywhere else I would consider it like an I don't know normal sprint pace. Mm-hmm. Eli, so, ref- reflecting but on we that, we were ripping for sure. Mm-hmm. We were ripping. Reflecting on when you look back at the race like that, when you notice where you're slower in those two nineties. Do you, uh-huh. what's your mindset like moving forward to the next weekend to try and like adapt to that? Well, it's just trying to improve on that area. You know, I felt like his bike was turning really good in that 90 after the whoops mm-hmm. and he could accelerate super early. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's like something I would try to work on, right? Mm-hmm. Just working on my acceleration through that 90 degree turn. Mm-hmm. So. I, uh, Eli, it's, it's no secret that your bike set up the way you like your stuff. Your bike moves mm-hmm. a lot more than a lot of people Mm -hmm. you know but i've noticed over time and now the honda's jets bike is starting starting to move a lot more in the shock and in the forks kind of going the way kyb and the way gilly have your stuff it looks like show and the honda guys are kind of going that way as well versus where the Mm -hmm. austrian brand is still pretty stiff and dead looking um Mm -hmm. yeah it's just crazy to see how your the way your bike looks is kind of transferring over into the way other manufacturers are starting to valve and make their stuff look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know how much, you know, or how I can comment on that. But mm-hmm. um, I know our our valving is is still gnarly. But mm-hmm. yeah, I get mm-hmm. at the same time it still moves. So mm-hmm. yeah, um, it Villeman's Villeman's got this thing about your forks on on social media, and even when he was in here a month ago, and uh-huh. and. I'm like, yeah, but he won with this setting, DV. DV doesn't care because he's David's Villeman. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, it's working for him, man. He's won a lot of races. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I get it that it, it goes low in the stroke, but, like, it's, it, yeah. the, the guy's making it work. So, you know. I, I do know that I do run a soft fork compared to, Yeah. I don't know, if you want to, you know, say something's normal, mm-hmm. I, it's probably a little bit softer than the usual. Uh, I hear, Eli, maybe some motocross races for you. Obviously, you don't need to break any news tonight, but I kind of hear through the grapevine you might be doing some here and there. I I I don't I don't really know yet. Okay. Um, with it, so let's just leave it at a maybe. Okay. Yep, leave it at a maybe. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, we do have some phone calls mm-hmm. for you as always on the show. Uh, Joe's on too. Joe, thanks for calling. What's your question for Eli Tomac? Hey, so uh, I've always followed your career and watched who you have kept around your your camp. And with Coop joining the team, um, how much of his success have you contributed to Gilly? And then uh, a second part to that question, when Coop's like really on it during qualifying, do you ever just pull Gilly aside and just tell him, hey, throw him off a click or two? (laughs) (laughs) Wait, okay, so what was your first question about Coop and, and Gilly and the bike? Yeah, so the first question was, Gilly being your guy and bringing Coop onto the team, was, was that something that you were kind of concerned with, kind of sharing that knowledge with Coop, or, or you know, um, how much of his success would you contribute to, to Gilly? Yeah. Here's the thing is, is I know I'm, I'm quite a bit heavier than Cooper, so I'm not super concerned, like, he can use the exact same stuff as me. So okay. I'm not super worried about like valving or, you know, a spring rate being identical. I mean, um, yeah, once you're on, on the same team, though, you know what geometry everyone's running, you know, triple clamp, mm-hmm. all that stuff. But uh, another thing, too, in the 450 class, most of the guys kind of set the bikes for them. So, um, but, yeah, that's just, that's just what you got to deal with, man. Like when a, an elite guy like Cooper comes to the team, um, you know, mm-hmm. Gilmore's knowledge is going to have to be shared, you know, no matter what with them. So it's just, uh, it's just how the game is really. Yep. 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 Yeah. And then one more question. Hey, when, when you're going past that mechanics area, everybody was, was catching the inside of that over that double. What makes you just completely destroy that outside burn? Is it just (laughs) trying to gain speed or is it just, I mean, you were just laying it over in that thing. Well, I, it was kind of like the, um, like the thought process of the rhythm. 
it was I knew I can just blast this berm every lap. I'm not going to make a mistake if, by trying to go inside and push the edge of the tire. So just rip the berm, and then I was able to land inside of some bumps on the triple landing. It's to where if you went inside, you would kind of have to fight, you know, your, your angle off the ramp, and then you were more likely to land into the bumps on the landing. So I could go outside and, just, and land inside. That was the reasoning for ripping that outside. Gotcha. You know, the Thanks, Joe. It's amazing to see. Absolutely. Thanks for coming back, Tomac. You're a true inspiration. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Next up is Michael on four. What's up, Michael? What's your question for Eli Tomac? Hi. First, I want to say um, congratulations, Eli. Um, I know you mentioned you had questioned whether coming back was worth it, but I'm here to tell you, I think I speak for everyone when <laughs> the races are all always better when you're on the gate, and congratulations on the win. But I just wanted to ask, what was the hardest part about coming back from an Achilles injury, specifically for Supercross, and was it and was it what you expected to be the hardest part, or did something kind of take you by surprise? The hardest part with the Achilles is getting a like a heel raise done. So it's just standing on the ball of your foot and going up to your toes, and that took a while. And I was pretty worried about how I was going to be able to place my foot on the peg. Um, but there's a certain point where it does come around, but it takes months. Like it takes, oh my gosh, it was like month four, four, you know, like four and a half months down the road before I could do a heel raise, maybe five somewhere in there. So that was, that was a little bit nerve wracking in, in making the decision, you know, cause I, I did have to make the decision, you know, to, to race and signed with, with Yamaha before that point. And, I, you know, you're still just rehabbing and hoping all that stuff does um, heal the right way. Do you have a standard boot, or did they, did they fix you up a little bit with some stuff that helps? Uh, I will say it's, it's slightly stiffer now. Okay. You know, just, just yep. bending back and forth. And then my booty's a little bit bigger just because the back of my Achilles is thick. When you carry your Achilles, your tendon grows back really thick. So oh, your yeah. foot kind of grows. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Uh, Eli, yep. as you get older, um, you know, I've, I've talked to many motocrossers who get older and then they're off the bike training. They almost kind of slow it down a little bit. Like, Phil, you, you talked about this in the live show where you can't bury yourself during the week anymore like you used to, you know? Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and uh, Eli is obviously one of the best physically conditioned guys in our sport. But I'm wondering, Eli, do you do as much off the bike as you used to? Do you, have you backed that down a little bit to, to, prior to, to prioritize rest? Yes. Totally. Yeah. I think back to what I was doing before, and it's, that's, that's exactly how it goes. You can bury yourself, you know, in your late teens and your early 20s. Yeah. But once you're late late 20s and, and early 30s, you got to back it down and you got to listen to your body more or else. Yeah. Yeah, you'll uh, you'll go over the top. Yep. Yeah, but doesn't it doesn't it make you feel like a pussy a little bit though? It's just like you know, <laughs> you used to be able to you know you could handle you know on a hard week you can handle a fifteen hour training week you know uh-huh. what I mean without racing and then all of a sudden you get into racing and this and that and then you get older it's just like, I mean a hard week now without without racing is like man 10 11 hours and i'm like man I, I i can't do it and then during the weeks like i can i can't handle riding back-to-back days on a tuesday and a wednesday like if i could really ride monday and wednesday it'd be a lot better like i just i can't handle it anymore like and it's and it's, it's <laughs> so, actually, that, so then it's, it gets you mad because you yeah yeah it yeah. actually get you know because obviously i don't have eli's talent you know and like to ride a dirt bike but i did work you know, hard yeah. with Jamar and Osho, and I still put in a lot of time to make up for it in other ways. And like now that I can't do it, like it is, it's kind of fucking depressing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know like, well, yeah. And one thing I don't do now is like the extracurricular activities. Mm-hmm. Like I used to do my work and then go play golf. Yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> go on the surf boat or something. Now it's like you're on I'm the like, couch. No, I did my work. I have to go home and rest. Yeah. Same. <laughs> yeah. You you yeah. almost have to rest harder now than you actually train you know like yeah. like you said after seattle you didn't ride last week well because your ankle or whatever but like after seattle mm-hmm. i had such a meltdown because of the shitty race but i didn't ride last week either the first time i rode was press day you know like i just need yeah. to be like hey dude i'm i'm fucking uh, out you know like it's so eli it's are you doing more mountain than road or road than mountain bike which what what, what is kind of what, what what do you do more of yeah i i'm i'm mountain um yeah I did some some like flat road stuff. Obviously, when I was first coming back, yeah. 
for my Achilles thing, just to not, you know, yeah. get sketchy or load my foot weird. But right. yeah, I, I'm mountain 99% of the time. Oh, really? Yeah. 99, yeah. huh? Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I, ride, I ride up fire roads and stuff, but it's like not all single track, but I'm still on my mountain bike. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. You guys didn't see it, but there's a day when we were out at the test track and he showed up and he just looked like he got the crap beat out of him. And I'm like, dude, what happened? And he's like, yeah, I just. Had crash. Oh really? <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. I'm like damn. I went over my bark bad on on the uh, San Juan trail. It hit off there in so- SoCal. It totally like smashed my face. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, are it you was, good? Like, ten days. It was like ten days before A one. I'm like, dude, that was sketchy. You know, I'm like, yeah, I photo jacked myself well, on the mountain bike. Yeah, it was. It was I mean, fun. look, you can always get hit by a car, but I mean, it is that is a risk of mountain oh, yeah. stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like breaking collarbones, yeah. like all day long, you could go down and break a yeah. collarbone. Yeah. So you know. I don't know. I've had some car wheels on a mountain bike. Yeah. 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 And you, and it's just like, you know, oh, yeah, it's lighter is better. You know, you don't want to wear a whole lot of sh- shit or whatever. Yeah. You've got this little rinky-dink helmet on. But you come down some of those hills in, in SoCal and oh, stuff. Yeah. You, you well, hit what's, a, what's the one that Don always does, the, 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 the Skyline? Skyline. Sky, well, Skyline's easy. That's flat. But you come down ITT. No, but you, I've heard there's a backside of the Skyline. Down, oh, oh down, yeah. Coming down. down. Yeah, yeah, down. yeah, yeah. yeah it's I, I heard it's insane. Yeah, I'm out on that. Like, I'll get off and walk my bike. <laughs> yeah. It feels a big hike of bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad with that. So, like, Eli, so, like, what is – how many hours can you put in now? You know, like, when you're off-season training, He's not you know, going to tell you. What? Who, Eli is, is – is, is Eli doesn't He didn't tell us about a, his ankle. A, we didn't – We. I want all those – Worrying conversations about Eli Tomac. Back. Eli doesn't give a fuck. Okay, Eli, in the off season, what's a big week like hourly week? Because you know, I know what Jamar does. You know how many hours Jamar puts in. Like, w- what do you do? You know, like how many hours? Oh, like what's a big week? I don't know. Yes, you um, do. Know. He's not don't telling. Stop. I told you. Bullshit. He doesn't. He's very secretive. He doesn't want to share this know. shit. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. this is. Uh, this is. Classified information. Uh, see, <laughs> Jamar will tell you he he's re- he's trained with me. So yeah. there you go. All yeah. right, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna ask this. Okay, we're gonna get off moto real quick. Yeah. He'll be like, yeah, I smoked him on a mountain bike. Dude, I can destroy him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you hang with yeah. Jamar on? Uh, can you hang with Jamar on a mountain bike or what? If you, um, ha- I can out sprint him, but if it's more than like a two minute sprint, Jamar goes bye bye. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is Jamar I mean, is Jamar still yeah. an animal? Still? Like yeah, he's still yeah. he's still he's, a sick yeah. buck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he, he's unreal, you know. Um the the power and the numbers that Jamar can put out is right. like you'd have to say, Eli, that Jamar's probably the roundabout I mean, he is the strongest cyclist that we have in our sport. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Cyclist, yep. Yeah. Really, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah hands down. Yep. Like if he wanted to, he could go be yeah. He could do it. U- UCI World Cup stuff. Really, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I, I used Eli in his, in his secretive nature as an example a little while ago. Someone was, oh, the Jet stuff and, and, the, and around San Diego and, and everyone's piling on Jet and booing them and all this. And I go, look, man, if you're going to put yourself out there with donuts and press conferences and all this, you're going to get yeah. hate. I said, you don't want hate? Be like Tomac. I said, post a photo, say, thanks, San Diego, see you next week. <laughs> like, there's no training photos. There's no, here's what I ate for breakfast. There's nothing. Mm-hmm. Be like Eli Tomac, and you'll just never, no one will say anything. So, Well, yeah, we, just live by the sword, die by the sword, right? Yeah, yeah no, you're yeah. right. Yeah. And, 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 and well, I tell is. people that. Look at Tomac's social, man. He's posting some photos for sponsor stuff, and then that's it. Yeah. And, and that's fine, you know? So, yeah. yeah. But, That's how I roll. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Eli, yeah. okay, from uh, um, a marketing standpoint, okay, um, obviously Jet sponsors me, and I'm friends with Jet. I'm friends with Coop. Like, uh, from a marketing Jet sponsors sta- you? Yeah, Jets and Donuts athlete, man. Yeah, he, he actually gets wow. money. He runs yeah, a yeah. donut sticker. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, good kid. Gives me money. I'm not, I am not. can't talk too much shit. I mean, I will talk shit on him, but, uh, like, for you, like, obviously, you're a world-class athlete. And obviously, yeah. you're very quiet. You're very reserved. No one knows much about what you do. I mean, you're a family guy, this, that. Do you think it kind of hurt you a little bit with potential sponsors? Or do you think salary-wise and sponsorship-wise, I mean, you're pretty much set the cap for the sport on how much an athlete can make, right? And now you have Jet coming in with all this new stuff and all these new mm-hmm. promotions and this and that, trying to set a, a bar of, like, a new cap of what an athlete can make in motocross. 
Do you think mm-hmm. maybe in your time, maybe you think you missed the mark a little bit or or what? Or are you just okay um, with being a race winner and going about it and winning championships that way? That that was my mentality. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that, and that's I still that way, you know, is – is I feel like I, I could have made the majority of my income, and that was the easiest way to make my income was just winning races mm-hmm. and championships. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a big question mark for sure, and I don't know how big those deals could get for us. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, just a, that's a huge question, man. I just I don't know. You know, if I would have pushed it harder, you know, how big of those deals would have gotten, I – I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, okay. Fair there's enough. a lot of there's a lot still, of mystery around you. For us, though, winning the 450 class is by far the easiest way to make money in our sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. agreed. But it's agreed. not easy yeah. to win the 450 class. Yes, yeah. no, no, 100. No. percent No, I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Phil, but in like, case you're wondering, Phil. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. But it's just like no, I'm just saying, you know, because no one knows in our sport like what an athlete really makes. Right. It's not like MLB. So like Eli's yeah. pretty much he set the cap for like in our sport at the moment on who makes the most money it's yeah. it's eli you know but now you have jet bringing in all this other stuff with vip yeah. and recognition and all whatever it is you know what i mean uh-huh. i'm just wondering if eli was thinking oh maybe if he would have done yeah the marketing side kind of like coop like carps uh coops more of just like eli a racer championship yeah. guy yep. like if he would have done more of that would he have set the bar a little bit higher you know like sure how do you get a manufacturer or gear company or whatever to pay you more when eli sets the like, you know, Alpine yeah. Stars pays Eli X. Well, how does Jed ask for more than Eli after Eli's already won all these championships and stuff? So right. I'm just wondering how yeah. that all works. Yeah, it's interesting. Know? I just think you have yeah. the personality for it and the desire to do it or you don't. Like, yeah. I can't believe Jed and Hunter, they they the Friday VIPs they go see. They see him on Saturday. Like, to mm-hmm. me, I'm just putting myself in that shit. I wouldn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm busy. I'm yeah. trying to win races. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. shitting on them. Good, good for them. Yep. I, I think that's awesome that they do that, but that would be to me. Yeah, it's got to be mentally draining, right? It's got to be. Yeah, I mean, it would. Yeah. It would be draining, and it's that. That's it, right? Is how much can you manage, and yeah. how long can you sustain it? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a big question mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's fair enough. I no, I appreciate that answer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple more questions before we let you go, Eli. I brought to you by OGO Power Sports. I got two media questions for you. One is, we oh. still laugh, Eli, mm-hmm. about you coming out of Twitter retirement. For three oh, to years out. to blow Zach out. <laughs> That's the greatest and, thing. And ever. we loved it. And we still <laughs> we still laugh at Zach and we still say things on Twitter like, dude, be careful. And he can, <laughs> so can you take us through like just coming out of retirement, slapping Zach and going uh, back into retirement? We loved it. We loved it. Okay, so here's the deal with that. That was I'm actually looking at X right now. Um that was in June. June June 21st of 23. So <laughs> I remember, I totally remember the day I was, I was cruising around on my, um, on my tractor, like, <laughs> okay. like moving a hay bale around or something. I don't know what I was doing, but <laughs> I don't know. I, and then I took a break. I happened to look at, look at X and, and I saw, you know, Daco's reply there. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Yeah, I haven't said anything for three and a half years. Or, or like, he posted the Instagram. I'm like, I'm going to fire back. Okay. <laughs> Eli just instantly fucking we, triggered. We loved it. He <laughs> said he roosted you, and he had a better chance to win. But like, you were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's so funny. We, yeah, we just like, we anyway, loved it. Yeah, I just wanted to, yep. to make my opinion. I'm like, okay, I'm going to fire one back. And just, yeah, and yeah. Of course, yeah, it was. So yeah, no, nope. and it was me. Everyone's like, "No way, it was him." Like he's never on there. Yeah, um, yeah, it was me. <laughs> like I'm, I just, I'm just a lurker. Yeah, on, we, uh, we, we laugh about it, and it provided us, and it still provides us with great, <laughs> great uh, laughter that you just came in for three years, blew them out, and left again. We loved uh, it. I just, uh, I think it's so funny. He's out on the track. Like normally, like. Yeah, you're a husband, you got kids, you go out, you ride your tractor to get away from your family and stuff, and you go cruise around with a Coors Light. Eli's out there, opens up X, and just like, you know what, I'm going to blow this fucker out right <laughs> yeah. now, real quick, hold on. And, yeah. and Zach was still like, I don't know what I did, I don't know what I did. <laughs> Zach's still like paranoid about it, so you've really put it in his brain. Uh, mm. For He will forever probably never comment on you on X ever again, like <laughs> that you've done it to him. Well. Yeah. I have no problem with it. I was just I wanted yeah. to state my case too. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, if you're gonna 
I say that all the time. We in the media are, or on X, we're accountable. You know, we can't just yeah. – yeah, we, we deserve to get called out. <laughs> and so speaking of that, uh, Lewis Phillips, uh-huh. our buddy from Vital, um, he, he said he had a very rough interview with you at press day. You don't seem to be a fan of him. Uh, he's 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 a little worried now that you're gonna maybe beat him up. Um, so is there is there problems with Lewis here, uh, uh, Eli? Okay, so this once again it came down to the starts. It was all about the starts, okay? Yeah. So he started with, um, you know, the question was is like why are, why are your starts more inconsistent this year um, compared to last year? You know what changed? Blah blah blah. And I basically told them, like what I told you guys earlier, like mm-hmm. nothing's really changed. I just, I'm not sure. I'm just more inconsistent with it. Yep. And I tried to get straight to the point, you know, of what I thought about it. Yep. But he, this is, this is my opinion. It's like he kept digging about it, like digging, digging farther into the question. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know what else to say. There's I know. Nothing like, to say Phil asking start, for the training than, load. <laughs> other than if, if, I, if I could figure it out then I would have it figured out, but I don't have it figured out, so I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> but it, and then it, like, it kept going, so I just just basically stopped answering the questions. <laughs> the last two questions, I said like, one word for each question. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. But there's nothing. There's not nothing other than that. Like it's it's fine. He's. He... I mean, I just I just went over the top. Like I just started. My blood started boiling. Like I okay. Like, I can't say anything else. You know. Yeah. Uh-huh. He just went mute. Basically, fuck off. You should have just told him to fuck off, and he would have been okay with it. You know, the fact you probably just went silent, ate at yeah, him he, more. Yeah. He, he said he said he thought you were like looking into his soul. <laughs> he was. He was. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, no. I kind of was. But... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking those those Brits, man. Is this? Yeah. He's next up on Twitter. He's got a yeah, target on yeah. his back. He, he, he couldn't understand Eli's social cues that he was giving. No, no, no. It just no, wasn't no. there. Like, hey, man, stop asking <laughs> questions about the starts. <laughs> We're done. Like, yeah. No, listen, I, I, I've i been there, too. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not saying, you yeah. know, I've had, you know, guys not like me and not answer mm-hmm. questions, and I'm like, okay, moving mm-hmm. on. So it happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, our, anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good to know. Yeah. Uh, all right, anything else for Eli before we let him go? No, it's just cool to see you get your win back. It was. Yeah. How about those fans, dude? They were yeah, they loving it. Nuts. Yeah, yeah. That, that was cool. That last lap was, was, was rad. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome, yeah. man. Well, cool. it's awesome to see you get the win. And uh, just tell us about these ankle things if you can. If you drop these things, that'd be great. Um, if you have ankle injuries, maybe come, maybe come on X and tell us. Um, I know, I know, but then it's just. Yeah, and it's just okay. If if it goes on for more than a week, yeah, yeah I should dude, say something. Dude, yeah. trust me. No one thinks that you're making excuses. You're Eli Tomac. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, I promise you, no one's like, "Oh, what a pussy." Like yeah. no one is saying yeah, that yeah, about you, yeah, man. Your yeah. rep is solid as one of the gnarliest dudes we've ever seen. If you say you're dealing with something, we all believe you. It's not like <laughs> Phil making shit up. No, I don't make shit. Don't listen to him. Either, <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But thank you. Thanks for the interview. Congrats yeah. on the win. And uh, take enjoy the week off, man. Thanks, Eli. All right. Have a good night, guys. See you, All right. See, ya. See ya. All right. That's Eli Tomac, everybody. Brought to you by OGO. <laughs> that's good. That's he's really good. good. That's good. You're quite, Phil, really good questions. Yeah. I, I, yeah. He's, uh, I think racers, they like hearing from racers. Mm-hmm. You too, Marsh. But yeah. Not this idiot sitting here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I, I knew he wasn't giving you the training load. I knew that. I just wondering, you know, Dude, I just they, don't know what he can for they, years. They no, lock that stuff down no, over there on the ranch. I talked hey, to the, German. Their days at, <laughs> at the their days at the test track are pretty incredible. Yeah, that's good. It's like cool Eli's what thirty, thirty one now. Like, what are you hiding anymore? It's over. I, it's not over, I, but like I you pitched know. John a story. Uh, John Tomac. I said, hey, I got an e bike. I got a dirt bike. How about I drive to the ranch and we do a funny video story? I try to train with Eli. I try to tr- keep up with mm-hmm. the program. Mm-hmm. I'm going to die, but mm-hmm. that'll be the funny video. And, you know, I don't need to know anything, but I just I want to follow Eli. I got an e-bike and I got a dirt bike. I'll try to ride 30-minute motos. I don't know. John was not interested. <laughs> not having that. <laughs> no chance. It's just, it's just funny because, like, uh, Osho in general, Eli's dad are yeah. pretty good friends. Right, so right. it's just like, and they've known each other for, fuck, how many 40 years now so it's not like they don't really know what's yeah going on you know so right, right. but it's just pretty cool to know that eli i i know his workload's not there like what he used to it, yeah. it can't be you know and i wonder if that's maybe the reason i don't know i would yeah. like to see him to do all of the outdoors 
you yeah. know, because I'm sure there'll be like moments like he had this past weekend or Dallas where he's still in beast mode where he could be yeah. strong. So, um, well, one more spot for you if he doesn't show up, though, Phil. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. 450. I mean, <laughs> that's right. I'm, I'm going for it, too. I mean, I'm are you doing 450s? Yeah, 450. Yeah. I don't know 450. Yeah. I mean, I listen, you have to lock in. <laughs> I've seen Eli at his best, I've raced him at his best, and it's, it's crazy. Outdoors is probably more impressive than Supercross, right? Like his. I'll still never forget 2015 Hangtown. We were out there. He lapped Weston and I. We, we were seventh and eighth. <laughs> he, oh, was that the Geico Honda? Yeah, yeah Geico dude. Honda. He yarded us. And then the following weekend, I'm racing Bam for second and third, and we got on the box, and Eli was just nowhere to be seen. <laughs> A minute ahead. Yeah, I yeah. thought Bam and I were <laughs> going to go one, two, but we're two, three. Eli's yeah. just out there. Just yeah. unless you're out there, it's next level. What he, fuck, what yep. he would do. You know? Absolutely, crowd was cool this weekend to see it. They were, they yeah, were, that's were that's rad. Uh, yeah. Thanks to the folks at OGO for bringing on Eli Tomac. Pulp fifteen is the code to save. Michelin as well. Thank you to folks at Michelin. Do you guys hear about Randy Richardson? He's doing Loretta's. Loretta's. Do you guys hear about this? Is he plus fifty Masters? Something. Must be Masters. Oh. Yeah. I'm surprised you don't know that. He, mm. Everyone else does. <laughs> uh, the new Michelin Starcross six tire range. Uh, it's great. It's fantastic. I got these on my uh, Blue Crew bike as well. And thanks to Michelin Silica Technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability. Whether it is uh, sport bikes, whether it's cruisers, uh, whether it is a uh, dirt bike, whether it's a mountain bike, they make tires for you, cars as well. Michelinman.com forward slash motorcycle to learn more about the Michelin motorcycle tire options. Thanks to those guys. All right, commercial break. Shanty still coming up. Uh, Race Tech Rant. Got the X-Brand Goggle tear-offs. I want to grill these guys on a couple of things, uh, what they're going to do this summer as well. Uh, so, all right, here we go. Uh, we'll go to commercial break. We'll be right back. Phil Nicoletti, Marshall Welton. See you after this. At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks. Just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. You likely know Racetech as the suspension and engine tuner of choice for the world's fastest privateers. But what you may not know is behind the scenes, Racetech is the trusted source for many OEMs and factory teams throughout the motorcycle industry. For nearly 40 years, Racetech has been producing high performance suspension and engine components and services right here in the USA. Racetech doesn't just specialize in motocross, in fact, they have many off road, hill climb, flat track, road racing, and supermoto championships on the mantle as well. Not a racer but want to smooth out the ride on the street or add some performance to your Harley? Racetech offers a full line of suspension solutions including industry leading, built to order, G3S custom shocks. All Racetech products are 100% guaranteed to exceed your highest expectations. Don't wait. Experience the gold valve advantage today by logging on to Racetech.com. Don't forget to mention Pulp MX when ordering for a discount. Established in 1989, Eric Phipps had the idea to manufacture factory-styled products for the everyday rider. Working out of his garage, Eric quickly gained a reputation for producing quality products and having great customer service. In just a few short years, the factory team started calling, looking for products as well. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. history. Fast forward to 2024, and they are on their 35th year of producing high-quality products while still providing exceptional customer service. 
While they are no longer working out of a small garage, they are still producing the finest products available. Teams like HRC Honda, Star Racing Yamaha, HEP Suzuki, Phoenix Honda, Barak Suzuki, AJE Motorsports, Solitaire Yamaha, and countless privateers still rely on the same quality products that are available to you too. Products like their Pro Launch Star device, radiator braces, skid plates, clutch perches, and tons more continue to be a staple in the pro pits and amateur scene as well. Check all they have to offer for your ride at worksconnection.com. Use the code PULPMX20 to save 20% off your order. With over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, WiseCo has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, WiseCo has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. WiseCo offers race-proven components for the rest of your engine, too. From garage buddy engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA-made Racer Elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. WiseCo is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or WiseCo.com to find products for your machine. It's time to elevate your life. At LiftedTrucksForSale.com, we put you in the driver's seat of your dream truck today. LiftedTrucksForSale.com is your one-stop shop for brand new custom trucks from every major manufacturer. Full factory warranty, available financing, and a hassle-free ownership experience. What are you waiting for? Visit LiftedTrucksForSale.com today. Factory Chassis Parts, established in 2018, is the home of the original high-performance FCP racing engine mount kit, designed to improve traction, handling, cornering, and feel. Used by top-level racers and race teams worldwide, including Phoenix Honda, Justin Starling, the F&H MXGP Kawasaki team, Rock River Yamaha, and many more. CNC machine parts out of high-quality aluminum and titanium, they are easy to install and bring drastic improvements right away. Stop by fcpracing.com to learn more and order today. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. I'm Cooper Webb, and I choose OGO. I'm Christian Craig. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm Aaron Plessinger. I'm Jerry Martin. I'm Nate Thrasher. I'm Shane Mapparath. I'm Hunter Lawrence. My name's Jet Lawrence. I'm Jordan Smith. I'm Town Hawkins. Stargate Hampshire. I'm Hayden Deegan. I'm Colt Nichols. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Tom Diallo. I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Jiren Ferrandi. And I choose OGO. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started GUTS Racing. GUTS stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GUTSRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport, and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2024 for 20% off at GUTSRacing.com.
FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, type, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in the wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride, upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. Visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. 
From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks, just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. It's time to elevate your life. At LiftedTrucksForSale.com, we put you in the driver's seat of your dream truck today. LiftedTrucksForSale.com is your one-stop shop for brand new custom trucks from every major manufacturer. Full factory warranty, available financing, and a hassle-free ownership experience. What are you waiting for? Visit LiftedTrucksForSale.com today. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Established in 1989, Eric Phipps had the idea to manufacture factory-styled products for the everyday rider. Working out of his garage, Eric quickly gained a reputation for producing quality products and having great customer service. In just a few short years, the factory team started calling looking for products as well. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. history. Fast forward to 2024 and they are on their 35th year of producing high quality products while still providing exceptional customer service. While they are no longer working out of a small garage, they are still producing the finest products available. Teams like HRC, HRC Honda, Honda, Star Racing Star Yamaha, 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 HEP, HEP Suzuki, Suzuki, Phoenix Honda, Phoenix Honda Barak, Barak Suzuki, Suzuki, AJE Motorsports, Motorsports Solitaire, Solitaire Yamaha, Yamaha, and countless privateers still rely on the same quality products that are available to you too. 
products like their Pro Launch Start Device, radiator braces, skid plates, clutch perches, and tons more continue to be a staple in the pro pits and amateur scene as well. Check all they have to offer for your ride at worksconnection.com. Use the code PULPMX20 to save 20% off your order. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun. Building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. I'm Cooper Webb, and I choose OGF. I'm Christian Craig. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm Aaron Plessinger. I'm Jerry Martin. I'm Nate Thrasher. I'm Shane Mapparath. I'm Hunter Lawrence. My name's Jet Lawrence. I'm Jordan Smith. I'm Talon Hawkins. Target Hampshire. I'm Hayden Deegan. I'm Cole Nichols. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Tom Dial, I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Jiren Ferrangi. And I choose OGO. You likely know Racetech as the suspension and engine tuner of choice for the world's fastest privateers. But what you may not know is behind the scenes, Racetech is the trusted source for many OEMs and factory teams throughout the motorcycle industry. For nearly 40 years, Racetech has been producing high performance suspension and engine components and services right here in the USA. Racetech doesn't just specialize in motocross, in fact, they have many off road, hill climb, flat track, road racing, and supermoto championships on the mantle as well. Not a racer, but want to smooth out the ride on the street or add some performance to your Harley? Racetech offers a full line of suspension solutions, including industry-leading, built-to-order, G3S custom shocks. All Racetech products are 100% guaranteed to exceed your highest expectations. Don't wait. Experience the gold valve advantage today by logging on to Racetech.com. Don't forget to mention Pulp MX when ordering for a discount. Factory Chassis Parts, established in 2018, is the home of the original high-performance FCP racing engine mount kit, designed to improve traction, handling, cornering, and feel. Used by top-level racers and race teams worldwide, including Phoenix Honda, Justin Starling, the FNH MXGP Kawasaki team, Rock River Yamaha, and many more. CNC machine parts out of high-quality aluminum and titanium. They are easy to install and bring drastic improvements right away. Stop by FCPRacing.com to learn more and order today. With over 80 years' experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, WiseCo has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, WiseCo has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. WiseCo offers race-proven components for the rest of your engine, too. From garage buddy engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA made Racer Elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. WiseCo is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or wiseco.com to find products for your machine. From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride, upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. 
visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport, and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2024 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, type, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in the wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. Welcome back, everybody. Paul Mechshow presented by motorsport.com. Folks at Fly Racing, Decal Works as well. Uh, yeah, really good show so far. Thanks to uh, my co-host here, Phil Nicoletti, Marshall Welton. Tomac interview. Phil, your questions were good. I hate to really give you credit, but Again, they, were, they yeah. were really good. Awesome. Um, Hopefully it brings some insight with things, but yeah. who knows? Yeah, well, I mean, listen, I could be looking for a co-host maybe next year or the year after. Permanent co-host, you know? <laughs> Vegas residency. Yeah. <laughs> Phil loves it out here. Yeah. Phil loves Vegas. He's a big it fan. It reminds of me every time how much a place somehow manages to become a bigger, bigger dude pile it, of shit. It, we got the, we have skyscrapers. I've been having a great time. Thank you, know. Marsh. Yeah. Thanks, Marsh. We have the skyscrapers. We got the Eiffel Tower. We got Venice. <laughs> shut <laughs> up. Shut up. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. You just know, leave boy. it at that. Okay, just leave it at that, Phil. <laughs> uh, leave it at fuck. that. Uh, <laughs> hey, we got Matt talking on. Uh, wants to talk to Phil. Matt, what's your uh, what's your question for Phil? Matt. Hey, Phil, man, fucking middle fingers up, buddy. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Hey, I wanted to ask. I I, I just kind of turned it on. I've been working this afternoon, and I'm on the East Coast, so. I wanted to ask: Have you guys talked about the uh, the radiator hose failure tonight? No, we have not. <clears throat> mm -mm. Oh God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ask so away. Yeah, go ahead. Let's, go, let's get has, deep into this. The broadcast. So the broadcast is saying a rock hit it, and maybe knocked the clamp loose. <sighs> yeah, I. <laughs> How about the, talk about the? I, I'm gonna Are guess the clamp was loose. <laughs> That's just what I'm oh, gonna I, guess. Okay. Thank you, Steve, I, because I actually messaged you on Instagram, and I, I almost think, did, did, did we maybe have a, uh, a mechanic that maybe left something loose beforehand? I, I don't know because, all right, so then why wouldn't it have come off at all during the rest of the day? Because I, I, I no, one ever, no one ever touched it. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, the, uh, weird, yeah. that's the weird part for me. It's just so weird, man. I've been racing for 30 years and the same thing. Like, I, I, I've never I, seen a rock hit a, a clamp. It, it would hit something else. I, I agree, or I would have heard it or would have left a massive yeah. chunk out of my <laughs> frame I mean, it, it, or you know, it something. It would have taken a chunk out of the radiator yeah. or, hit, or hit something or the water pump, yeah. something else. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the only thing, to be honest with you, when RJ put me up against the bales, 
because it was in the right-hander before the finish line, and it was the right side radiator hose down by the water pump where it goes in. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it was the lower one, yeah. Yeah, down the lower the Yeah, so maybe that's the only thing that makes sense to have that happen. But, like, people saw my bike smoking for about two laps. My bike actually seized off the face of the Supercross triple. It like, did, huh? Yeah, I felt it. Oh God! Yeah, oh, I yeah. I felt it on the straightaway after the finish line, and my bike went, Ooh, you know, like slowed up. And I'm like, "Fuck! Did I just get dirt stuck in my rear brake?" And then I did the zigzags, and like I should have known better, but you still don't know when all that shit's going on. You know, there's so much. You know what I mean? You're focused on other yeah. shit. And I went rolled two, and I went into the face of the Supercross triple, and my bike went, Ooh, and I framed the Supercross triple. I'm like, "All right." I didn't fuck that up. That wasn't and on me. And then you didn't want to get on your backup bike? No, uh, no, I didn't want to get on my backup I mean, bike. Because, all right, I saw people post on my Instagram, you know, why didn't you just ride it and this and that. But, yeah. like, it's not the same. It's close enough. No, to go out and yeah. do what you just did, you know, on a with the track and the seat don't feel the same, levers, Change your everything. Saddle. Change You're your not seat. doing those triples. I'm I will say this. Kenny, Kenny got on his backup bike and he was totally thrown. Yeah, it's he, not the he, he was, I, I agree. People don't understand. You know what yeah, I mean? It's like, uh, I don't know, you, you you brush your toothbrush with your right hand, and then all of a sudden you throw it in your left one. Yeah, and but you what about go, the poor mechanics who are asking to change a motor in between? Like, they did, a, they did an must, awesome job. I just don't think I'm on that level. I would have jumped on the backup bike. No, I would have helped I'm out, out Anthony yeah. there. It, hadn't, yeah, it yeah. hadn't been, you know. Not like, hey, Anthony, go fuck yourself and change my motor. Like, hey, yeah. Because the backup bike is really, let's say, Jeremy Martin's bike. Okay, oh, it but is. it's got my bars and stuff no. on it. You know what I mean? But yeah. like, I oh, had okay. So I, it's not the same bike. It, it it is, but it's got my bars. But it's not exactly yeah, my yeah. bike. I hadn't ridden that thing. And yeah, Kenny, yeah. I don't think has ridden his. Didn't ride his backup no, bike either. No, he said there was the, it's br- not the, the brakes. Same. The brakes weren't working. Like maybe some overspray from like mm. exactly my yeah. fucking point. You do point. have to wear those in. I'm I'm like pretty conscious about it every time yeah. I go. And I, I, and people are like, oh, but you trust your mechanics throwing a, an engine to get you know in your bike? Like, dude, they do that daily. Yeah. You know, no problem. Uh, thanks so. for the call, man. Thanks, Thanks Matt. Hey, man, I appreciate you guys. And, Phil, dude, we, we love you, man. Still rocking at 36 years old. And we, we fucking love it, dude. Keep, Thanks. keep it up, buddy. I appreciate it. All right. And next uh, up is uh, Nick. Nick, you want to talk about Phil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phil, i got to pick on you a little bit, man. Sure. I fully understand why you don't like jumping the rhythm section triples. <laughs> oh, you I, do understand? I finally got to do a track walk and see what it was like, and I went, holy shit, no way. <laughs> this is what Phil sp- said about the Dirtworks guys or the journalists or whatever. He wants, what? to, he wants to duct tape <laughs> our, our hands to the throttle and send us out there. Yes, it's like the old THQ um, uh, video game one where they duct tape his hand wide open. Yeah. Yeah, have you seen that one? No. Oh, it's so funny. Um, yeah, what track did you, tr- uh, did you walk? St. Louis. I got to do St. Louis. Oh, you got the right. Okay, fair enough. So you saw all the ruts and the transitions and everything then. No, I got to do it Friday with Chase where it was still prepped after y'all got done with the rest day. Oh. And I was looking at that one rhythm where they had the three, five, threes. And, I, and Chase was like, yeah, you're going to try to jump over that five-footer. And I went, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what these guys do. What's funny is like even Marsh here, like Marsh – is uh, what are you twelfth in the points? 13th? Yeah, twelfth right now. Twelfth in the points, like he's getting lapped a lot no, of weekends. No, okay, I haven't. I haven't. Okay, close. No. <laughs> My point is, I is haven't. Marshall Welton's a phenomenal rider. I have not gotten lapped. I'm trying either. to, I'm trying to build this up to you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. He's a phenomenal Feels like rider. Like a put down, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's my point. Like, I used to go ride with Troy Adams out here when he was on H and H, and he was borderline main event guy, mm-hmm. and I'm watching him going, "How is that dude?" Not getting in every main event. It's these guys are so good, uh, uh, Nick. It's it's amazing. Like, yeah. And then you look at Eli or Jet, and you're like, yeah, how? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, you know, yeah. And, and you're right. Like Phil has said this before. Like I've walked enough tracks in my life. Yeah, you down there. It's a little different. It's a little different. It's a little different. Yeah, especially the past five weekends. I'd yeah, say. It's been, yeah. Like it's uh, you can't do it. You can't do it justice. But no. um, yeah, it's gnarly. Yep. Thanks for the yeah. call, man. Thank you. Hey, I got one more story for you real quick. All right. And, and Bill's going to laugh, and you're going to laugh. I met two people. Well, I almost met one uh, over the weekend, Friday and Saturday. I got to meet Kenny. I got to meet Chase, Anderson. Wasn't nervous meeting them. I was more nervous meeting Keeper 
And then I seen uh, I seen Phil on the bike in the pit, and he's warming up. And I'm like, I'm gonna wait on Phil to get off that bike and get a picture with him. And he looked so angry on that exercise bike. Mm-hmm. I was like, Yeah, there's no way. I'm, I'm walking away. From <laughs> That's probably a good call. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if I'm on the exercise bike, it's going before practice or a heat race or a main. And, and it's, it's go time. It's yeah. go time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking to fucking anybody, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. So sorry. Appreciate, appreciate, the, appreciate, appreciate you, you all. Thank you, Thank you, man. Guys. Man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, at 7 o'clock hour brought to you by the folks at the Cherubies. Check out the latest styles and colors at a CherubiesUSA.com. A Cherubies, the world leader in accessory dirt bike plastics. Whether you're simply needing a new fender or you just want to personalize your bike, a Cherubies is there for you. Thank you to the folks at a Cherubies. Also, thank you to the folks at MTX Braking. Uh, this, these are the brake pads that I use in my e-bike, e-bikes, and uh, Cade's got some, and Paul Parabinos runs them as well. MTXbraking.com. The code is PulpMX. Available in over 800 power sports dealers nationwide. Inspired by motocross and power sports, they brought Breder braking tech into brake pads for mountain and road bikes. Two compounds, uh, red and gold. I like the red ones. So use the code PulpMX to save mtxbraking.com. All right, let's do the X-Brand Goggle Tear-Off segment, shall we? It's the X-Brand Tear-Off segment. 15-second rapid-fire Q&A. Rapid-fire. What did, what did, did Myrtle say we could call him, or mm. what, what, mm-hmm. what did he say? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was on. waiting on you to say he yes. He doesn't sleep anyway. Can he wait 10 minutes? Yeah. All right. X Brown Goggles, Choice of Champions ever, Marshall Welton running X Brown Goggles. I'm not. What? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm 100. I've been 100. I thought your team was. Oh, no, just, I thought your team was. Yeah, was, that, was I X. got my own deal. Oh, you got yeah. your own deal. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone on your it. team but you? I just I stick with my brands. You know, I've, I've wow. been 100. I'm sticking with it. 100's, them. Just fu- 100's great up. now that they've made some staffing changes. I'm a fan of, of, of 100. <laughs> so it's fantastic now. So uh, I wonder if X, X Brand knows that you did your own deal. Probably it's, not. Yeah, it's it's been me. Yeah. Uh, X Brand goggles, choice of champions ever. Freddie Norton, X Brand. Kyle Chisholm, X Brand. We don't need you, Marsh. McElrath, X Brand. Uh, please thanks to folks at X Brand goggles. EKSBrand.com. Pulp Show twenty four is a code to save with X Brand. Lucid goggle. That uh, factory ride goggle, Phil, that you wear. It looks a lot like the Lucid from X Brand. Looks a lot like a factory ride goggle. It looks like the X Lucid goggle to me i i don't know oh, my a lot of resemblance yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah. uh all right these questions are submitted by Corey moser you guys familiar i saw moser last week oh you did yeah wearing oh. my filthy crew hat yeah, he was. and he actually said it's a really nice hat he did he was he telling did. us in the press box I the quality you. was high right, listen okay my boy shane from fuel yeah do a nice hat hooks it so, up yeah it's good i need to get some more stuff from shane i just shipped one to uh rv he said send me a hat i'm like dude you're a fucking multi-millionaire dude <laughs> buy a hat and he didn't buy it. No, I shipped it to him for free. Yeah. And I had to pay for the fucking shipping. Of course, yeah. I know. That's, how it, that's how he rolls. <sighs> fucking guy. Unbelievable. I mean, probably a good deal on your end. It's free promo. Well, will he ever do anything with it? Because no. he, he asked for a pulp shirt, and I've never seen him ever wear really? it in my life or post Sorry. anything. He better wear my fucking hat. Okay. All right. Uh, 30 seconds on the clock. Rapid fire questions for myself, Marshall Welton, and Phil Nicoletti. This question would never get through if the other guy was doing it, by the way. I'm just going to start with that. Okay. Steve. Percentage pi of fault in the Barsha jet crash. I already broke it down. 85-15, Barsha's fault. I said what I said. 85-15. You said I was I was okay? 75, you said? No, I'd say 90% Barsha. 90-10? Yeah, yeah. Marsh? I'm, I'm reaching in the higher 90s, yeah. Higher 90s? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cutting down on the first lap. Things no, can, things can no. go. I no. cut down on the first lap, too. And okay. It's, you know. All right. Philip, if you had ghost ridden your bike at Seattle Supercross, who would you have pointed it at? <laughs> out of I would have pointed that bike out of Lumen Stadium because fuck that stadium at that point in time. All right. All right, Marshall, what do you foresee Phil doing in his post racing career? Um <laughs> For a while, it was uh, being a prison prison guard. Yeah, that was the thing for yeah. a while. Then it was FXR rep. Yeah, that was a thing for a while. <laughs> Might still uh, be. I don't know, but that's back in New York, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything with uh, just being grumpy, just involving that. <laughs> Steve. Yep. What does Tomac have to gain by hiding an injury at this stage of his career? Well, he doesn't want to make excuses. <laughs> Like, anybody would be like, fuck you, Tomac. Like, right? Yeah. Like, 
Dude, that was mental. You're gnarly. We we <laughs> believe you. Yeah. <laughs> he's never made an excuse yeah. once in his life. I know. Hey arm guys, pump was his biggest biggest excuse he's ever made. Yeah. You know, like sorry, I got fucking arm. Yeah. Pump. Okay. Hey guys, you think Tomac's making an anchor yeah. like Andrew? Like no, I don't know. Like I said, I wish I want all the time on the stupid shows I do. Where we discussed and broke down Tomac mm-hmm. and what's going on, and I want that all, all the back. hours of yeah. time yeah. wasted. Right. Yeah. Meanwhile, he's not writing, and he yeah. said, "What do you say? 90, 70, 30 weight yeah, distribution? Weight bearing, yeah. Said, yeah. I think he said seventy thirty. Yeah, yeah, 70, 30. yeah. Like, it's got to bust off the equilibrium. <laughs> how are you? T- how are you two guys going to do a seventy thirty weight distribution? <laughs> he could probably ride on the track one footed and still <laughs> get a handle. He ain't beating me. Uh, you, maybe. <laughs> all right, <laughs> Phil. What's one of Steve's dumbest theories? Hmm. Ooh. I don't know. God, there's a lot. I'm not going to go down the political game. We won't go there. We I don't, don't know. need to go yeah, there. Yeah, we don't need to go there. Because uh, I got some stuff. I all right, yeah, we'll just go with the national anthem before sporting events. Okay. We'll keep that going. So, all yes. Right. 20 seconds. You, uh, that lady did a good job at the live show. Yeah, they came she up. She belted yeah. it out. Yeah, she did really good. I yeah. met him. They're like, oh, yeah, Steve doesn't like the anthem being played and this and that. And that like, was it, like in the earlier in the night? When like, I, yeah, when okay. I showed up, I was yeah, kind of yeah. just in the corner and people, yep. you know, a lot of people came up and said hi and stuff. And the one guy said, yeah, she's here and she's going to, yeah. you know, sing the anthem. And then so, like, I brought it up and yeah. the keeper's like, come up here and sing it, girl. That, but as usual in this fucked up world we live in, nobody <laughs> really heard me what I said. I said, I, I have no, I don't, it's not that I don't like the national anthem. I like it fine. Save it for special occasions and where, where you're actually country versus country. That was my stance. Mm-hmm. And my rant wasn't. But it is country versus country. You got Germans, you got French people, you got U.S. people, Japanese people. Yeah, Japanese but there's no, people. there's no, it's not, there's no uh, competition based on nationality. There's no, nobody, there's no awards based on nationality. But that wasn't even my rant. Yeah. My rant was don't fuck up the anthem when you play it, like the <laughs> dude in Seattle. Like, you know, like That's it's not important. your time. Yeah. Do the anthem and get off the stage. But yeah. as usual, I got a bunch of jackasses in my DMs. And, from and, a racer standpoint, for me, yep. when I hear that song and I'm down there, I get pretty jacked up listening to okay. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah I it mean, starts the night. Yeah, it starts yeah. the night. Okay. If, it, if yeah, it wasn't there, like, something be missing. Yeah. Right. Okay. I see, agree. Like, well, at this that, point, it, I mean, look, I'm never. It's never going to change. And at this no. point, we've been playing it since World War II. That's when it started. World War II before yeah, baseball. It should be. So you know, yeah. it's not, It's just. It just. It it loses it in my eyes when we. It no. would mean more when the Olympics are on or when it's a world championship or when it's a world GP. No. Or, you know what I mean? It would mean more. Like, that, that song gets me cranked okay. in opening ceremonies. I like Thunderstruck. <laughs> you play Thunderstruck. <laughs> By Aussies. ACDC. Yeah, I know. Oh. Aren't they Yeah, they're, Oh, yeah, they're Australian. Yeah, yeah, right, okay, right. so play. Yeah, no. Fuck. <laughs> Jesus, man. Thunderstruck, dude. <laughs> okay, fine. Kickstart your heart. Good old SoCal cr- American Motley Crue band. No, you Fran- play Kickstart no, My Heart before no. every na- national anthem? Or you, know, you know who wrote national anthem? You know his well, name? I, I, I got it incorrect last week. I oh. said Bex, Betsy Ross, but she designed the flag. She designed right. Francis Scott Key okay. wrote the national okay. anthem. I got no problem ever. with it. Again, you're attacking me. Just, no, I'm no, I'm just looking at you in the face. Yeah. Just play the fucking song before every sporting <laughs> event okay. and get people so, cranked to be done so with it. So should we play it before uh, a Little League game? Yes, because the little kids should know that people fought yeah, for them to be able to play yeah. fucking Little League. So we should play. What, what, what shouldn't we play it at? Where does it stop? The radio. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, the ra- yeah it should right. be on the radio. Listen, yeah. my rant was if you are going to play it, just fucking play it and get off the stage. Like play it the way, sing it the way it's supposed to be sung. Play it the way it's supposed to be sung. Fair. Play. The kid in Seattle was a little much. I didn't listen to uh, it in Seattle. Well, I thought I got you going. I thought I, I got you jacked up. I was heat too, so I wasn't down there. Okay. Marsh, do Pulpa Mix fantasy hate comms ever get to you? <sighs> I mean, uh, usually yeah, my you're like a game changer. My trajectory of it is like usually it goes. It starts out with my handicap being pretty high, so I'm getting like a lot of great, a lot of yeah. great. And then once my handicap lowers, yeah. then it turns into like, dude, I don't get hate, but it's just yeah. like a lot of disappointment. Well, honestly, I you're you're bo- you're two these days, I think, and it's like ah, he's right around there. Yeah. I've stayed away, <laughs> stayed away because you're right. I think you're right around there. Like, yeah. yeah, like I don't know what any of that means. Right. So. You could be ten to fourteen, and yeah. so that two is yeah. Well, nine to fourteen. Okay. 
Steve. Yep. Is there a grumpier racer than Phil, or who is second grumpiest? Ooh, not no grumpier racer than Phil for sure. Second grump. I mean, Coop's kind of. Coop's not grumpy, but he's ornery. There's mm-hmm. a difference between ornery and grump, grumpy, right? Mm-hmm. Marsh is another grumpy mm-hmm. racer. Not at the top level. No, no, no. not at his level. <laughs> he's the Tomac. Yeah. He's the Tomac of that. <laughs> All right. Phil, what can we do to help you concentrate on the track and the race? It seems like your mind wanders mid-race. <laughs> I just asked the questions. So <laughs> Where the fuck just is comes down to a fitness to? thing. It just I mean, not it, fit. I'm not going to lie. It, it <laughs> it's not fit. Shut up, dude. Uh, it did wander at Seattle, but I don't really wander that Maybe much. Maybe he's refer- referencing, like, yeah, you thinking about ghost riding your bike, and that's your mind is wandering. Yeah, they it did. Well, in it, Seattle. Seattle right. it did, yes. But there was no wandering at, uh, in St. Louis. All right, last one. Marsh, how do we make free riding great again or have Insta Bangers ruined free ride videos? I've been living off Insta Bangers on free ride videos. <laughs> I feel like that's an attack. <laughs> it's a direct attack. Again, I just read the questions. Um, I think there could be more just like Terra Firma style, just actual videos produced. I mean, I I enjoy watching old free ride videos a lot. I wish there'd be more just actual, the, you know, hour long videos. The problem with that, though, is like, you can't sell it because, I mean, you can, but then people just rip it off and put it up for right. free on the internet, right? Like, mm-hmm. you would sell some copies, but back in the day, you had to buy Krusty mm-hmm. and Steel Roots. I think it would make yeah. um, people pursuing that avenue. There's quite a few people in the SoCal area that do that full time, and it would make them a lot more marketable if they had more yeah. actual videos of it. But from the, I mean, financial standpoint, it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Right. X-Men Goggles. <laughs> Marshall Welton should be in X-Brand Goggles. Uh, Pulp Show 24 is the code to save with X-Brand, EKSBrand.com. Thank you to Corey Moser for that. MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com, job of the week. Uh, Maxima uh, Oil, looking for a digital content creator, Phil. Full-time job. Mm-hmm. I mean, when, maybe when you hang the boots up. Uh, can you imagine Phil as a content creator? Yeah, I don't think that's up my alley. There's so many fucking vloggers on Trackwalk. I know it's phenomenal. It's it's, there's, it's just like everyone has a film crew. No one, no one cares about walking, like seeing your Trackwalk video. Dude, no one cares about the Trackwalk content. How, if I see another uh, vlog with like the rider and the lights up there, yeah. and it's from the ground looking up, and the riders, walking. you can't even walk the track without getting away of the film crew. It's yeah. like they just the film crew gets all up in your way. They just walk past you with their sticks, and it's like. Yeah. Be gone. It, it, it's a lot. But if you want to do it for Maxima, they're looking for a dynamic, and uh, there, there are a dynamic and innovative racing product company. We know what Maxima is. It's fantastic. We're on the machine. They're looking for a creative and detail-oriented digital contact creator who will be responsible for producing and publishing various types of digital content. In this position, you will be expected to collaborate with the marketing team to develop content strategies that align with the company's goals. MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Check it out, everybody. Great. Great, uh, great company at Maxima, and uh, if you're looking for a job, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Upload your resume for free today. A lot of companies are using it, so thank you to those guys for coming on. I do have a small rant. Oh, okay, let's do the Racetech rant then. It's time. Racetech. Is it time? Well, Racetech.com, pulp, pulp MX24 is a code to save. Love these guys. Suspension, motor work, Racetech.com. they got uh, service centers all across America. Give your bike some love. Look, Phil and Marshall would never hit the track without a bike that has got properly tuned suspension. They would never do it. So why should you? Don't. Get your get your suspension tuned. Race deck. All Agreed. Right. Okay. My rant. As a racer, we get stuck in the tunnel, and we are, like, herded in there like cattle. Mm-hmm. And they make all these track changes in between, and they're grooming, and they're looking, even in practice, and you don't get to see nothing. And it's like, why do we have to just sit there and be just released? Yeah. It's like... They don't Into want the blind. Yeah. Like, you should see the security guards that oh, hold you back. Dude, you think you're in fucking federal prison. Really? Oh, it, it's just the most ridiculous thing. Because what, thing. they don't want the floor filled with people for opening ceremonies? Is no, it's not thinking, even. It's, it's practice. It's oh. it's free practice. It's qualifying. It's heat races. Shit. You can't see nothing. The only way you're seeing the track is if you got a spotter upstairs and they're radioing down to tell you, like, oh, this is yeah. different. This is different. And with the tracks being how they have been, there's been a lot of changes. Just yeah. little changes. Tabletops. Yeah. Turns. Whatever. And... You just go into you, a blind. You think about how, like, I mean, we got the ultimate example, Daytona, the one year where they oh, fixed the whoops. Oh, the whoops and the people uh, died. You're right. Like, that's the extreme. 
But you really wonder from a safety lawyer point of view, you're not letting the competitors see the track. Like that's kind of gnarly. No, it's just it's ridiculous, and they just sit there like, "Oh, I'm here every weekend," you know. And it's like, yeah, me too. I'm the one going to do this right yeah, now. You're yeah. not the one going out here. Just yeah. like ten feet. And, let us look. And why was there a parade lap for the first before the first and third mains, and not the they, second one? That's been they, standard. They, they, that's been standard. Oh. it used to not. We used to not yeah. get parade laps. But why but not the second one? Because not enough time, and we've been out there, or whatever. I don't. I okay. Don't know, yeah. You know. I thought. That was, so that's been standard mm. at other Triple yeah, Crowns? Yeah. They just started that this year. This year? Or they do that last year, too. No, okay. they did it last year, too. I think too. it was last year, yeah. too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I uh, uh, Well, that's a race tech rant for sure. And also, to me, changing the track, they, they've, they've stopped doing this, but they used to change it between qualifying sessions mm -hmm. drastically where the time would be different. And you're like, wait. like. Yeah, they stopped that, though. Yeah, that's, that's, that's no more. Right. That's no more. They, they After the first practice, the free session, they can change it. But... Mm. You know, leave it the same for the qualifying. I mean, mm -hmm. absolutely, right? Mm -hmm. They used to not care. And the might as well talk about the track crew or Dirt Works. A oh bit. boy! No, not not bad. This year, like I talked to Alex okay. uh, Gillespie quite a bit. Yep. This weekend they actually had an overhaul of like they had five skiddies and they had a dozer, so it wasn't for a lack of equipment this weekend. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it might be because yes. the, the guys I talked to said it's just time. It's time in the program that stops them from doing more. <sighs> It's just wild to me that the <laughs> race tech rant. Here we go. It's so, just some of the decisions they make. Yes, it's like I just don't get it. Can you give man. us some examples? I the transitions this weekend were just uh, after the main Supercross triple where Eli said I was going inside yeah. roll yeah. on a, because the transition to go two three it, unless you went three in was just fucking mental. Like, you couldn't even fathom how many ruts and how notchy it was down there. But meanwhile, they're doing rhythms that don't matter. Like, they missed the wrong rhythms. I don't... I'm, I'm with you. I mean, it's just like it's... The, the emphasis is like the well, hardest part of the track is always left as the hardest... Indy, the on, on, off. It's like people struggled in it every single lap. just left it. And just left it. And there's one... I don't even know what guy on the track. He's just so against adding, like, this much of a lip on the table. And it's like... Right. Yeah. Okay. The the top five guys can do it, but what about the rest? Of the this the fifteen out there? It's I don't know. They. I mean, I've talked to some of them, but they've heard the show, like you and RJ. They're, the mm -hmm. their works guys heard it. You know, mm -hmm. they they said they don't have enough time, and they they claim that your fact that they were you were fixing the wrong jump was not true. It was very true. <laughs> they, they Ask said, RJ. <laughs> they said it wasn't. Ask they, JP. I don't know. I'm just saying. Um, uh, but fuck. yeah, no, I, I, I'm not saying you were wrong. I'm just saying they say that you, you know, but um, so you think they had more equipment this weekend? They for did. Whatever yeah, reason? yeah, yeah. They, they had five yeah. skiddies and one dozer. Right. You know, um, but still it's like, man, I don't Should know. Should we bring back a lime? Would that I'm, help? Potentially, I I don't know the, really the difference, but yeah, I yeah. mean it's tough. I mean the track sure did Anthony's get better from the press line. day to yeah, it to did, right? you know like it dried out and got <laughs> packed in and they rolled it and stuff. <laughs> but um, As I said I'm sure Anthony's against the line, but <laughs> yeah. any, any mechanic yeah. is yeah, not for yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, you know I don't know. I just think there's a better way to. There's got to be a better way to do it. Like I said, get a get rid of the KTM juniors, the 50 kids, something. You know, to, like to give them more time. To give them more time. Yeah. I mean, it made other major sporting events. You don't have little league players out there playing or whatever. You know, like if that's the time that you need to go out there to properly make something better in between the night show, do it. So as they're fixing it, and you know they go up, they back drag, and they bring it down, and is that fucking the transitions up? Mm. No, not necessarily. Like you know no. what I mean? Like are they like not paying cuz they're they're in a hurry. No. They're trying to fix the faces. Yeah. Is I that, mean they does do. Does that fuck transitions or they, no? They it does the transitions, but like people don't realize like any time you put and you don't know like every time you go out there and you hit a rhythm after it's been touched, the pitch is different from mm -hmm. what it was, but it's never the yeah, fucking same. It's never the same. same. No, it's it never be. the right, same. Right. So, and some spots might be softer than the other, but uh, again, that's just part of our sport and that's the gnarly. But I'd rather deal with that than dealing with the fucking 25 ruts that are in the transition. Do you feel like the Dirt Works guys listen to you guys or no? Mm. Is it like talking to the wall sometimes? <sighs> I try not to. I mean, I, it's hard to get involved because they already have like seven yeah. or eight guys always barking yep. up them, and I just yep. don't want to step in and try and be that guy. But, I mean, circling back around to what Phil said, if you go out there to a blind track and they do make the changes to the face of the jumper pitches, you just don't know until you go out blind. At least if you are able to like see – 
something. Yeah. You know, get like uh, uh, three quarters of the track preview. It decreases the risk. The but like I told you, it's they're they're re they're trying to like reevaluate the whole track situation, which I said in your live show. It's not. They don't need to change the obstacles and this and that. It just comes down to the pitches mm -hmm. of the jumps, the yeah. takeoff or the landings. You know what I mean? And they only have to be changed one inch, one way or a couple degrees, one yep. way or the other, to make it like, okay, it's still raceable, but not as deadly if you do hang a wheel, you know? That's all. But <clears throat> you need somebody that's raced for a long period of time to understand the way a bike kicks oh. in that type of they had Trey for a while, and it just didn't really work, right? Yeah. But we're, but what happened to that? But now, I think okay. they didn't want to pay him. Okay, but now you have Jay Bone, who's an AMA guy. Yeah. You have Christina, yep. um, Mama, the great people to be there with the AMA. Like I, I appreciate them, but they don't. They've never ridden a dirt bike really to understand how it is in Supercross. Right. And the Dirt Works guys, Alex used to race, you know, but they he's never yeah. raced a Supercross before. But okay, I've I'm in a group so, text with some Dirt Works guys, and there's there's. They're they're in there and the riders are telling them things and they're listening mm -hmm. and they're talking and they're listening. I did like, listen to your one thing you heard about. It was like Benny saying one thing and someone yeah, else came up yeah, right yeah, back. Yeah, absolutely. That would make it tough. I yeah. mean, it'd be a tough job. No, but, uh, yeah. that was at Indianapolis. Benny said. I have no clue where Benny's head was at with that. Right. But Benny said, "Leave the transitions the way they are, man. It it, it slows it down. It, you know, blah blah yeah, blah." Yeah, well, and you Kenny can't said, slow it down when the jumps in Indy they they and, spaced them out so big. That's why no one could triple any of the jumps. Kenny there. said, "You got to change these transitions, man. They're way too steep." And I like literally heard it within five minutes. Yeah, yeah. I heard Kenny and Benny say the exact opposite. Yeah, and I'm like, "Fuck!" Like, so they they do have that too, yeah, right? It, it would be tough. And then they have Coop and Roger saying, "Leave the whoops, leave them nine, <laughs> leave them mm -hmm. leave them small." Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. they're in a little bit of a tough position. But like sure. that. Detroit, the one that you donkey kicked. Well, off I of. mean, Jet did Where the exact same thing. Colin broke his wrist Colin off of it. Oh, and yeah. it's like you just, just like, play yeah. roulette on and the they face. Just, but they just watch him. Yeah. One after a yeah. fucking other. Because it's you, just like, go fucking fix it. You yeah. go onto an on off and you come off, and you, it's not like you can really place. Ex it's not like a kind of a double. When you're coming off of an on off, you, you kind of just get off of it. And then when you're in the air, you just choose, like, all right, I'm doing this one. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's like, hope it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I think again, like, and Phil does a good job of this on our show. Like, he gives these the the realities of being a Supercross racer, <laughs> and it does, doesn't always sound great. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't like always said, sound fun. That that sentence, that triple, where Forkner went down, multiple yeah, guys went Dallas, down there. Yeah. Yes, a lot of people did. I mean, there were six or seven guys the other day off that jumped that Forkner crash. Yeah. yeah, all they need to do is fix Throughout that the day. Just, landing. Just yeah. roll it out. Just, just roll it just, out. Just, yeah, just yeah, a, yeah. Just yeah. Um, image, so. All right. Well, uh, let's. We have a surprise. We had Crockett Myers surprise calling us. And then we decided to get another guest on right now. Mm. And he's Phil uh, Nicoletti's agent, <laughs> Lucas Myrtle. Good evening, sir. Gentlemen, how the, are we doing? The Mertz. True or false, you planted the marketing question with Phil to Eli Tomac, where he said, you know, Jet's doing all these things and he's making all this money. And, you know, you, you, no. didn't, you didn't choose to do that, Eli. <laughs> True or false, Mertz? No, I didn't. But I was listening because Phil has been adamant I come on. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I was listening to that, and I was like, is he going to call me in here? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was wondering, well, I was wondering the same thing. Me. Right. Like, hey, Eli, we got Lucas Myrtle on the line, and he's going to tell you how to market yourself. And Eli just hangs up. <laughs> Click. Just hangs up. <laughs> hey, Mertz, mm. how's, the, how's the VIP thing working out this year? We were talking during the commercial about it. Because Phil was telling us how he did it, uh, whatever race that was. Dallas. Dallas. Yep. And I said, and Mertz, I've told you this, I think, too, privately. I can't believe the, the brothers do it, uh, and they're as all invested as they are. They got shit to do and focus on, and props to them for doing it. Um, how's that been going? Just good, uh, challenging, right? Like anything in such a big operation for you, one, two trucks on the road, Four full time employees and, and everything that went into it, it's challenging, I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. And but I think long term it it was needed and it was it was worth it and it was something Hunter and Jet, you know, as we look at opportunities as 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 we look at, you know, the growth of the sport or what what could be better or, you know, what yeah. could be added. And, yeah. And and we all decided to really go for it, but no. Yeah. I think it's great. I think uh, 
you learn a lot, like, and then you go into, you know, obviously changes for next year and, and going. But, yeah, it's doing well. Yeah, and my buddy Janky Mike did it. Work than, liked it yeah. A lot more work than probably I anticipated and everyone else was kind of like, I told you it was going to be like this. But, <laughs> so, I don't know how popular I am with everyone I've got to help and do it, but no, I think it, I think it's cool. And, yeah. And, and the brothers are into it, right? The the, the yeah, Jet and Hunter, like they're good, right? Uh, so definitely, yeah, they had to buy in. You know, it it had to come from them, not not me, because it it is an obligation, it is a commitment, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, we talk about a lot of that, about stuff that needs to change or that can be better, and you know, you can either complain about it or yeah, you know. Or, or go for it and make a change. I think as a whole, you've done a great job with the presentation of everything, though the trailers and the setup. Like, yeah. it looks yeah. really the good. Video you game, know, it, it looks like yeah, right? you've done a great job with it. It's clean. It's clean. You know. Mm. No, thank you. Yeah, it's it came out good. So on on that side of things, it the boys right. have a strong brand, and and the people around them who control the look and feel of stuff. So. Are you interested in maybe like uh, reaching out and paying uh, paying internet radio personality to put on a show <laughs> there every week? Is you know, there interest? No, no, <laughs> it hasn't been brought up. We haven't vetted the possibility I, of it. I kind of I picture like a Johnny Carson type of desk, a microphone on it, and me, you know, uh, talking. Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to be sold on it a little bit more, Stephen. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I was just trying to you know I lost the Mav TV deal there a couple of years ago, so I'm really trying to get that cash back if I can. So. I said that I, I got that good for you. You blew it. <laughs> you did help a little bit, yeah, yeah. You, a little you did, bit. You, I closed it. You, you were about you to just, blow it all. <laughs> you didn't get me an auto renew <laughs> for year two because you made too much money on the first they were, one. They didn't trust you, <laughs> and I couldn't argue not to trust you. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Good point. Uh, and how was Philip at Dallas for the VIPs? How was he? Just a real treat for the people. <laughs> Do we have any? Is there any talk of? Okay, go ahead. Well, anytime you can bring the happiest, most positive human in, into people's lives for a few hours, yeah, just it's an amazing thing. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I agree. I agree. They're probably still talking about it. A little touch of sunshine in their lives. You got to keep it though, like as a special experience. That way, it increases the value. Though you can't be doing it every weekend. Yeah. You gotta be, just like here and there. Yeah, Phil was special. <laughs> uh, also, Myrtle, as Phil's agent, like, what are we looking at for 25 right now? What kind of demand is there out there? Yeah, we can't talk about just yeah. so much coming in every day right now. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to keep his head above water. That's why right I probably now. sound tired yeah. all day. I was just on yeah. Zoom Dealing calls and shit. calls all about Phil. Yeah. yeah, I bet. I mean, look, he, he yeah, his starts were on point this Stops weekend. Stops rising. Yep. Yep. What about MXGP? Is there as much? Is there any interest in Phil in MXGP? Dutch Masters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. You really think Phil would do well in Europe? <laughs> I do not. No, I don't actually. <laughs> different countries. I remember, different Lucas. You said we struggle here. Different, different <laughs> customs, different languages. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we get irritated here, and he's lived here his whole life. Yeah, Lucas. Remember, Lucas sent me to Canada. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Hey, that was a good oh. thing for you. Willingly, you know. No. It was incredible. He hated it. I was the worst human in the world for sending him there. Everything was great until he almost lost his pinky. Oh. And then it went down. And then when it all fell apart or didn't happen, it was like the world ended. I'm yeah. like, I thought this was, would be, you'd be stoked if you just complained about it. <laughs> then he was angry it didn't happen. Yeah. Oh, Can you? I, I literally, there's a special place in hell for you. <laughs> me here, like, and, uh, can you take? And then he gets. It. Remember the Alessi incident? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah can, I was gonna say, can you take us back to the phone call from Genova where uh, everyone was gonna be sued? <laughs> yeah, sued. Phil's yes. going to jail. Phil was, Phil was going to jail. Right? Yeah, yeah, you were. On my yeah, I was going to I jail. wish you guys could have just saw them riding around in the starting area. It was like a. A couple bullfighters <laughs> just like <laughs> circling. <laughs> I, mean, I still was back. chasing Mar- him. Mar- I was I've, there. I was. I was Mar- right next to him. Marsh tried off. to stop me before I went up there, yeah. and oh. I fucking swatted at Marsh yeah, to get out of my so way. Aggressive. Yeah, he should have stopped you before unless he beat. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't like the matchup. Yeah, it was my birthday. Yeah, which I, I think was a Monday. <laughs> 
after all this nonsense went down. Mm-hmm. And on my birthday till about two o'clock, I'd speak to a per- honestly an attorney, <laughs> criminal attorney, because, <laughs> because the, the, the death, like we did. I had to speak to them. Hey, these guys might charge him with a death. <laughs> Is there something here? Like, no, it's for real. I couldn't believe it. So uh, I know. And this attorney's like, yeah, it's a serious charge here in, in Canada. I'm like, I'm meanwhile, like, oh, they say my. it in hockey up there all the time. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Every time. <laughs> yeah, what? So, right. I'll yeah. never forget it. Yeah. I, I was just. What a what a time! That what was, a time to be alive! That was all time. It, yeah, it really. But was. less. He didn't go to jail, but he did have to call bingo. I yeah. mean, you know, the next the next worst thing. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. And unless he had to instruct a whole shot academy that he ended up just competing in and tried to win, <laughs> <laughs> turned into a meltdown. That's also on point. Yeah. That's also on brand, yeah. right? Yeah. Shows up with his uh, nasal strip on. For the whole shot. <laughs> for the whole shot. <laughs> shot race. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's wild. Uh, With tear-offs. Awesome. Also, Alessi having the number one jersey for the Fight Club that will also go down in history for the Fight Club race, having it pre-made to, to, to bring out. Um, yeah, Genova was angry, and, and, yeah, there was talk of jail. There was talk of charging being pre- – yeah, it was fantastic. What a time. Yeah. Trust me, by the end of it, I was – on their side, <laughs> get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, Phil, I'm, like, you, I'm uh, gonna feel bad news. I'm testifying for them. I will say, Sim, Sims was uh, he was ride or die for oh, you yeah, through the whole was. situation. He was that's the means. And Galdi was not, huh? Galdi, Galdi was not. Galdi yeah. wanted me to yep. burn out the cross, yep. you know, that's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wish that was the most ridiculous thing Phil's put me through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, right? That's only number eight on the list. Uh, like, yeah, 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 it's funny. As the years go, it keeps dropping lower. <laughs> Speaking of that, how is uh, has, has free agency started for uh, the Washington Group in for twenty uh, five? We uh, we working hard or what? Always working, Phil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a mellow year this year, but pieces are got moving around. It's like Seven Eleven. He's always open. Yes. Well, look, I, he just added Hammaker as a client. Mm-hmm. He's got Voland. Mm-hmm. He, he, he sort of has Ferrandis, I think. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Mark McDonald now, yeah. Right, right. Like, I don't know how you keep all this shit straight, Myrtle. There's no time for Phil in any of that. No, there's no time for Phil. If, if you graduate as Phil's agent, you can take on anything. <laughs> <laughs> no boot deal. That ever happened. No, the no. Boot, boot deal, deal never happened. No, no. Yeah, that boot yeah. deal. Yeah. Ah, yeah, Mertz Lucky is busy. for a poor sponsor that wasn't coaxed into paying for him, they'll never work for me again. <laughs> <laughs> me again. Yeah. I mean, how is uh, how are things going? How are you juggling everything? I are mean, you I... on a, like, job audition? Here, no, Phil? yeah. Yeah, I need a co-host. Like, the, look at these questions. You're talking to me different. Yeah. yeah you this know, over just... knows. This I know. I heard not... him talking about the Hoover Dam today, and it was a different tone of voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is I'm like, on vacation. On I'm don't actually talk to I, me I'm right actually, now. I'm actually trying to give you some respect on public radio if you not don't internet want res- radio. or internet radio if you don't you know, want the respect radio that's rude Steven. <laughs> it's internet radio <laughs> damn it it's internet right it's, um, it's more yeah, important it's good adamant. radio and, and the only lila made me come out here and do this oh uh, see well, at least your wife's smart unlike you you know how many yeah, myrtle seriously though uh, honestly how many fo- how many phone calls do you get from phil complaining about his deal, uh, other people, other people's deals. One thing about Phil, Marsh, you can back me up on this. Phil loves the gossip. He's TMZ. <laughs> he he know and like he knows it's his dude. name is TMZ. Phil. Dude. He knows before it happens. Dude, he really he does. does. He yeah. he's no. very impressive. No, been, Even when he says he doesn't know, he knows. Last few weeks, I'm calling him media. <laughs> <laughs> he he's very Last few plugged weeks, in. I'm, I'm, I'm caught on to it because and it's media. funny because he plays the contrary. Like, oh, I don't care. I don't. I don't oh, pay I attention really, to anything. I, really I don't know. I don't care about anything. <laughs> yeah. No. He literally calls me on everything. Yeah. So, hey, what's happening here? Right. I. I yeah. I he, can't he's... tell you, Phil. And then I get abused. And then he. Like if I don't tell him, or if he. Yeah. If, if I gave give him a vague answer, I get abused. <laughs> and then I get don't you dare hang up. <laughs> Yeah, but it's always opposite, though. I call you, you never answer. But if I don't answer for your phone calls, I get three calls in a row. No, it's just Maverick grabbing my phone. <laughs> not me. No, Dude. no, I speak to Phil all the time. He's one of my, one of my best mates. Yeah, right. I enjoy. I, yeah. I uh, yeah. I am always impressed with Phil because he seems to know what's going on with like other random riders and teams. Where I'm like. 
How do, what's and I try to put it together like how does Phil know that? Like who does he know? Phil and, it won't be for me because Phil swears black and blue. He don't tell no one nothing. No, so, no. Um, I'm talking about guys that like I can't even put it together. Like he'll know stories about I don't know AP or somebody where I'm like wait. How does he know that or whatever? And I'm just like I'm not. It's not. I'm not picking out specifically. But I'm like, wow, Phil is really. Room. Phil is really plugged in here. I'm not plugged in anywhere. The group chats usually don't have members in the media. <laughs> yes. That um, info that you're probably talking about. Yeah. yeah. True. True. Yeah. I mean, I'm in. I'm in some group texts where Phil is like, I can't talk about this in this group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Phil just says like, that? Yeah, yeah Phil, 100%. He says that. He goes, I can't what talk about this in this group. Yeah. I just, I, I, <laughs> what a nerd. No, there's, uh, there's some things I don't talk about. No. Yeah. Listen, there's there, it's just like. Me too. I was just, what happened? Uh, I said something a couple weeks ago. Fuck, I can't even remember what it was. And this person said, where'd you hear it from? And I'm like, I can't tell you, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to do that. I got caught in that one time. Mm-hmm. Watson blew me out. <laughs> and, 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 and Watson blew me out with Carmichael and Tony Gardia. And I'm like, well, I've learned my lesson. No rats allowed in the group no, chats. No, no. So no. I, this person who was a friend of mine said, where did you hear that? And I said, you know I can't tell you. And we went on with our lives. Yeah. I uh, you I can't. should have gave him the yeah, Lewis Tomac. Yeah. That the other week. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. yeah. What's that, Mark? Phil fed me, fed me some crappy information. <laughs> that came from... One of uh, your guys. Did, no, oh, it did. No, yeah. it did. No, and then I had to call him, and then he abused me. And I was just <laughs> yeah. like, "Hey, vet your information. You, you're an idiot." Yeah, I, that happened and to he me. Was so mad at me. I got a real. I got a. I got a tip from someone that would know something. Mm-hmm. I put it on Twitter. I get a call <laughs> two minutes later, and they're like, "What are you talking about? That's not going to yeah. happen. That's never going to happen." And I'm like. Uh, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got abused up because of it. Because I was like, "Dude, stop!" Yeah. Because it, actually, it kicked off about five other things. <laughs> <laughs> like, it essentially kicked off free agency issues, <laughs> yeah. right? And I'm, like, because I'm like, all right, I'll. Yeah, you're like holy shit. Let yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> on, I was holding off on something for a, you know, time with my friend. Yeah, yeah. and still gave me some shitty info. I'm like, oh, I got a credit press to hold something. You're welcome. And then it's like, you are welcome. That information. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. that you're in Phil, crappy informant. We yeah. can't trust him. Phil is like Fox News. He's fake news. He's <laughs> like Fox. You know, that's bullshit. Um, that yeah, just can't trust no, him. It's not that bad. No, it's all right. No, but Lucas but he is, did give me some crappy info. Yeah, I did. And, yeah, I, and I, then it was my fault. It was. It was. But Lucas isn't my agent anymore. Oh, We're, you guys have officially. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. I mean, I ask him about stuff right. and quite, you know, right. whatever, because he's one of my good can, mates. But like, I, can I ask? Yeah, Mar- or, can I ask Myrtle about Ferrandis, or he's not going to say? Um, well, Wa- Ferrandis is a Wasserman guy. Yeah, but like, I feel like there's something fishy. There's something fishy going on, Mertz. Well, no, nothing. He decided he had, had a lung infection. He was sick. We didn't get any news this week. He wasn't there. You know, is he coming back? Is he coming back? Yeah, you'll see him soon. <laughs> What's the definition of soon? Talk about health issues or stuff going on. So. Yeah, but I, I feel there's like maybe there's nothing fishy going on. Okay, all right, we'll just go with that. Yeah. There's nothing fishy. It's health only. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Because you know, KP like Eli didn't want to tell Phil about his training program. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Phil. <laughs> I know. If, you're, if you're auditioning him, he sucks. Like, we had a guy. <laughs> we had a guy call in one time. The question. We had a guy call in one time with Eli and said, "Hey man, I heard you got this kind of car. I, I don't remember what it's. He just heard that Eli had one of these cars, and Eli's like, I don't talk about my personal life." <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like he ain't talking about his cars. Yeah. He's definitely not going to tell Phil his training load. Yeah. Yeah. He did say it a wake boat though. That's kind of baller. He did say that. Yeah. 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 No, so. but I was I, I I you know you heard my question to him, Lucas, because obviously you're going a different route with Jet. You know. Well, I put it. Hunter. I put it on because I'm like, there's something going on on this radio show tonight. I'm not doing it. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I did randomly hear that. But yeah, each guy's different, right? Like. Mm-hmm. 
What yeah, a, what but I mean, obviously, obviously, it's your job to grow Jet as much as possible, right? In order to do Not that, you have every, every athlete. Yes, every right. athlete, exactly. Yeah. You know, but you're looking at setting a new standard for motocross by doing different things with the VIP because you want to look toward something like MX or MotoGP. You know what I mean? In order to get there, like I asked Eli, I mean, like he's kind of sets the salary caps for Moto. You know what I mean? And now you have the next up and comer, so you want to try and set new boundaries. You know, but in order to do that, you need to give something else back to show that other than just championships and race wins. Correct? Correct. Yes. Like, certain guys, like I was talking about, have, can handle different things and are marketable and, and, and hit in certain aspects, right? I don't know if the right thing, you know, set a new standard that's, you know, it's kind of can be taken arrogantly or whatnot. I just think if we... If we, we repeat the same thing but expect a, di a different outcome, I can't work like that. And, and to be honest, my clients expect me to grow and push boundaries and, you know, and, and grow, with, grow with them and create new opportunities, whatever they are, if it's a different team or whatnot, right? So it's just, a, just as everyone, you know, the sport changes and athletes have to elevate, I also think on this side, myself as an agent has had to do the same um if not i probably couldn't you know justify the work i do for guys if it's just the same bag of tricks or you know and whatnot and i i just you know in the world we live in today there's a lot of complaints and there's a lot of opinions and there's a lot of stuff like that and that's that's all well and good i just don't want to complain about something without you know, trying to make it better or, or what, what not. Mm -hmm. Right. And kind of that's the basis of different paths or different opportunities we look at. Right. Mm -hmm. And the value put on them and the risk we take, right? Like this VIP zone, I wish someone stopped me <laughs> with the amount of work. Like I, just, <laughs> like I don't recommend that. Look, uh, it looks way easier than it than it is, but you know nothing worth it comes easy. And mm -hmm. yeah, I hope I hope it does create a path for other riders or fans to enjoy sport, the sport in a different way, or mm -hmm. you know, or whatnot. Yeah, I just I was always curious to see. You know, everyone always knows. You know, kind of, or no one really knows what the salary number for a top rider is you know what i mean because our sport is so quiet compared to others other stuff well, if you get in a group chat with phil he'll give you some numbers that don't have to be right <laughs> yeah just put a three and a couple extra yeah. zeros here and there and but i mean okay. we don't know nascar numbers we don't know indycar numbers it's, no, it's you a, can find it yeah yeah you well, can't really you no can't really well find it, it. it's different right like i hear that comment comment a lot oh that's only because it play players unions and exactly. you know yeah. and salary caps that's why you know that that information is released and you know mm -hmm. and out there because yeah. of because of players unions and and the salary cap era so i uh, like because yeah. lucas so i went to dinner with chris betts you know mm -hmm. what what agency does chris yeah. work for again uh MVP, it's called. I MVP, yeah. okay. It's the base, second biggest agency in baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was telling me, like, uh, you know, after the second year, you know, of players in the MLB or whatever, they get to go to arbitration, and they get to battle, you know, the player, mm -hmm. the agent, and the agency's lawyers get to go to, you know, debate in a room with the team and their lawyers, and they basically can go about a worth of, you know, find out what the worth of what the player is, you know? Mm-hmm. You wouldn't do well in arbitration. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know? Look, we don't have yeah. unions. We don't have a no. I, I yeah, 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 it's totally yeah, no. different. No, I, yeah. I I agree. I agree. But imagine doing that in our sport, though. It'd be I, great. It would be great. Yeah. You know, imagine me going great to, for others. Yeah. Well, a hundred percent. You know, 
But imagine me going to arbitration with club or whatever, and then just trying to negotiate a value yeah. of X amount of like, this is what it is. You right. know, like you would leave owing them money. <laughs> <laughs> I Phil, already we, owe people the, money. You know, Phil, the, right. the, the, the judges come it. back. You actually yeah, owe them a hundred k. That would be Fuck. Phil's luck. I'm like, sorry, <laughs> totally. God, I didn't see that coming. Uh, He's like, oh, yeah, I shouldn't, shouldn't open that door. Yeah, yeah. Good news is you don't owe me anything on it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, huh? no percent. Yeah. Shoot. Now, yeah, I, yeah. I wish we did make it a little more public in our sport, but it, it is what it is. It's mm-hmm. not going to happen, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it just, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, people who say that, it's apples to oranges compared to No, food. I, yeah. I, I, I know you I know wouldn't that, be against it. I wouldn't be against no, it. No, it'd be good for you. It'd be good for agents. No, we, I just think we're, we should be really proud of uh, what, you know, there, there's a stigma that, you know, there's not money involved, but, and, but yeah. there is. Yeah. And, and, there's, and these athletes are the best athletes in the world and, on that gate. And like, you know, you 22 know. guys mm-hmm. on, a, on a Saturday night. They, these are, there's no one, no one doing more as a professional athlete as, as what a, professional supercross racer has to go through during the week yeah then show up to uh, a venue that they've never ridden before that changes all day there's no other you know modern day nba basketball or you know stick and ball Mm. that would accept that kind of conditions Mm. oh changes every week no yeah same thing yeah so but and uh, and, uh, the point of kind of drawing that comparison is we should be proud of our super, you know, superstars or champions doing well for themselves. It's like there's been a stigma attached that we should be, you know, shy away from that. And I wouldn't be against that, you know, putting putting it out there. But obviously, with uh, athlete agreements and confidentiality clauses that are all the way through them, it, it can't get out there. Mm-hmm. I got one of Timmy's old factory Yamaha contracts somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah. Hmm. I just took it. He told me I could have it. I'd be curious to yeah. see. I don't know where it is. Somewhere. Not see, but yeah, you know. Yeah, but like I, you know, our sport is still so small. But at the same time, like you have these nineteen, twenty, twenty-one year old kids that go and talk to these teams. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and yeah. like imagine being twenty-one years old and you got to go talk to Mitch Payton on, to negotiate your deal. <laughs> right. Dude, yeah. what? <laughs> well, meanwhile, you know, Mitch has negotiated like 500 deals in the past, and then you're negotiating yeah. your first one. It's yeah. not really a fair. Yeah. Yeah. You not don't really that. have a fair <laughs> chance at it. And not only that, and then they give you this contract with words that you don't even know what these fucking words mean. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <sighs> there's a bad stigma with agents. Like, I get that. You know what I mean? And obviously, Lucas is my friend, and I, we talk a lot. And it's just the way things change now. Like, these young kids, our sports should be – our our athletes should be represented by agents. I'm sorry. I know people don't like agents because they do some of their yeah. jobs. And there are some agents yeah. that me personally, I really don't like. I mean, I just had sport. to deal with a guy that I thought was a clown. Yeah. So, I mean, that's yeah. just, but that's right. that's the way it is. And you can go to other sports. It wasn't Myrtle either, by the way. No. I mean, Lucas is still a little bit of a clown. Yeah. But I mean, they, I mean, I'm sure there's other bottom feeder type agents or whatever in other sports as well. But yeah. You need somebody to help the kids out. You know, they don't they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. And if a team can get away with not paying them an extra sixty thousand dollars or a hundred K, of course they're gonna do it. It's a business. Yeah. You know what I mean? That doesn't yeah. mean it's right. I would love to see Bobby Reagan dealing with some of these kids that he saw well, hires and well, fires that, and that, yeah, I mean, well that that's what I mean. We made lots of jokes about that. I mean, Will yeah. Hahn had a contract and just got fired. Yeah, I mean <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> he had a deal and they were like, Yeah, you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it's uh it's yeah. a really Really, it's a it's a tough deal, and I think that's where an agent and like Wasserman and everything that they have, like I think it's a real, mm-hmm. you know, it yeah. is it is a benefit no, and, and it's needed. Yeah, like kids who are these agreements are thirty pages, right? And they can be super restrictive, right? And I get like the stigma and, and a bad agent, and, or you know, just the stigma attached. But I will tell you, more more riders are being ripped off by teams than any agent or you know yeah yeah than anyone else right and it, and it still happens to this day i have you know there's a lot of times that, you know some people are in some some athletes are in you know they're in trouble mm-hmm. with what they've signed and mm-hmm. you know and they've got no way to you know get the money they earned per the agreement because of verbiage mm-hmm. right and and that happens like a lot like most people 
you know, come to, come to us and not just in motocross, supercross, you know, mm-hmm. bad contracts are, it's, it's bad. But yeah. again, no one ever hears that side of things. And, and it's like anything in any, if you're a building contractor or anything, it's, it's, it's a business and, and our sport is, is, you know, stick and ball, like our MLB agents, they, they do a standardized MLB contract. Right, and it's just they move the terms around. You know, for for one client, like mm-hmm. I could have as many as eighteen uh, sponsorships, partnerships in one client per year. Right, mm-hmm. and when I speak to all our basketball and all that, those guys, they're like, "Oh, I, we'd never do that. It's too much work. <laughs> Why would you do that? Yeah. They think we're crazy. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. right. So." So just on that sense alone, right, it's a lot of agreements and a lot of obligations, and, and they've all got to be timed and, and, and written with, if, it's 18, if they have 18 partnerships, every partnership's got to work with their 17 others legally, Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's intricate, right? And, and I think these younger kids... You know, coming up and, and they've got their parents and they're, they're told by people, no, we don't deal with agents and we don't deal with, you know, managers and, and whatnot. Yeah, isn't there... You should, you should run. You, there right? there are and teams legally, that have said that, right? Yeah. We don't deal with agents. Yeah, like, there's teams yeah. that have said that. Like, I just like, wait, what? Like, yeah, like <laughs> that, that's not like your... Like, you should run but, yeah, if you yeah. hear that, like, <laughs> if, if young families are hearing because they don't want you to read what they're having you sign. Yeah, and 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 by law, every agreement to be legal, everyone ha, should have the right for representation and legal yeah. consultation. Yeah, yep. And if and if that hasn't been provided or deterred away, the contract will be torn up. Mm-hmm. Or if it was to make it to court, right? Um, I'm not a lawyer, but you know, I'm not giving out legal advice, mm-hmm. right? But the team is lawyers we have right like Mm -hmm. it's serious right yeah it's and and there's a responsibility behind that so i mean the problem with it is when a guy that is in a negotiation with a team that is saying you don't need a representation it's like you can kind of just pretty be pretty disposable at that point and you just go to the next guy because there's somebody else that will take it always. And and, and to take the team side on that, sometimes it's said because they've had bad experiences and lost deals because of because of agents and what yeah. what not, right? So there's, there's also a few sides to it. It's not they're the big bad wolf, but you know, generally speaking, you, even if you don't need an agent, you feel you, they they're happy with the terms of the contract, it still should be yeah, reviewed, uh, reviewed yes. and, you know, yeah. everyone should understand what they're signing yeah. and, and the yeah. amount of people that, you know, I, hey, I threw, I threw even, across my, even my math TV well, deal. champions yeah. and whatnot uh, yeah. that, that I begin to work with or, or, or talk to, and I go, who looked at this? Mm. They have no idea. I'm mm. like, Okay, there's a huge issue here, or yeah, you know, or whatever. I, right. I've had clients go, "Hey, my deal's up at the end, of, end, of, end of the year." No worries. No. And then I go, "Bro, it's the end of next year." <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm all confused. And I have to go, you know, why are you thinking it's this year? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and just homeschooling. That that would happen way more than you'd think. Because mm-hmm. uh, I won't trust. I won't trust what someone says they're contractually. Oh, yeah, I'm out here. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're like, let me see it. Let me look at that thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, thanks, Myrtle. Thanks for the time tonight. Appreciate it. We got to jump off. But, uh, yeah, we look at uh, Good chat, Myrtle. Good chats, Myrtle. Anything from my friends in the media. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, I like that. I love that. That's, that's great. Uh, I know you're not grouping me in there. You, know. uh, you are media now. Yep, <laughs> he is. Paid by, the, that's his the next venture. He went it's well. The media <laughs> Phil. Paid by Racer X. Yeah, Cheapest exactly. employee they Friday, got. <laughs> Friday, Phil call him, everybody. Read it up on Racer X Online. Uh, uh, thanks, Mertz. Yeah, but they don't know shit. Yeah. Good evening. All right, see Bye. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> love the villain drop there at the end. <laughs> Uh, Nick, I waited. I waited. I didn't want to ruin that. <laughs> Nick, uh, you grew up where Phil lives, Nick? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I spent 25 years there. Okay. Which part? Um, Like a mile from downtown. 
mile from downtown where? Waxhaw. Oh, I didn't okay. grow up there, but I live there now, you know. No, oh, Nick grew yeah. up there, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, that was cool. All right, Nick, what else we yeah, got? Have you ever, I was wondering if you had ever been to the uh, track that they have out there. In Wax- no, I haven't, but I, I heard that there was a track somewhere um, right on the other side of uh, the railroad tracks. Um, but, no, I, I haven't seen it. I actually saw it on Google Maps, but, um, no, uh, maybe one day I will make it there. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I thought that would be cool, man, if you guys turned it around or something out there. Yeah. Buy a track, Phil. Run no. a track. No. Uh, thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, all right. Trevor's on, too. Trevor, uh, what's going on, man? You got a Phil story? <laughs> yeah. So uh, back in, well, it was Phil 250 JGR days. Okay. And we did the uh, the JT VIP. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I can't remember. But anyways, so I'm a big Phil fan, and I'm just a big guy. So I'm wearing my Phil Nicoletti shirt that's a little snug. You know, and he spots me right away, and I was like, oh, yeah, and he's, you know, great shirt. Well, we're walking the track, and we're walking the, the whoops before the finish line, and I'm like, man, he's, you know, Phil's right there. And I go, so what do you do with these things? Do you just, like, hit them wide open the first lap? And he's like, well, I guess I will. And the first lap of practice, he's wide open and just cartwheels his brain throughout through that whole thing. <laughs> and my wife looks over at me, and she's like, well, there goes you getting a jersey from him. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. That must, have been, that must have been Anaheim 1. Is it Anaheim 1? Oh. Yeah, see you later. Yeah. We lost him. We don't know if it's Anaheim 1 or not. Must have been, because that's the only time I crashed in the whoops first lap. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, next guest on the show brought to you by Renegade Race Fuels. Justin Brayton won a championship with Renegade. Uh, Will Hahn as well. Pulp MX 24, they will deliver it right to your door. For the cleanest, coolest, and most consistent race fuel on the market, grab a can of Renegade and pour it in. And uh, thanks to the guys at Renegade Race Fuels for doing this. Uh, Pulp MX24 delivered right to your door. Thank you to RenegadeRaceFuel.com. Uh, bringing you our next guest. It's uh, retiring, hanging up the wrenches. Mechanic for Adam Cien Cirillo, Monster Energy Kawasaki. He was on here a few months ago. Justin Shanty. What's up, Shanty? How are you, buddy? How's it going, guys? We're good, man. Thanks for calling in. Uh God damn, dude! I've never seen such a tribute to a guy hanging up his wrenches as I did at the all day in St. Louis. I mean, dude, I I was kind of blown away myself. I just kind of showed up just to do another race and you know not get any kind of sideways about it. And uh, you can tell I've lost my voice, parted a little too hard on Saturday night, but mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it was cool, man. Adam Adam showed up on Friday right away and was like, "Hey, I want I want tomorrow and today to be all about you." You know, like you you you've stuck it out for me, and I haven't been able to maybe give back as much as he wanted to, to to the team and us and stuff. So it was really cool. He surprised me with, like, a couple butt patches. And I was yeah. like, man, I, I, I even asked Katie. I was like, dude, was that you? He's like, no, dude, it was, excuse me, it was Adam the whole way. So I, got, I, I quit. So I, I got nothing. Got, Nobody even, no one gave me any fucking acknowledgement <laughs> and yeah, interviews. But, it's tough. Yeah, but you did, who the fuck did you work for? Wow. <laughs> I mean, I worked for a guy that was able to, you know, stay healthy. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, not really. Yeah, I very didn't. <laughs> um, uh, it does suck, Shanty. No, listen, it does suck to have Adam's crappy night. Like, you know what I mean? Hurt his ankle, uh, got taken, you know, no fault of his own, and then that's it. So that kind of sucks, but, I mean, whatever. Yeah, it was Yeah, it was a shitty situation. Obviously, we're yep. both looking at each other like, why the fuck does this always happen? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was just a weird deal. We actually, I went down. Um, he went and got x-rays or whatever and got his boot off, and then we got him, you know, bucket ice, and Navarro was in there, so... I took off and went down to staging. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, there was some hope. Um, there was some hope, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So we were going to line up. He said, I'm fucking racing, dude. Like, I'm, I'm racing. I'm like, cool. Cool. I'm, I'm into it. So, uh, yeah, I marched down there, got staged up a little bit. We were a little early. And then I didn't really have my headset on. I think I was talking to somebody. And somebody had come up on the team and was like, hey, he's not going to do it. He can't get his boot on. I'm like, oh, it just kind of hit me. Like, yeah. hey, if it's not, if it's not going to be now, it's not going to be at all. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was kind of surreal, I guess, bittersweet. I don't know what you want to call it, but yeah. I guess I didn't realize my last one, or not even the last one, who, who the fuck knows in the future what's going to happen, but my last one with him for sure um, was really the first was the first moto, and I didn't even realize it. So it was kind of, I almost kind of would rather it that way, where, you know, yeah. I get emotional about stuff. So, yeah. you know, we just kind of did our business all day and, 
And uh, he said he was riding, you know, he felt great, felt the best he felt all season so far, just kind of staying loose. And, you know, we had a really good vibe going. And, uh, yeah, gate drop, and then that shit happened. So um, he just was kind of twisted around there in that corner. And we were just, like, locked eyes. And I, I just wasn't going to be that great. I thought yeah. it was his knee, honestly. I did, too. I did, too. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was his knee. I think I he tweeted his he, knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, um, he showed me that, actually. So, um, yeah, why the decision? to You're going to go work for Toyota at JGR? NASCAR uh, stuff? Yep. Uh, yep. Why? Well, well why? to be honest, it was going to be a, a April Fool's joke, and now I've got to fucking move to North Carolina. So. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Took it a little too far, man. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, it it honestly came out of nowhere. Uh, I had talked to Fahey uh, early on, like around, um, let's see, it was actually on Halloween night. We stayed late at the shop, and mm-hmm. I kind of just told him I was burnt out and just – I guess, I mean, burnout, I guess it's pretty general, but I just kind of ready for something different, ready for, I, I don't know. I wasn't really planning on moving and doing all this stuff, but I was yeah. ready at the end of the season to look towards something else in the company, mm-hmm. in the team, yep. you know, do something different. Cause it's been, I mean, professionally 16 years for me and I didn't even know where the hell all the time went. But, 16 years? Um, oh, fuck. I yeah, didn't know you man, like, that long. I started... Yeah, I started with the Alessis. Uh, well, that's like well, that's like so. two years then. Every for every year of Alessi, yeah, that's two yeah. or three years. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I only made it twelve months. So what was that? Moto Concepts or what was that? No, that was before that. That was the first year Mike uh, rode Suzuki's. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, uh, yeah. So sixteen so, years. Oh, I didn't know you did that long. Damn. Yeah, and then it's been eleven on Cowies. You know, five at Mitch's, and yeah. I guess five and a half here. It didn't make it the whole way, but yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so, so we're just cruising along. I told Dan, I was like, listen, I've got. I've got for sure this year in me, and I'll probably have another one, like, you know, after Adam, and we'll just see where it goes. We'll see who we get. We'll mm-hmm. see what happens, and uh, we'll go from there, you know. And he's basically been a huge mentor to me and uh, was like, hey, how can we, you know, we can't change the job. We can't change the workload. How can we make it better, you know? Like, get out, ride your mountain bike more. Get out of the shop more. You know, they're not crazy about, you know, being there from X time to X time. It's kind of like get your shit done and go home, mm-hmm. you know, be an adult. And that that worked, you know. We, we – started uh just i tried to ride more tried to hang out more tried to just not be at the shop there for a while but then you know how it goes, steve like you just that just the work's got to get done yeah you know like adam's in california full time so oscar and i are basically splitting up the duties of going to the track and you're riding off season four days a week you're prepping race bikes now we got to you know last few years we've had to prep two full race bikes you know i'm trying to take some time off to go skiing like usual it's just i don't know it kind of caught up to me in a way that I didn't realize. I, I don't know if I could have changed anything leading up to it, you know, to try to prolong it. But <clears throat> I feel like I'm one of the guys that, that, that really capitalizes on, you know, taking time off, doing some cool shit outside mm-hmm. of racing or when we're on the weekends or Saturday nights or Friday nights or whatever. But yep. yeah, so uh, yeah, we were just my, uh, actually a guy at Team Green, a good buddy of mine um, had been working there for a few years, Mario. He, uh, he got a call knowing you know just being connected through loretta's and stuff and work on the east coast from from a guy that works on uh the gibbs team like one of the crew chiefs and said there was a job open <clears throat> sorry there's a job open uh with toyota and he'd be a great fit for it mm. so you know he secretly had kind of done the deal and i think anaheim too was like his last deal, last deal like last weekend and went for the um for the future stuff and uh yeah took the job and then when he when they came out here for the clash, he had a meeting with all those guys at TRD over in Costa Mesa, and uh, they told him they said, "Hey, we could actually use you know one more guy if you know anybody." He's like, "Dude, I've got the guy." He's like, "If you want a moto guy like Toyota, they, I didn't know this until I started talking to him, but they they've had a lot of guys from Cali over the years, you know, North Carolina and here in California." Yeah, Wiggins, uh, guys, right? Wiggins, yep, yeah. guys that we all know. Yeah, I mean, tons of them actually. Um, you know, Dave Pyle and uh, Hooker and Wiggins and Zach White went over there for a little bit and like Jeff. Oh, that's Opel. right. Yeah, there's Zach. A, yeah, Zach. Was there, a yeah. Ton of guys, yeah. man. There's guys I didn't even know were ter- like Cali or Team Green guys or Riders or. Um, so yeah, he uh, he he said, oh, "Yeah, absolutely. We love we love Moto guys. Mm-hmm. We love their enthusiasm. We love their attention to detail. We love how they work. You know how they're multi- multifaceted and stuff." So uh, he said, get, "Have him give me a resume." And I kind of talked over my wife. And when Mario called me the night, he was like, hey, I just want to let you know you weren't at the shop today. I put in my two weeks' notice. And I was like, oh, cool. Because um, he was planning on um, – I'm sure it's okay to say now, but he was planning on uh, 
I think going down to Florida and, and maybe doing something with the Lawrence brothers with Jacob Hayes, like practice white mechanic or doing something down there. He's an East Coast guy from Ohio. Uh-huh. And was kind of kind of realized California is hard to be here and buy a house and all this, you know, all this, all this stuff. So uh, he was ready to jet out of here and he called me and he's like, uh, yeah, I'm leaving. I was like, oh, you took that job? He's like, nah, man, I'm going to NASCAR. And I was like, what? And then we talked about it, and, like, I immediately was just getting, like, super antsy on the whole thing. I'm like, wait, what, wait, what, what job is this? And he started explaining it, explaining it. I'm like, dude, that's, you know, of course, being a mechanic, what we're doing, we can do that job. That's something we could do. Mm-hmm. You know, what are the – what? What? tell me more. I just couldn't get enough of it. I got, like, this new spark inside me, and I was like, man, I, I know where it's headed. I literally ran upstairs. My wife works from home, and, like, hey, pause it. Told her all about Mario, and was like – She's like, well, tell me more. Like, what, what is this whole thing? So we, we got into a little bit, like, further and, and learned some more stuff. And, uh, yeah, mm. once I decided to dust off my resume and send it in, it just kind of flew from there. It was like a month later, I think around Detroit or something, um, it got pretty serious and ended up, you know, long, long story yeah. long, I, uh, I took the job. So And you're going to go to the be... – you're going to go to the races. Like, you're working at JGR in the motor – Department, yep, Toyota, and then yep. so I'll be races uh, the NASCAR Cup Series on the 54 car, Ty Gibbs. Wow. And I'll be, That's pretty I'll cool. Be his, uh, yeah. yeah, they call it like uh, basically shorthand would be like his engine tuner. So mm-hmm. getting his cars ready from the engine side of, of stuff at the shop, doing like shop starts, you know, prepping anything to do with the engine from the Toyota's point of view. So I've kind of explained it kind of like, uh, like, like Showa. You know, like you bring in Showa, yeah, yeah. you know, Gibbs. You know, we have a relationship with Showa and a contract. So Brummie's our Showa representative. And then I'm with Toyota, so I would be the representative for Toyota for for Gibbs on that particular car. So um, I, I'm still, still honestly in the with dark. Ty? What, what's what? that? No. no. Who? I don't know if Billy is. <coughs> Billy Felt. Oh, Felt. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he's not, yeah he's I not keep hearing anymore. he's he's over there. He was with Ty for a while, I think. Yeah, and he's he's not I, anymore though. He was like yeah, for a while, it, kind of shepherding Ty around, right? Yeah, like with yeah Coy? that's right. And then he, well, who was the other kid that he was with here just recently in the Xfinity series? Uh, well, he was with Riley Herbst for a little while, and then um, yep. this new kid, I forgot what his name is. Did um, Billy not is work at JGR anymore? Or not? Uh, I think he's still looking for something now. Oh, okay. I think he left what he's doing, but I think maybe he wants to come back to JJ. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. Billy's been oh, kind of cool. quiet. So Shanty, for you, like lots of travel <laughs> still. You're jumping from travel to travel, but you are going private. Yeah, it's so easier. it's a little. Yeah, yeah. the, J- not, the well, JGR aviation is a lot better than uh, flying commercially. Than Spirit Airlines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, against uh, against a lot of. <laughs> I've gotten a lot of flack for it, honestly. Um, Oscar, Oscar, I mean, you were there that day in the airport. Oscar and Kenny, uh, Kenny Adams, they like to tell me that it's a shit deal and I'm going to lose all my status and Dude. I'm not going to have pre-check. And, you know, yeah, I think I'm was, fine with was, that. Was, yeah. yeah, I know. I, I, but it was so funny at Indy when we were talking about it. Everything I rebutted with, they were like, oh, yeah, but, uh, you, know, yeah. you know, you're going to lose your Marriott points. I'm like, no, we still stay at Marriott. He's like, yeah, for one night, you know, you're not, you're going to, we go, like, well, Every way we turned it, it was it was hilarious. Don't you go like, Thursday to Monday for that, or no Thursday to Sunday night? Or? I guess I've been oh. talking to Mario. Like, uh, okay. You basically and they go like sometimes Thursday if it's the West Coast, which is only a few, but it's usually Friday or even like Bristol. They went yeah, like, they're Saturday in and out in one oh, day. Wow, really? Yeah. Huh? And then if they're yeah. delayed, like Daytona, they'll fly them all back home instead of giving yeah. them all hotel rooms and then fly them back the next the morning. next day. They'll go back yeah. back to yeah, the it's range. Cheaper yeah. logistically yeah. wise to do that, you Dude, know. That's yeah. still. I, I, I believe they said they fly like what 150 people or something from sponsors to pit crews to yeah. work crew. They're different waves of guys that come yeah. in, and then I'm sure you think about hotels and rental cars and stuff like to save another night on Sunday because Mario said they're out of there Sunday night. Like checker flag, yeah, 45 they're minutes they're on the jet. Like yeah. that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah you're <laughs> you might actually enjoy traveling a little bit more. Yeah. then. you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, well that's what. That's what Dan said. I was all nervous. Like once I, I was, I was on the fence for a while, and then I was like, you know, Dan's like, I, the next time I talk to you, I want you to say I fucking want that job. I gotta have, it. you know, like. So I started thinking about it, and like I got really excited about it. There, like all of a sudden. Yeah. Um. And then, uh, yeah. I, I, then I was nervous. I was like, maybe, maybe I'm not gonna get the job. Like, who, who says I'm gonna get the fucking job? You know. And then Dan's like, no, you got the job. Like those guys. They know our they like they know you're vetted through Cali, you know Japanese company to Japanese company. Like you work in Moto for a long time, you work with top top team, yeah. You know all these teams, and he's like the big thing for them is probably the travel. You know you don't you don't they're not trying to hire a guy that says oh yeah dude I can travel. You know I'd love to travel. We have travel like you know it is Steve like all you guys really yeah like 
Fuck, we travel. Not a lot of people know, but us mechanics, like, we travel on Wednesday. We get up Wednesday morning, like, 4 o'clock, and then we get to the – it takes forever to get to the East Coast with a layover. We meet B at the truck, and he's probably finishing up polishing the truck or something. We go to dinner. You build, you set up, you race, you come home Sunday, and it's like – yeah. That's the thing. I woke up, I think, just in October. I was just like mm, counting down my weekends already. I do not want to travel on Wednesday anymore. I just, I don't want to do yeah. it. Yeah. I don't want to tell the wife goodbye and see her five days later. And then, yeah. like I said, you're, you know, the grind. Like then Monday, you're in the shop prepping stuff for the next build. And Tuesday, you're at the track testing. And then you, you know, squeeze yeah. some laundry and hopefully a mountain bike uh, ride. And then you're back on the plane. My, my bike broke at Southwick 05. Nothing to do with me, but the ignition wire cut out and the bike broke at Southwick. I was, I pushed the bike back from the farthest part of the track at Southwick back up the hill. Up, the, up, up and, that fucking and, hill. And, and right there and then I said, I'm done. I'm done. You parked it. I'm right. done. I'm at the end of the year. Like yeah. I'm done at the end of the year. I'm not doing this. Like that was your yep. turning point. Yeah, I just it was so much you feel and so just, terrible. Yep. It's hot mm-hmm. as balls. Mm. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> So yep. I started looking for a job after that. You know what I mean? It was one of those moments. Yep. I, can, oh. I can remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, but like when I'm a when I'm a kid, I I'm like, dude, I'll do this. Like I I think I'll, I'll even retract what I said last time I was on the show. I, I, you asked me something about maybe going to KTM. I said I will never leave Cal unless they drag me out of there. Well, so, something else drug me out of there. But I mean, <laughs> dude, I can't say enough about. I think I'll put I'll put my new job online. That's the best team in the pits. I don't care that company, the staff. Mm-hmm. Everybody, like, I, I, I am so pained to leave that place. All my people, like, it's, it's, yeah, it's you, the hardest. It's the hardest thing, dude. I'm sitting here looking at all these boxes in my house, been packing for weeks, oh, and yeah. none of it, none of it matters except for the people that I'm leaving. When are you leaving? When are you making a move out there? Uh, it's quick. So uh, Thursday is my last day at Cali, uh-huh. and then we're moving truck on Friday and driving on Saturday. Shit. Did you get a place? You found a place to live? Uh, we haven't yet. We're gonna. We're probably gonna build or buy a new one. There's so much new development out there right now. We want to be like Davidson, Cornelius. From everybody I've talked to that lives out there, I talked to Weech for a long time and J Bone and just don't, so don't talk to Weech. I, he don't, he's you're gonna cheap. get sucked into yeah, the Lake Norman yeah. life. Right, you're gonna get sucked into like a cheap <laughs> neighborhood. Well, or, KP, on, got, KP's got, the, got a spot right next to me. You can move right there. Yeah, <laughs> I've, got, I've got the yacht. You know, Dan calls it a yacht. I got a little Yamaha jet boat. Oh and, yeah. Uh, um, Tow that thing out there. So. Is Oscar gonna take over the wrench duties or Kranz? Actually, Kranz? dude, Kranz is gonna do it. It's like what a fucking cool story, man. Yeah. Like he's down and out with the cancer thing. Yeah, like, it's just, it wrecked him, dude. It fucking wrecked him. As it would anybody, but he's bouncing back. He's still got to do like some chemo treatments, like once yep. or, once or twice a month or once every other month. I can't remember. I think once this weekend actually, and it fucking wipes him out for a few days. And then, but yeah, he he told Dan he he has he has no problem uh, stepping in and doing it. Um, so it'll be cool. Like when you see Adam, hopefully he can line back up, uh, for Boston. Mm -hmm. And obviously I can be a huge fan now. I've never actually been a fan on the other side before, you know, raising before I started wrenching. Um, but yeah, Kranz will be behind the gate with him. And I think I told somebody this weekend, fuck, maybe it was me. Maybe we're not winning because me, I mean, Kranz, I mean, you, you talked to his old rider a minute ago, so he demands fucking wins. So yeah, Yeah, there Uh, we go. Maybe, yeah, maybe AC just takes off and we all just go, ah, Shanty holding them back. <laughs> yeah, fuck. I mean, whatever we got to do, man. Yeah, no, that's that, we got to do. No, that's cool. What um, yeah. what are some of your career highlights, wrenching wise? Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, I got to go one one in both classes. That was pretty cool with Joey Outdoors. Uh, after that horrendous deal that happened in Vegas that year. Mm-hmm. Um, very next race, I think it was. He went one one at Hangtown in the rain, and then the sun, and then that whole deal was really cool to bounce back. And then Adam did it in the COVID year at Millville, which was, was he, he was just a fucking stud that day. He rode with probably two second gap the whole time with two different riders. Like I think it was between Marvin one, one moto and possibly Osborne, the other one. So to go one, one outdoors, I think is, is really fucking phenomenal yeah. to be able to pull that off. Um, and then a lot of firsts with a lot of riders, you know, like working at PC, you're, you're dealt a lot of new talent and you're expected to perform. And, you're a fresh mechanic that is just just itching to, to get wins and get that feeling. And, you know, I got my first win with Justin Hill and his first win, my first, you know, Joey's first win, you know, got podiums with Matt Moss and Malcolm. and uh, Matt Moss. Matt Moss. Yeah, I worked for him at JDR. JDR. Podium yeah. with Matt Moss? You got yeah. podium? San Diego. Yeah, that shit. night in San Diego, oh, San Diego. 2013. Oh, okay. Yeah. 12, 2012. 13, yeah. 12, 12. Yep. 12. Yeah, you're right. Yep. 
Yep. Mm-hmm. There was a big, there was a bunch of carnage with, uh, or no, 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 sorry. That was different. That was our, Justin won in San Diego because of the, there was a bunch of carnage with, uh, Dean's front rotor and Anderson landed on it or something. And then yeah, yeah. Justin just kind of coasted away with the win. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's um, good. Yeah, it's good. But yeah, yeah, it's, yep. Well, I got, so, a, I got a national win too, 4 1. I'll take it though, Shanty. One national hey, win. That's 4-1. good. 4 1 wins a I lot, quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did 4 uh, 1, four one and then Ottawa was a 1 4. One and four. We, beat him in high point. we won with 1 4, Kelly Smith. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we flipped us and Osborne. Yeah. No, oh, Joey, when did. Joey won with a four one or a one four, I think. Uh, yeah, he yeah it was high two, point. High was, point. was a high point or Denver? Yep. Or four, yeah, it was uh, one of them. Fuck, I felt like every time we lined up at Denver, Joey won. I can't yeah. honestly, I can't fucking wait to see him race outdoors this summer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like me and him were talking, and you know he wants to. Obviously, he's got some goals, and um, I can't wait to honestly, I can't wait to see him race in general because I feel like I haven't seen him in a while. But to see him race Denver this year, hopefully everything goes good. But. Fuck, every time we won there, or every time we lined up there, I feel like we won. We had a we had a fucking cam chain break that one year when he was leading coming down that hill. But I think that would have been a good day, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin Shanty on the show, brought to you by the folks at Renegade Race Fuels. Pulp Mix 24 is a code to save with Renegade. RenegadeRaceFuels.com, and uh, please check it out. Racers who win, pour it in. <laughs> hey, Shanty, I got a question. Um, sure. When you were at PC, I don't know. I don't, I don't. To be honest, Mitch is one of the only guys I really don't talk to in the pits. Like, I don't know anything <laughs> about Mitch. But I feel like you and Mitch would get along. Yeah, I don't know. I never. Uh, he. Yeah. I'm not going to say he gets a bad rap, because that's not the term. But, like, he. if you're one of his guys, like, all of us, it was really cool. Like, you were talking about on Saturday, um, like, all, all the high, you know, just basically the people saying bye or whatever whatever happened but we managed to get like our, our crew back together like me and ollie and bz and, and kyle and mitch we all took a picture together it was kind of cool but he's just he's he, he's there for his guy he mm-hmm. he's the most loyal man i've ever met mm-hmm. and we can always go over obviously the relationship with cali helps but even all those guys like the fact that we all work there and then they went off to do their own thing like everybody else he just I feel like you get a lot of respect for him after you work for him for a while and he knows what we've done and um yeah, I don't know. A lot of people are super intimidated by him. And what? But when you're at PC, like, because we were just talking about this today, um, do the PC guys still rebuild all their own engine? Who who does oh, yeah. that? Yeah, last team to do it. Every every race mechanic builds all their own engines, yep. including practice engines, race engines, and they're usually. When I was there, there was two race engines for each guy, and you build them from the ground up. You go get the cases, put the bearings in, um, that kind of stuff, and then you you uh, like. Like we were talking about a minute ago on the grind of like flipping stuff around every week, mm-hmm. those things get dropped off at like ten thirty in the morning. You're sitting there like just waiting for the FedEx guy to show up. Mm-hmm. You pull that thing down as fast as you can and get it all cleaned up, polish it back out. Okay, and, and hopefully, and and, and now yeah. I'm going to cut you off. And now that you're not employed by uh, Cowie anymore, mm-hmm. I was just asking Kitchen that knock on his motorcycle because he kept saying it was the valves. But you know how the PC bikes when they're idling, they just sit there and they sound like they're tick like knocking. Yeah, because. Yep. What the yep. fuck is so, that? So I, I that was the first thing I because I didn't I was never on that that bike when it was uh, electric start. Mm-hmm. So they come and ride with us a lot actually. Like we go up to K four. Yeah. All the tracks like we all try to ride together. It's like a whole day, you know. Mm-hmm. And when I when they first started coming out there after I was off the two fifty for a little bit and I was like, why is that fucking thing so loud? Like what's like what's going on? And I'm told it's just the the idler gear is just loud in the back of the behind the basket is all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. That's more sense than the valves. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I think it's the valves. I'm like, fuck, if my valves are sound like that, there's an issue going on. It, it doesn't seem to slow any of those boys down right now. No, no, fire, no, man. no. no. kidding. Uh, hey, Shanty, we got to cut it a bit short tonight. We're running late, but um, sure. thank you for the time. Congrats on a great career, and uh, keep in touch, man. You got my number, so text me every yeah, now absolutely. and then. Yeah, yeah. thanks uh, for having I don't, me yeah. on, man. I appreciate it. I don't know you from Adam or whatever, but uh, – Living well, actually, for 12 years. Phil, so. we, we knew each other very, very briefly. When I was with Jeff Alessi, uh, after Mike broke his scapulas that year in 08, mm-hmm. we, went to, we went to Unadil, and I can't remember the guy's name. You'll know right away, but the radiologist guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Dr. Moreska, yes. That, yep. So yep. I, uh, I was actually, uh, I think his kid was racing, maybe the amateur side of stuff at yep. Unadilla one year. Yep. And I changed a tire for him, and you were around type mm-hmm. of thing. But, yeah, mm-hmm. we never really crossed paths, but. Uh, I remember that because I was—he was begging me. Doc was begging me just to jump on that 
that Honda 250 and go race mm-hmm. on uh, mm-hmm. on Friday. Just he's like, yeah, fuck it, it's there. Go, go, go yeah, it, you yeah, know. Yeah. So yeah, it's just crazy uh, in this sport how it's just like you know, Shanty's been around for yeah. a while. Just like, dude, I don't fucking know you at all. You know, yeah, like I know yeah, a lot yeah. of the mechanics and can yeah. walk into a lot of rigs, but Cowie, I don't walk into, and Mitch's thing, I don't walk into. Yeah. See, you I don't know, go, like, and, I don't go, and I don't go to KTM. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, Frankie yeah. and and Jade are great. But yeah. I like I the KTM, KTM guys fed me this weekend. Right. Like I walk in the Honda. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know, Yamaha's okay, but right. uh, yep. the, yep. some Cowies. Like That's I just crazy. anyone over there. Nope. You hear that from a lot of guys. Like like your guys, they have their spots they go. You know, yeah. even Steve. Steve has said, you know, like he used to come get coffee all the time at Cowie, and then COVID. You know, we got really weirded out about that shit, and it's slowly coming back now. B. Yeah. B really prides himself on his fucking. Coffee maker. So. Cowie, Cowie's pretty cool oh. to me. I made Theo a loaf of bread one time, and then I've been in ever since. Oh, you have like, oh. whenever, whenever I need a sandwich, I'm ready. Dude, your bread, well, your bread blew people's minds. Like, oh, <laughs> I know, really? it's such a weird flex. Brock, Brock brought it in in a bag that would look like it came from the store, and we're like, no, dude, that's just what he fucking transported in. And then yeah. Maddie McAdoo was like, she, she likes to cook She's, bread. So I, I, I stumped like, Maddie bad because yeah. I gave her the whole yeah, recipe, dude. and she couldn't match it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she also, told me she's like, <laughs> Shanti, I can't go with Cowie too much because me and the 21 don't exactly gel. You know? Why? <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't like me. Phil's trying to work on it. Phil, how's yeah. that going? Yeah, uh, yeah. J.A., he's, he's his own character. Hey, hey, uh, <laughs> is he we, calling I in tonight? Like, or? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We, I, I've been surprised. Like, right from the get-go, me and him had a, a super great relationship. He's he, I, I love that dude a lot, actually. But yeah, I get I along with, with him, good. With him. He doesn't like I'm me. I'm going to hang out with him when I get to Charlotte. He's in Charlotte right now. Obviously, riding with Phil and stuff, yeah. so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like we've always hung out after hours and gotten uh, along really well. Uh, and he, he had some cool things to say before the weekend was over. So I had to, uh, I had to try. I'm getting Phil to work on him and it's, it ain't working, but, uh, we're trying. Yeah. yeah. Striking maybe out. Maybe it's just you, Steve. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's just you. No, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Well, if you like yeah. beer, let me know, Shantan. We can meet up and have a beer. Charlotte's got a lot of badass little breweries. So. That's what I hear. Yep. yep. I love beer. So yeah, yeah let's do it. Thanks, awesome. Shanty. Good luck, man. Keep in touch, buddy. All Thank right, you. Guys. All right, appreciate it. Uh, that's Justin Shanty, everybody. Brought to you by folks at Renegade Race Fuels. Uh, uh, by the way, Verb Moto guys are putting on the World Mini this weekend in Mesquite. I'll be there Friday. Are you racing? No. Come on. I'm not Dude, racing. What? But the World Mini is going to Mesquite this weekend. So uh, Verb Moto slash the, or verbmotos.com forward slash World Mini for more details in the pre-register. Pulp 20 code to save with Maxima and Pro Filter as well. Thank you, Maxima and Pro Filter. Love these guys. Uh, whether you want an oil filter, air filter, whatever it is, uh, or of course uh, SC1 uh, transmission oil, all of it. Pulp 20 at Maxima and Pro Filter. Thank you to those guys for coming on board. You know who uses the the code? Text me, uh, Andrew Shorts. Like, dude, you're saving me so much money on oil. <laughs> Come on, you're yeah, joking. I'm not. You can't get free. You oil. can't get free oil. And oh, by the way, uh, while we were talking to Shanty, Osborne says. Did Eli say something over about our Twitter exchange? <laughs> Why is Zach still up right now? I don't now? know. He dude. must have. Yeah, he's paranoid. He <laughs> can't sleep he can't now. Sleep, yeah. Yeah, he'll be up all night. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So thanks to thanks to Shanty for coming on. Eli Tomac, of course. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, and uh, Shanty, good luck for for his next uh, departure or whatever he's going to do there. Um, is that uh, so? That's you're at JGO every day, like. Do you, do you even know like you're you're working on your, the motors with the JGR guys in JGR? Is that how it goes? Like they're dynoing the motors and yeah, the dyno area is in a different spot. Okay. You know, so he's actually going to be an engine guy for TRD. Is that yeah. what he's basically said? Yeah. 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 So they have their own little section in in the cup shop. Okay. You know, um, yeah, all the engine dynos, and that's where we used to have our well, yeah, the motocross team had their engine dyno, so it's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Having, YZ450 engine next to a TRD engine. Really? So it's kind of. I, yeah. I was blown away when I when Coy gave me the tour. Yeah. It was the fucking best tour ever because he opened every door and said, "That guy's an idiot." And then he said, <laughs> "Hey, this is my buddy. He thinks he's a journalist. He's a moron." That's how every introduction went. Yes. But yes. they had a motor on the dyno, and they're running through Michigan. Mm-hmm. And they, yeah, they're running. It's, crazy. it's they going. Run it. It's picking up the revs. It's dropping for the turns. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I'm just like, what? Yeah, like they're running. Yeah they, like, yeah, they can do that with suspension dynos and everything with the car. It's it's wild. Nuts, man! It like, wild. imagine just being like, "Hey, this is Unadilla." Mm-hmm. Arr, yeah. Arr, yeah. You know? Well, they they try. I mean, I was actually just talking to the KTM guys this weekend about it because they had Dad on Sexton's bike about you know for suspension and whatnot. But yeah. like, to be able to have someone to be able to read the suspension data from a motocross bike is you have to be a pretty intelligent dude because yeah. of the velocity and the dampening and the speeds. Like yeah. NASCAR is working with a 
two inch window yep. you know what i mean yep. and then when they see the numbers from a motocross supercross bike they're fucking like blown away yeah, these yeah. engineers like they can't really, even, yeah, yeah they can't yeah. even comprehend like yeah that how happens. much it moves and how the much of that and, moves and yeah. the speeds and the velocity yeah it's it's wild wow. so That's to cool. be able to decipher that data if we can actually really have somebody to do that yeah pretty smart uh let's get anthony in here shall we yeah let's, let's, get let's, let's do in. that uh anthony ladowski lewandowski lewandowski he is uh your mechanic at the, uh, the gizmo Lewandowski. mods rock river yamaha yep x brand team <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 that's what it is um yeah. we got dave online too uh dave what's up man how are you dave you there oh yeah hey how's it going what's up bud uh, so, uh, yeah, I wonder if I could get a breakdown of how things went with the moto betting. Uh, betonline.ag, yeah. Um, as far as a breakdown, like, what do you, you want to know what, like... Like, um, how, how it pay out, um, uh, how did it, uh, it go with the, like, Marks, how the results went? Marks, we don't know any of that. We don't know how the results went for Bet Online. For what now? Well, Dave was asking how the bet online dot thing because now you can bet on Supercross with betonline.ag. Go through Pulp Mex Fantasy to get a to to get right to the link. But Dave was asking like, how did it go? I, I don't know if we really know. I know uh, I saw Swap Moto guy uh, Chase Curtis bet money on Coop to win Seattle and k- crushed it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was curious about. Yeah, I, saw, I saw a few people tweet that they that they won. They you know made some money. I had a um. Someone texted me about they placed a win bet and a podium bet, and she got them both right. Yeah. Um, I mean, other so, than that, Dave, we don't really know. Like, yeah, we don't get figures like that way, you know? Um, yeah, I, we have no idea how that stuff – unless people tell us, we don't know. So Yeah. But it seems like some people are, are definitely killing Are it. you surprised, Marks, at how much they are um, moving the lines? Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause it's based on what who's betting, right? They're like, oh, lots of action. Let's adjust the lines. Mm. I have no idea about uh, yeah, betting. But so. I'm assuming th- – this is just me, and, yeah. and I, I might be overestimating, but I'm assuming it's automated. I don't know that, but that's what would make sense to me because if they had to be going in and manually updating them all the time for how much they're moving, that seems bonkers to me. So I would assume it's automated based on, you know, action. Uh, but they are moving quite a bit, yeah. So you got to get in – Seems like you get in a little early, you get you know better odds, and mm-hmm. they by the time qualifying comes around, they're they're pretty off from where they started earlier in the week. So yeah. if you really want to get your value, you got to get in early. Yeah, I had I had another question about it too. So um, like I live in Idaho, am I? Do you know if I can still bet online? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's 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 open to everybody in every state. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, and do you know if, um, like, Pulp Fantasy is going to be uh, open in more states where, next where, year? Well, where not in we, Idaho. Not That's, in Idaho? Okay. No, Idaho is one of five states where fantasy sports are 100% uh, outlawed. So okay. uh, you'll have to write, right. write your regulators and let them know that you want to play fantasy sports and tell them to, to quit being shitheads, basically. Hmm. Yeah, so, it totally is. Yeah. Put a damper on the, well, the year. Yeah. Well, Dave, hey, listen, if you could do us a favor, go through Pulp Fantasy, go through the link on there uh, to go to Bet Online. That would help us out. <laughs> all right, thanks. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, all right, what's up, Anthony? How are you? Good. How are you doing? Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having me. How's it been your weekend in Vegas so far? You got the arena cross with Marsh. Yeah, that was Mandalay. Uh, Mandalay yesterday. Flemings. Flemings. A lot of uh. Didn't Orleans. know he was coming to Flemings when I <laughs> when I agreed to to pay. Yeah, took him to Hoover Dam. A Hoover Dam. Hoover One Dam, of seven yeah. wonders in the United yeah. States. Right. One of seven. It's on the sign. It's on the uh, sign. It's on the sign. So yeah, quite a weekend for you. Yeah, yeah. We're on a uh, day four of our little yeah bender ba- ba- bender <laughs> no. vacation. Whatever you, you want to call it. Bender. It's not, no, it's just <laughs> true, true or false? <laughs> reset. Uh, I got you a bonus for the. Uh, I put the public pressure to get you a bonus in Daytona. Um, Arena Cross. True I'm gonna false? say fifty-fifty. Okay. Because it was there was because you your be bike was fucking trash. Oh my god. Dude. He comes up to me with a finger. You better be taking care. Of you, <laughs> you you wait. You stayed up till three a.m. Yeah. That? So finished up with Arena Cross. Daytona Friday night. Yeah. Yes. Um. You know, good night. Sort of bad night. Also, you know, podium yeah. the first moto. Yeah. The second moto didn't go great. Obviously, bike smoke and whatnot. Yep. Um. Finish up there. We got to pack. Two, three bikes, all of our stuff. Yeah. Six, eight people. In a rental truck. Into our rental truck. Go back over to the speedway. We're in our little wash bay with no lights, you know, washing the thing off at midnight because it's, you yeah. know, packed dirt. It's filthy. Yeah. 
And then we're in the stalls, you know, swapping engines until <laughs> I think I broke it in at about 3.05 a.m. You started up out there? Yeah, just riding up and down the little lane, just like, sorry, guys, like, I got to break this <laughs> yeah, thing in. Waking sleeping? up the ride, neighborhood. Ride? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather, like, I'd rather figure out if there's a problem now than, yeah. you know, in the morning. Yeah, yeah. You know, then back to the Airbnb, in bed at 4 and up at 7.30. Three hours sleep for yep. Daytona. Yeah. How bad you want it? Yeah, yep. dude, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I uh, one time I built a bike late at night, my first year, '96 uh, YZ125. Rebuilt the bike. It was midnight by the time I got it done. Started up. Woo, 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 woo. I'm, like, woo. I'm just like, oh my god. Well, the bearings were spinning in the cases back then, two-stroke days, and mm-hmm. so I had bearing lo- Loctite bearing uh, Loctite, which is green. And I put it on the bearing, and I put too much in. And when I dropped it in the case, it went into the rollers. Oh, Do you know what I mean? Like Ricky. squeezed out into the rollers, locked the rollers up. Oh. Split the I, four in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> I was there till four in the morning. Yeah. Same thing. I was like, okay, great. Well, so. and did all this work? They get through qualifying all to get to the heat race, and his rider Larry right. loops all it right. off the starting <laughs> gate. <laughs> and oh and then he's probably like, I just fucking busted my balls. <laughs> Got zero <laughs> night of sleep for my fucking dude to loop it off the start no, I gate. I did get a pet talk that night because I rode like <laughs> ass all day. And then it, You pulled it together. Yeah, well, yeah. You pulled it together. Our, t- our team manager, Bobby, came up and goes, we didn't work till four in the morning for nothing. And it kind of just reset me. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's go. <laughs> so you've been a mechanic for how long? Uh, this is year seven, I believe. Okay. Yeah. You you liking it? You you mean you're yeah. you're in? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, how old are you? Uh, twenty nine. I'll be thirty okay. in three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Na- so, Nashville around. Yeah. So you know we'll nice we'll keep the party going. Though. Nice. I mean, eventually, yeah. Yeah. You want to be factory guy, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean that's, that's, that's the main the, goal. That's the goal, right? Um, you know, I've had a couple moments where I'm like, man, what am I doing? Oh you know, yeah, that's that's um, normal. Phil has those moments know. every Saturday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like I could Trust be me. making more money somewhere else or this or that, but you know. I've invested a lot of time and effort and sacrificed friendships, relationships, you know, yeah. figured I made it this far. I might as yeah. well, you know, see it through. And, yeah. you know, if it never happens, it never happens. But obviously that's the main goal. Yeah, for sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. You keep your head down. You work hard. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you guys seem like you like each other and like it's going well. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good know? duo. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and you're listening to the show, too. Right. Yep. Listen that's to actually how I kind of decided to be a mechanic. Um, God, listen to me. Can you yeah, watch? yeah. No. Jesus. <laughs> what a <laughs> shitty <is> fucking <laughs> reference. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I was, uh, you know, going to school, not really loving life. Hated yeah. school, didn't really want to be there, but didn't really know what else to do with my life. And I had, you know, I was a late bloomer. I didn't ride a dirt bike until I was almost 18 years yeah. old. You know, started riding, got into racing, just local C class. I was terrible, but, you know, I had probably the most fun out of anyone out there so i'm surprised you're from illinois i'm, I'm surprised he didn't start off with sexton and i battled a lot yeah. you know? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he was i mean he was on a super mini when i first came around so yeah but uh no yeah just knew i liked dirt bikes and you know yeah couldn't knew i never, would never make it as a pro if i no matter how hard i tried and yeah. figured a mechanic was you know the next best thing and right. you know heard about it through the show and you know one thing led to another got an opportunity with a local team and it you know it worked out i hope i hope i didn't like uh uh disenfranchise you when i was like saying fucking mechanics dude it's oh no I, the only the only buddy that has it worse is flaggers <laughs> but yeah. you know mechanics are just yeah i wouldn't want their job right but um yeah i mean look it's 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 so cool i tell people all the time like i could never do what i do now without have been the mechanic for right. as long as i did like you that's the foundation of work and connections and you know mm. if you can't race like these two idiots mm. well, you know yeah the next yeah. best thing is being a mechanic. Yeah, so. it's like I don't want to like right. being at the races. Like I don't want to jump those jumps. Like yeah. I'll tell them that hey, you got to jump this jump, but I'm not. Doing I love it. the people that wouldn't hit it, but they tell you you go hit that fucking yeah. thing. Uh, I told Red Dog one time about in Vancouver World Supercross. I told Red Dog you got to jump onto that table. He said he threw me the you fucking jump it. I'm like oh boy, things got things got real. Now we're talking shit on the great Tim Ferry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, before we get too far into this, by the everybody, LCQ raffle tickets available for the race in Denver. And uh, we got a real exciting format. I told mm-hmm. you guys about it today, mm-hmm. about what we're going to do. So that's going to sw- change things up mm-hmm. a little bit. Uh, LCQ tickets available at uh, pulpmex.com. And, uh, yeah, Denver. We're going to do the race Friday night in Denver. So please check it out. And you got a chance to win a 2024 Yamaha YZ450. Uh, Mar- Marsh, uh, you got, your team's doing some sort of Mar- March Madness bracket? Yeah, that we're sounds doing a – Team's doing a March Madness bracket, 32 riders for the 450 class for the final five rounds. It helps out our team a lot. It's uh, $10 – entry and okay. you just fill out the bracket and yeah. you know process of elimination by the end of it and, and i'd appreciate it yeah where do you go for that uh just check out the rock river instagram page there's a link in it 
Okay. All right. Yeah. Check that out. And it was ten bucks. Yep. Ten and bucks. It was, and it's like who beats who? That all yep. the way to the end. Yep. All oh. the way to the end. It's kind of neat. And then the winner gets the money. That's it. I mean, uh, okay. All right. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, check that out on Rock River Instagram page as well for March Madness for their own form of March Madness. We got the motorsport.com tweet at Talon segment coming up as well. But I did want to talk a little bit more Supercross um, because, dude, your guy and your guy, Coop, eight mm. points now. Yeah, that dog. Dude, this is like if he's probably doing this, right? I mean, look, he got some help. Penalty and, and Barsha. It's impressive. It's he impressive. got help. And like we made jokes in Seattle about what stopped Jet was a, a crash, a stall, and a lapper. <laughs> he, mm-hmm. he still almost won. Mm-hmm. Jet's been the best guy. Let's not yeah, yeah, no, exactly. let's not, you know um, But it goes both ways. Dude, like Jet got help when Coop smoked Cade. Yeah. You know, yeah. got a couple points pretty easily. Yeah. So um I just this is a yeah. Cooper Webb appreciation here. The, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Like you said, he's the dog. Always there. Eight always points. There. Like every year he's always within striking distance. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Yeah. How? <laughs> well, I mean Dallas he ate he ate shit and Nashville he ate shit. Dragons back. I know what you I know No, what you no, mean. but like yeah. up until that point, yeah, like he's always like he's right there. there. Right, yeah. Right. He's always within striking distance. Yeah. You yeah. Know? No, so. I think it's I think it's a little um you know, I still think Jet's the best guy, and I think Jet's going to yeah, win. Yeah. And, and, and Coop will say that Jet Jet's got phenomenal speed. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like they're not delusional of this. It, this is know? the stuff. Like JT was mentioning in our review show. You know, if you're in a football game and you let a a, a team that you're better than just kind of hang around and hang mm-hmm. around, mm-hmm. you never know, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I think, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just don't get it. He, you you're, know? you're friends with Coop and you're a Jets and Donut athlete. This is a real tough. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta watch what he says. Right, right. <laughs> no, there. If I can't have either one of the, you know, I want one of those guys to win. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. So it's kind of uh, for me. I'm kind of stuck in the middle a little yeah. bit. But uh, they're both phenomenal athletes. Both really good people. So, um, yeah, you kind of get torn with certain things. But to see it at eight points, um, you know. Yeah. I'm. Happy Coop's close, but I'm bummed Jet got smoked by Barsha. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm yeah. fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, all right, moving on to Sexton. I'll ask you, Marsh. One win in the mud. Um, he's third in the points. Is this – we did the blame pie with Barsha and, uh, and Jet earlier. What's the percent of the bike and what's the percent of Sexton? Just not the same guy. He hasn't qualified fastest, right? He just – Hasn't had the same spark. So, like, obviously, you don't know. You're just bench racing. Yeah. But, like, in your mind, what what's your what's your percent at? The uh, bike versus him? I think just comparing to the previous years, you know, he was a better, you know, had better results and I think was a better rider on that. So, I'd have to say it's it's at least 65, 70% bike right now. Yeah. That's, that's holding them back. And it seems like they've been making a lot of really good changes in that direction. But yeah. there's just there's not enough time during the week to, to make the – necessary changes to mm-hmm. you know make it completely right but i wouldn't count them out yet phil where are you at with sex in versus the bike um <coughs> okay or just cough into the mic yeah sorry i don't it's me trying to blow it off actually i don't <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think it's you know it's no secret that chase you know is struggling with the bike you know yeah. obviously they're going no he said on the show last yeah, week yeah he they're said, going uh, kyb route yeah. and this and that and trying all sorts of thing and you know says the bike is you know the bike's super stiff and um you know the austrian brand has always been within a certain box and never wanted to go outside of that um, but i feel that's different that that, that is bit. changing yeah. but i don't know if that is changing at a rapid enough rate to catch up to where he was last year you know, yeah, he said um, on the show that he miss he uh, miss uh, he's underestimated the the difference between going from aluminum to steel frame. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I I don't know. I I go back to Seattle in the heat race, Jet and AP. When Jet passed AP in the whoops, AP had a phenomenal run, and Jet bobbled coming into the whoops, and still Jet somehow managed to find traction, and the bike gripped and came back and still passed ap yeah you know there's something different with the bike that they haven't figured out to where the other manufacturers have yeah. in the whoops well you know? i think going to the 48s tells me that this new frame is stiffer which coop was 
complaining about. Mm-hmm. And they, 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 it went to 48s, more flex. I've heard from testing that the KTM steel frame is stiffer than aluminum. Mm-hmm. You know what they've done to it. Uh, I just see I, – I mean, it looks like they're getting the front figured out, but it seems like the rear still has, like, that reaction that it's, like, too quick. And when they're getting a that quick of a reaction, I think it, it holds them back from – really like reaching their true potential Be- even if the trusting bike it, yeah, yeah just trusting it because it just seems like it gets either a, a vertical twitch or side to side and when you feel that as a racer it mentally just takes you down 10 percent. yeah because you're just like you can't you're like oh something's happening or or you come into a turn and you're like this is where yeah, something it's like happen. something weird right, right yeah and i think chase can make the bike look good just because he's an unreal rider yeah you know so he hides a little bit of the issues but I don't know. Maybe they need to hire. You know, they got their WP employees. Maybe they need to look outside a WP employee to come in and mm-hmm. change uh, something. Anthony, you know? where are you at? What's what's your percent? Um, seventy thirty bike. Yeah. Um, and I think an aspect too is because he's not as comfortable on the bike. You know. Yeah. We saw a lot of tucking the front and crashes, but we also saw a lot more speed last year. Yeah. So I think he's knowing that he's not comfortable with the bike. He's kind of taking it easy. Like, if yeah. he's feeling good, he'll push it. But if he's not, like, he'll take a, a second, a third, a fourth to just stay yeah. in it for the long haul. You know, I think he didn't want any part of the Lawrences at Honda. Yeah, I think he a didn't lot. want I'm that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and he made that KTM deal early before mm-hmm. he even won the Supercross title. You'd never get him to admit it, but I wonder if he had some true serum in him. If he was like, ah, but probably could have put up with the Lawrences. And it wasn't anything bad. He just he wanted to be the guy. Mm-hmm. That's what these guys are like. Yeah, it wasn't I think like it, any guy in his position who is a championship contender like that. It's like yeah, you have to be. You yeah, can't you can't you don't leave that in. You know, well, I don't know. I disagree a little bit because in the eighties and the nineties, and even you know, in, well, I guess you could like compare Eli and Coop. I mean, they're both. Two yeah, I think they're just older now. Yeah. Though, maybe, but mm-hmm. it used to be guys didn't care. Like, hey, I got another great guy next to me. I don't care. Mm-hmm. But well, I don't know, kids these days. You kids, it's not. Yeah, it's a different headspace than yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hey, speaking of Marsh, uh, your season, I mentioned earlier, 12th in points. Um, mm. You and Henry Miller, I feel like, have been two guys been really uh, We're doing well. We're stuck like glue. Yeah, and, and maybe not getting you know kind of the press that you guys deserve because there's factory guys all around you. Uh, but it's been a good good season for you so far. Yeah, and yeah. you know, me and me and Henry actually share the same suspension guy. I've been working with Clint Stapes out of Marietta, so okay. I feel like that's a good, solid contribution to both of our programs. Uh, I switched up to that this year, and it's been – it's been great making progress a, every yeah, has week. Has that been a big, big help? I think that's been a yeah. big part of it. Yeah. Yep. And how do you like the Rock River team? I know it's a, you know you're kind of on your own for some expenses, and they bring the bikes around. Like, how is that working for you? Like, is that? I mean, obviously you'd love to be. Don't get me wrong, factory salary. Ideally, yeah. Um, but I think yeah, as far is it as a good program, yeah. Comparing it to previous years and you know, other programs I've been on, I'm really happy every weekend. Everybody's got a great attitude, mm-hmm. works super hard, and we get we all get along. So yep. it's nice showing up in that mindset. We're just you know we're there to to do good and work hard, and it's just it's it's been a great atmosphere. And and hard dog just just injuries like he just he's yeah you can tell he's grinding yeah he, he's been in his mode he's, he's been quiet when it's just you can tell he's he's trying he's, to figure it out. Yeah, I just look. You know what sucks is he went there for Puerto Rico, Guam. What do you do? Which, which Guam. was it? Guam. 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 Yeah. He went there for Guam. Dylan Wright. Your Dylan guy, Wright. My guy cleaned him out. <laughs> my guy Your cleaned guy. him out. He was national number 23. He had a fucking crushed it last year. Mm. And, you feel so, and that's a big injury, and you feel bad for the guy. For sure. He can't get it back, you know? And it's, I, it's I a mean, while. he's still it's fresh. fresh. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so back. fresh. And yep. jumping in midseason into the 450 class, it's, yeah. like, it's like when it's hard to expect much. It's like when Dingle Nuts here jumped into outdoors. Like, it's hard, man. No, it's hard. If you like, want to come back and be a top 10 guy, yeah, to, like, you think it's just like it's – it's a fucking grind. Yeah. You know, to get, it's just missing that, like, uh, either the building blocks or whatever, however you want to put it, where yeah. you start mm-hmm. down here and you're, and it's, you've been there too, like, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so no chance, Welton, no chance you're going to Canada for the summer. Zero. Hot dog vendor is looking. <laughs> He's trying to find a guy. <laughs> I'm locked in. I'm doing, I've already, I got Anthony. Yeah. He's a big asset. So I'll bring him to Canada. <laughs> That's a double sell. Uh, okay. I I don't know. I think it's I not think looking good. I t- I've talked. To, I think you should go. But yeah. KT is awesome, and if that would yeah. go right for any team in Canada, it'd be for it'd be yeah, for KT right. hands down. There's no, it's not nothing he, to do with that. It's yeah. just I I really he, enjoy racing. In he's the States. trying to hire you. He's trying to hire Shock. He's trying to hire uh, what's his nuts? Uh, the Estonian Her- Coolis. Yeah, Harry's a badass. He's, Harry is a badass. He's Harry's trying to he's good. trying to hire Brees. He's trying to hire. Yeah, I mean. 
He's just got a contract. He's just like, <laughs> who, wants, who wants the ride? <laughs> so I feel bad for him. That's a good team. So yeah. yeah, no, I agree. I just uh, yeah, the coolest would actually probably be the best one because then Harry could come down and do some stuff in the states as yeah. well a little bit. But what about what about Shock? I kind of thought Shock would be because yeah, I mean I don't know. I'm sure Cody's holding out trying to do a club deal. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean so whatever if. If I mean, I told Cody this. Like, he's obviously hoping for an injury. That's mm-hmm. how he gets in, mm-hmm. and it sucks because mm-hmm. you don't ever want a rider to get hurt. But it's also motocross; people mm-hmm. get hurt. That's just the reality. Of yeah, it. yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of what he's doing, right? Yeah, he's I mean, gambling I gambling yeah, on that. Yeah, I, yeah, I get it. You know, oh, just... Mike B loves him. Yeah, Mike B loves him. We gotta yeah. squeeze him in there. He's the somewhere. next, he's the next great, great white hope. <laughs> you know, so which is good. I mean, he's been riding good, and yeah, yeah he took no. the opportunity and he's, did a good job. He's you know, really riding so. well for sure. And uh, uh, you know, from a guy that got kind of fucked by Phoenix, you know, it was like a late fire. Yeah, game. that's I don't like that. No, that, that really talk about an agent yeah, and contracts and all prime that. Right situation. Yeah, like, that really pisses me off. Yeah. And I told Cody that I'm like, dude, I don't. Yeah, you know, so but that's just teams; it's, they don't give a fuck. You yeah, know, so yeah, uh, but that gets overlooked, you know. Just oh no, it's whatever. It's like wait, what? well, not on this show because I've mentioned it. Yeah, I've no, mentioned I it a bunch. I'm like, hey, he got fucked. You yeah. know that that's not cool. Yeah, uh, Enrique's on three. He, or he's uh, he's down in Mexico. What's up, Enrique? What's up, Steve? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, buddy. Man, I've called you so many times. I always claim the Tijuana fan base president. I've turned so many people onto your reasonable nice. show. Thank you. I, Thank yeah, you. and I've never won a prize, FYI. Oh not, boy! Not do you want? Do you want? Not that do, I'm asking for anything. Do you want some? Do you want some FXR cookie. stuff? Dude, if if you have like a fly like gear bag, that'd be sick. Ugh, I don't have a. Fly what do you need a fly bag? beer gear bag for? Uh, I don't know to travel. <laughs> All right. Uh, wait. Do you do you want do you want like a a, a carry on bag or like a gear bag for Moto Gear or what are you talking? Nah, carry on bag will do. All right, I'll give you one. Ah, I'll give man. you. A, I'll give you a Pulpamex OGO carry on bag. We're not paying. Hey, for, we're I've not paying for anything. People onto your erasables to earn something. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, do I got to ship this thing to Tijuana? Yeah, international. No, shipping. no, no, no. I live in San Diego. Okay, I'm shipping it there. All right. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, do they still have those donkey shows in Tijuana? Oh my god, dude! You know what, dude? I think I honestly believe I grew up in Tijuana till yep. I was twenty years old. Okay, my father was the captain of the police department uh, for Tijuana. I swear to God, I've never seen one, but I keep hearing about them. They're what? there, man. What's a donkey oh, show? Oh, you don't oh, want to know. know. Yeah, you don't want to <laughs> know. Okay. That's exactly what you think. You it don't want to know. Yeah, your dad was the the, the sheriff. He was the captain of the, of the Tijuana dude, police department. Dude, your dad has you seen. Don't even want to your Google dad it. has don't seen Google some it. You're shit. Regret it. Oh, he has. Yeah, 27, 27 years. Uh, Twenty seven years. Can you in just the, look in up the Hong, Hong Kong donkey. Can show. you imagine? Oh what... no, no, I know Hong Kong. I know Hong Kong. <laughs> Can you imagine what Enrique's dad like had to deal with, like in Tijuana as a? Jeez. Yeah. Wow. Back in the nineties. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Back they in got the nineties. Don- the Wikipedia Shut tells up, you what a donkey show is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's... Might be exactly why he's never told me any stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm yeah. saying I've just I've heard it through the grapevine. I just can't believe oh. it's real. But there's just so many people that tell oh, me about yeah. it. It's no, like how no, can no, it people, not be real? People, I live in San Diego. Oh, for a while. It, it, it's got to be real. For as many stories as you hear, it's got to be real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What else, man? What's else? What else is on your mind? Okay. Okay, Steve. So my question is, uh, uh, this is for any of you. Give me three riders. Uh, I, you know, I'm 38 years old. I grew up in you know I, I followed uh, Supercross and motocross in the early two, you know late 90s, early 2000s. I saw all these racers dropping down from the 450s to 250s, kind of, kind of to reinvent. Yeah, Phil their, did that. Uh, their career. Yeah, Phil did it. Give me three riders that you would pick right now, or maybe even, uh, you know, maybe even that that are out of the scene that you would say drop down, kind of to reinvent your your career, or maybe make an impact and making mm. it make it excited in the 250 250 class. Dude, what about Barsha? Class. What about Barsha right now going down to 250s? Shit. Right? I mean, I don't know. You think Barsha beats Kitchen on a 250 right now? No. No. But he would make it exciting. He would make it exciting. <laughs> It'd be fun. He would. The, the main reason for my question is I heard Shanti say about um, Sabachi dropping down to the 250. So that got me thinking what other writers would make it, would make that 250 class what do you got? really what do you, exciting. What do you got, Anthony? Uh, first one that comes to mind would be Bogle. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, uh, Phil? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I say Barsha. 
I'd like to see Kenny. Kenny? Yeah. <laughs> I think Kenny would be pretty sick on a 2 for DF. Yeah. I mean, I think Kenny would be sick on yeah. anything, but yeah. 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 I think Christian Craig we, needs to get back down. Oh, yeah. Listen, Craig could need a ride. Yeah, he needs to get there's back. A, there's a possibility, right? <laughs> Yeah, Craig yeah. on a Star 250 Yamaha. That's pretty incredible. I, uh, dude, yeah, that was pretty amazing to watch. So, all right. That was yeah. amazing to watch. But, I mean, he, uh, Kenny ain't going to drop down. He's too established in the 450s. Well, you didn't say Craig, there was any rules. You yeah, just, yeah, you, you just said, you said any, three, anybody. Three, you said anybody. Three you solid riders. We did. Craig, Barsha, and Bogle. Oh, come on. Bogle is kind of like – Bogle is too far Put some gone. respect on the name. Come on. Let me talk about reinventing. Like, he was a – I thought he was a – you know, he's a champion 250 rider. He innovated style. Yeah. He, and I don't he, know. I feel like he rode a 250 well. He rode a 450 well, too, yeah, but – He's a champ. He cool. just – we never got to see 250 Bogle on a 450, I feel right. like. I mean, uh, we had Lamson. We had Ward in the, in, in back in those days. You know, those were, those were legends back in the day. Drop I, down to the 250. I think – Craig is a great pick. It's a great pick, Enrique. Mm -hmm. If you argue right. with me anymore, I'm not giving you your pick. <laughs> hey, fair enough. I'm not arguing no more. <laughs> okay. All right. Stay on hold, all right? We'll get you the information. Hey. All right, Mathis. Have a great show. All right. Thank you, buddy. And thanks for recommending Reraceables. Appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Absolutely. Hey, you, you, hey one, more, one more thing. Yeah. Uh, we got to hear the 2001 San Diego race. Carmichael beating McGrath for the first time. Yeah. I'm still waiting on that one. All right. We'll get that one done. <laughs> uh, all right, Steve. Thank Thanks you. So much. Appreciate it. All right, Enrique. President of the uh, Tijuana Pulp Mix. Donkey shows. Fan <laughs> club. It's fantastic. Is that, what, is that what donkey show? Is that what that is? Yeah, don that's called a donkey show. show. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to get his address and send him a OGO uh, Pulp Mix carry-on. So, um, all right. Uh, oh, factory chassis parts. Thank you to those guys. These are what you use, Marsh, on your bike. Working on it, yep. Uh, discount code pulpmex chassis. Kiefer talked about this last week in the show as well. Uh, he thinks the Yamaha 450 greatly benefits from motor mounts. I've got some now, so I'm going to yep, try them. Special delivery. Do some testing. Maybe this weekend in Mesquite. <laughs> do some testing. I thought you weren't racing. I'm going to ride. Oh. I'm not racing, though. I'm just going to ride. I thought it was like a race. Like, it is. just going to open up the track for I'm you for like a special No, like, I'm literally going to just let everybody go and race. Oh, so you are Dude, racing. There's no. there's only plus 30. There's nothing older. Really? Fuck verb. They don't like old men. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to try the factory chassis mounts this weekend. Pulp Mex Dash chassis. You look at uh, Phoenix Honda, a Starling, Rock River Yamaha, uh, and uh, Mad Parts Kawasaki. CNC machine parts out of high-quality aluminum and titanium. Easy to install and drastic improvements right away. Designed to improve traction, handling, cornering, and feel. Factory chassis parts, FCP. Anthony, you ever use FCP stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much every team I've been on. Oh, yeah? Last, for the uh, last four or five years yeah okay so you've seen positive results from it thank oh, you yeah. thank you to those guys for coming on board lift the trucks for sale.com your one-stop shop for premium brand new custom trucks each vehicle on the search engine features premium components easily financeable through the local dealership and best of all retains the factory warranty skip the hassles of do-it-yourself customization like waiting for parts poor ride quality and more elevate your own journey at lifted trucks for sale.com uh, all in stock and available at your preferred local dealer so that's pretty cool from those guys um all right let's uh Let's do the motorsport.com tweet at Talon segment. Motorsport.com. Go through the banner on pulpmex.com to help us out. Motorsport.com tweet at Talon. <laughs> no, that's my mom. It's the motorsport.com tweets at Talon segment. No. Great, uh, great customer service over there. Some, some dedicated gearheads, some not. We just uh, have a batch of new gearheads hitting the floor this week. So, Oh, what do you mean? We have we just hired new people. Oh, he's a, he's Busy a gearhead at motorsport.com. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. So if you really, yeah. So I mean, I motorsports a personal sponsor of Phil Nicoletti. Yep, great people. And Mr. Scott and Bryce take care of me. They do, and uh, thanks to me also. And yes, and also, huh? Same. They help help me out. A little oh, bit. they do. Yeah. Oh, who knew? Yeah. Oh, did that happen? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> what I need, I, I put a word in for, for Marsh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I didn't know it. I didn't know the deal ever got done. Yeah. So <laughs> motorsport.com helping out everybody, uh, uh, and uh, great prices. Oh yeah, my aftermarket parts. I have a new project bike. Fuck my life. I decided to do another project bike, <laughs> and I will be ordering parts through motorsport.com for that. Um, wait, wait, Randy wants to give props to mechanics, so he probably means me, not Anthony. What's up, Randy? Hey, yeah, I was just gonna say thanks for. Uh, 
appreciating the the techs, the mechanics, the tuners, and everything like well, that. Dude, I Just, was one. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's like yeah, yeah. I mean, the riders, the drivers, they get all the glory. Mm-hmm. We get there three days early. We stay there all through the night while they go off to the hotel room. Yep. Yeah. Granted, they have to rest and be <clears throat> whatever, but I mean. I just, I think it's great, you know, like guys like Shanty and, and bringing in Ollie and all those guys that you brought in and Gilly and that kind of really like, I don't think everybody really understands what happens behind the scenes. I mean, it's so much work. It is. You know, these guys are doing 12, 16 hour days, you know. Yeah. No, I agree. Guys. And, and yeah. I mean, Anthony just took us through his Daytona weekend, <laughs> right? Like. Sometimes, yeah. like, I remember working and my knuckles and fingers were so sore from pulling the wrenches and just, like, my wrists were sore. I was like, I'm just working on these fucking bikes so much, you know. Um, Cuts and brake clean and everything in yeah. it. It's just, you know, all yeah. the goods. We yeah. never get the glory. I appreciate you kind of bringing the guys in and kind all of right. pumping them up. No problem, Randy. Thanks for the call. I'll always yep. try to do that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And also, Was that the greatest mechanic? No. Also, as my mechanic, Anthony... Mm-hmm. I did my motors. I did tires on the race weekend. Did a tire for Marshall Arena Cross. Oh, so, so fucking <laughs> alert the media. <laughs> Fuck. Hey. I did all my tires. <laughs> like, Doug, Yamaha's policy was you change your own tires. Mm-hmm. So, like, okay, mooses we didn't do. But all in Supercrosses, everything else, we're doing our tires. We did all our motors. Back on there, men. Split the cases, you know, the whole thing. uh, Ground the valves, you know, the seats, everything. Back in my day, (laughs) I walked back in the nineties to school both fucking ways, and can I get some credit here? (laughs) (laughs) No, I I agree. I agree. Uh, There's uh, enough going on right now, you know. All right, these questions are submitted to at Paul Bemex Show on Twitter. Or X, I guess I should say. Eli called it X earlier. It was like, oh, yeah, everyone he's says, up with it. Yeah, he's, everyone says Twitter, but he, he must be a silent stock with it. Right? He yeah. is scrolling. Too. Now I'm gonna go through my tweets and be like, what the fuck did I say about Tomac? <laughs> 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 I don't want to be Zach Osborne. Uh, so uh, these questions just submitted at Fault Mech Show, and uh, the guy in the corner there picks the best ones. All right, uh, voice of the drunken people for Phil. Who's the single biggest dumb dick in the sport? Ooh. Oh, I know. I just I uh, eat. <laughs> text me. Text text me, Marsh. <laughs> I, I gotta know who. who. I just it's like an easy one. Oh, like, I think I know. Yeah, I thought he was know. just gonna say oh, Steve, but yeah. no, no, no. I think I know. Uh, it can't be said on air. Or troll. I figured he would just pick one of his buddies. Uh do do you do you um. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not going there. But um, <laughs> do you like all the media? Like, or do, do some media people bug you? Like, some media people bug. They me. do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you are like as grouchy as you are. You are. You do interviews. You're. You're fine to talk to people, right? All mm-hmm. that. Like, obviously, you and I are personal friends. But yeah. like, I yeah. wonder if some media, yeah, bugs you. Yeah. Some. Some do. Okay. I'm not gonna blow them out. Right. But okay. But you're also not gonna blow who the biggest dumb dick is. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Marshall? <laughs> we'll I'm go with Marshall. I'm, I'm on the list for sure. I've had some meme. I've. <laughs> yeah. I've lit Marsh up a lot throughout the years with some shit, but. You, you, we, yeah. But, nah. Uh, you were mad. You told us a story about Brayton. You and Brayton weren't best of friends mm. for a little bit. No, me? Yeah, I, I thought you said that. You you said you and Brayton, the JGR days. No, I, well, JB and I got into it. Sent yeah. My first fill-in race for JGR, yeah. me and JB got into it in the semi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I pulled a whole shot, and then I crashed, <laughs> and then kind of took him down a little bit. And he's like, dude, you got to watch what you're doing and use your head and this and that. And <laughs> oh, I boy. And I'm like, dude, that's a fuck. <laughs> that ain't going to go fuck well. Fuck you. You got to use know? your head, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was, it was not dialed. That's know? like saying to Oldenburg, you got to use your head. Like, yeah. Oldenburg's like, what the fuck, man? I'm yeah. racing. Like, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Olden- oh, by the way, Oldenburg told me he – after he, he made me laugh when he asked about when he told me Mookie said did I hit you, he also said that he never did that triple all day long until he was up in the star. He's like, well, here I go. Hey, oh, is that he just brain fed, bro? He cased the fuck. I know, <laughs> but I dude. that's another case of like fuck my life for being yeah. a Supercross racer. You're mm-hmm. like, oh well, mm-hmm. here can't I look, can't look at the track. <laughs> oh, okay, but Oldenburg said, oh yeah, it's easier to jump the rhythms on the 450. Yeah, he did, and he just frame cased <laughs> the rhythm. <laughs> I should have brought that up. <laughs> I should have brought that up. Hey, you just said it's easier to yeah. jump shit on a four fifty. Hey, Holmberg, I thought it was fine. You haven't come up that short on something in years on a two fifty. <laughs> that <laughs> I'm actually gonna text him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, I don't okay. think they get a blowjob before the main event. <laughs> Uncle Jim, you got a blowjob before Buffalo in '84. Got last. 
<laughs> True story. Sucked the life right yep. out of him. <laughs> True story. Low T. Yeah, low T. Uh, All right. Uh, Dylan Tent, he says oh, no. he'd like to know what Marshall is currently investing in. Specifically, what are your favorite penny stocks? That's not. We're not in the skip. Next. <laughs> Anything Marshall has told me to invest in, I've lost. Money. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh. The what, what, have, I am what have you <laughs> Nutrifarma? No. Okay. <laughs> He's like, oh, they got <laughs> there me. There it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's going up. I'm like, I uh, threw fuck a couple uh, hundred. Chris Wheeler in. gave me a hot stock tip. Fucking lost four grand. On really? It. Fuck, yeah. Thanks, dude. Wheeler. That's why I don't ride yeah. Suzuki. That's why you don't listen to your motocross, buddy. I am crushing it on Facebook, though. Really? I've I've made like thirteen grand. Really? Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Crypto is coming back around. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I got into that and out fast. Coinbase. Uh, I haven't happened. dumped it yet. I forgot I had. Um, did, Bitcoin a couple weeks ago. I just sold it for quite a bit of money. Did you really? I totally forgot, didn't I? Yeah. I said, I said, yeah. fuck. I oh, just okay. happened to forget. It's been years. Years. Well, years. I brought it up. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have your password? Kinda, you, you had I, your pa- I had to go through it all. Yeah, it was a pain. In the, I actually didn't think I was going to get in, but yeah, 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 I made some money on it. <laughs> yeah. Marks, you, you made some money on it too, right? Yeah. Oh, look at him. Just, didn't, yep. you, <laughs> didn't you say you have like lost Bitcoin just on a server somewhere I that you can't get into had a few million dogecoin on a hard drive somewhere that i can't find <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah sad that sucks sad yeah part of it uh from dirt chart marshall you must be a likable guy because your instagram photos are always filled with a ton of positive comments from people around you in the industry what advice would you give to phil <laughs> <laughs> he's the one that usually gives me the advice Dude, how about like i I just I feel bad sometimes because like honestly like I just go around the pits and we make we make fun of Phil everywhere everywhere we go, everybody makes laughs. Everyone jokes about Phil because mm. we all love him and 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 then you look at his comments on his Instagram and like everybody else in the it's like an industry who's who yeah. who just talks shit to Phil. I know. On People don't social. even know him. Right. Talk shit about right. him. <laughs> just uh, it's just like like AP and every like just everybody's just yeah in the pits. Oh, it's, it's fine. I mean, as long as I do my job, I still finish five through ten. I don't right. care. I if I was like it. barely squeaking in, yeah. you know, and I was getting worse, I'd be like, "Fuck this!" But right. the fact that I still kind of do okay, right? It doesn't bother you know. So, uh, Forkner's temper, Phil. Prior to Saturday, have you ever had to pull out early from a hose blowing? <laughs> 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 it happens. It happens. It happens. <laughs> hey, we're gonna go with Taco's famous line here. <laughs> out of nuts and out of talent. <laughs> out of nuts and out of talent. Couch pulls out. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Taco's. That's his claim to fame. Uh, from Thirsty, I'm guessing to the two racers up there. If you had to choose one track for your last race, where would it be? I didn't hear the clip. Well, no. would, like if it'll be your last track you ever race, so would it be Unadilla. Redbud. Yeah. No. Um Redbud for you, Marsh, yeah. Yeah, Michigan. Gotta right. rip the home state. I don't know. Be cool to have. let's go broom Tioga. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah let's broom. Go broom. I hated that place. My bike Start, looked, started it there, ended there. My <laughs> bike looked like it was a fucking went through a war zone. J B was bitching saying broom sucked too, but it's way better than going to Freestone and some of these other yeah, tracks it was and Muddy Creek yeah, and yeah. you know, yeah. fuck. Uh, you ever been to Byron, Illinois? Twenty minutes from my house. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. I raced the right at a qualifier there oh, yeah. way back in the day. Yeah. Byron mm-hmm. is a good track. Got a big mound in the middle of the track or something, or a big hill. They got like a drop down now. Oh. So it's okay. like you go uphill, a couple sand rollers, drop down, and then it kind of comes back up. Okay. Yeah, they've changed it a bunch yeah, yeah, the last yeah. ten years. I'm talking so. like the late eighties. Oh yeah. It's, not, <laughs> it's completely. A lot of erosion since yeah. then. Completely yeah. different it's all now. Like gone. I la- like when I raced the Loretta qualifier, it was like eighty nine. Yeah, oh yeah. No, so. I think uh, one of the. The big track guys came in in like the early 2000s. Oh, and they yeah. completely redid it. Okay. Uh, Mike Yergin says two ideas for dealing with how gnarly the tracks are getting. Uh, one, have a minimum contact patch for the tires, require the use of a more hard pack sty- style tire. And two, have a maximum diameter for the exhaust outlet. Limit the power substantially and be would be easy to measure at tech. Uh, sorry, tech inspection. I mean, it is weird that we are the. Like, F1 made rules to slow the cars down. Mm-hmm. Drag racing made co- rules to sto- slow the cars down. I believe there's ro- mo- ro- blah. I believe there's rules in MotoGP on how fast you can make the bikes. I think. Am I? Anybody know? I think there is. Yeah. I don't follow street bike racing. I don't either. And we just fucking run it. I mean, you're, you're limited by your CCs, 
but you can do anything else. I mean, in the 450 like, class, uh, I think they're already maxed. On, I don't think you can really handle much more power. You're detuning by Yeah, you got to detune. I mean, the 250, there's the restriction, but yeah. I don't. I mean, you could make a 450 of 525, and you could you wouldn't be able to right. ride it. But like, I, it is, you know, right now we can come out of the stadium and jump. We can jump out of the stadium from from a dead mm-hmm. stop. Like, let's let's we should slow the bikes down a little bit. Good. I, I mean, I'd like to see some sort of rules put in place. You know, <laughs> I'm fine with it. I already slow mine down as it is, so yeah. yeah I mean, I, I don't, I don't even look to right do that. I don't know about contact patch. Yeah, talking about that. yeah, he that lost me on that I'm one. Out. Uh, for Matty eight twenty, how much difference has Josh Hansen made to the Rockstar team bikes? Is he in a similar role to Brock Tickle in Tedesco? I have no idea. I don't know what Hanny does. I don't. I don't know either. But he still looks good doing it, though. I'm <laughs> jealous as fuck as Hanny of Hanny. Uh yeah. I don't know what Hanny's. No idea. No idea if he's. I know he's been grinding a lot though. Oh, he, he has? still yeah. rides like yeah. three, yeah. four days a week. Yeah. He's, he's silent about. He's he's on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think. Uh, but I don't know how he rides compared to Mookie right? and stuff. It's yeah. just completely different. But. Um, yeah, I don't know. You I'd think. fly the girls in from he, L.A., boy. But if he's working <laughs> with all the same guys. <laughs> if he's been working. Marsh Murray really likes the Jim Hawley <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> if, <laughs> if. What about Andy? Andy <laughs> <laughs> fuck's sake. Jim was great. We he get is him great. Back he, is, uh, he is all time. If Andy's been there for this long now. Yeah. And they haven't been able to completely reinvent the wheel of some sort, then. Yeah. They need to hire somebody. Not keep Handy because he's yeah, an awesome yeah. rider. Right. Hire other personnel to come in outside and try and fix yeah. something. You know, because you have two of the greatest whoop players ever in the game that don't like their bike in the whoops. Yep. So, I, I see it from that aspect, and since I live with Brock, it's you know I know when they test, it's a lot of times you're put in parameters of it's not necessarily like what the rider feels; it's what the team's willing to. Mm-hmm. throw at the bike so i don't know if it necessarily falls down on the test rider sometimes yeah. or if it falls down on team to what parameters they're looking to like yeah. you know work with yep hopefully one will right. whip up a titty <laughs> <laughs> uh mason racing 95 every week riders complain about nowhere to pass no matter the track layout yeah i agree what would the two racers up there what would be the ideal track layout to offer better passing yeah come on racers not even ideal track layout, but what would you implement to provide better passing? We could get rid of the 90s. Yeah, the 90s yeah. are real good. You can see, like, the switchbacks, those 180 switchbacks. I think the big bull turns, yeah, for a lot of passing most of the time. Yeah, or you I mean, can at least at, set, at, set up. Look at Barsha's pass on jet. It, yeah. was, it, was, it was clutch. Set up by the bull turns. It was, it was clutch. But, like, the 90 before the whoops this past weekend, the 90 after the whoops, no good. The 90 before the mechanics area, no passing, and then obviously Especially the 90 a flat, after the mechanics area. A flat 90. A flat 90 is so one. At least if you're going to make it a 90, give give an option to use the actual berm. I mean, maybe that's a lack of dirt. I don't know. So I on track walk, I told Ross uh, before the uh, Supercross triple, the after the switchbacks, mm-hmm. the right-hander, and you can go outside and triple or inside roll double. Mm-hmm. They had two humps there, one on the inside, one on the outside. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is going to be good. This is going to play really well. I like this. Like, I hate the obvious inside, mm-hmm. only go inside. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they put a hump there. That was good. But then they put a hump on the outside that got destroyed right away. And then 450-wise, just outside triple was just mm-hmm. the way to go. Mm-hmm. So it sort of backfired. Like, No, there are a lot of them were going inside roll, too. You think? Yeah. yeah. But what? But didn't look like triple was better? It, outside triple? It, it was, yeah. but a lot of guys... If you were ahead of the guy, like you went inside. Yeah. 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 If you're ahead of the guy, you went inside. If you're behind him, you went outside yeah. just to try and change it up to see if you can get a drive up the so triple face. So you thought face. that was good then? I thought it was yeah. good, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, from Joe27, with the East-West Showdown coming soon, give me your top five in order. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit. Uh, Kitchen, we all think Kitch is the best guy, not just because he was on the phone, right? Mm-hmm. Now that he's no. on the phone? No, no, no. no. yeah, he's the best guy. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Deegs will raise his game. Mm. Kitch, yeah. Deegs, M- McAdoo, RJVL. I don't know. That's close. I'm going to go. Uh... I mean, you know it'll be wrong in some weirdo. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Yeah. 
Uh, Kitchen, Smitty, McAdoo, Shimoda, the L. Okay, someone write these down, and yeah. we're going to get a... I need to look at like we're gonna, list or something. Every one of us is going to put in five bucks for an Amazon gift card. I'm not losing five bucks on this. I'm not bending on that shit. See, I knew he wouldn't do it. I knew he yeah, wouldn't do it. fuck that. Five bucks? Five bucks. Someone write this down. Let me see the pen. Well, no, I mean a listener. A Phil, listener. it was oh. Kitchen Smith. I know you had Vial Fifth. I got, I got the timestamp. All right. Okay. Mark's got it. All right. Okay. So now five bucks. The other people have to pay the fifteen dollar Amazon card to the winner. Okay. Marsh. I, I forget the people on the top of the East Coast right now. It's Deegan. Okay, so you're gonna lose this. Yeah. Then, if you don't remember. I mean, it, I, I'm Kitchen. I'm going P1. Um, okay. Kitchen. I think Hammer Girl will throw it in. Um, Deegan, VL, and Hampshire. Did okay. I ha- say Hampshire twice? Nope. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anthony. I'm switching VL. Sorry with Hampshire. Fifth. Okay. Uh, I'd say kitchen first, probably McAdoo second. I'm gonna put Hampshire third, um, Deegan fourth, and we'll do Vial fifth. All right. You have you have five bucks? I know you're a mechanic. Yeah. So that, yeah. So we'll just, sure you have just five take bucks. it out of the bonus <laughs> money okay. from this weekend. All right. Sounds good. Because mechanics, you know. Yeah. yeah. There's not much going around there. My first job was three hundred dollars a week, and I had to pay for food and hotels out of that. Three hundred bucks a week. 200 and I had to pay for food. I <coughs> lived in a refrigerator truck. <laughs> <laughs> that was converted to triple Fair, bunk beds. Because mine was in 96 where yours was like, yeah. 2017. 2017. And the following year was $150. <laughs> Fuck, or, went backwards. Week. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah <laughs> you got to really question life when, you, uh, yeah, when the, you're making $150 a race. It wasn't good. It wasn't uh, good. Fuck. All right. Uh, Jimmy G for you, Phil. What will you use to supplement your daily source of anger after you retire from racing? Yeah, I, know. I was actually talking to Marsh about that on when I was golfing today. I need something to fix. It's definitely not golf. <laughs> no, it's definitely not golf. Um, Who won the golf? Marsh. Marsh. Fuck. Come on. Oh, sorry. Dude, no Marsh course sucked. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> that was the problem. <laughs> that was the problem. <laughs> that was the issue. I don't know. I got to figure out something. Yeah, which I I got a pretty good idea, but uh, yeah, I need something to take away the itch of riding. Kinds of, riding blows off a lot of steam. Will you get a job lie. with troll training? Um, Will you be an instructor with troll training? I did talk to Al. Oh, you did? About, about some stuff, oh, okay. doing, doing a little bit of stuff on the side, but yeah. nothing like, you know. Uh, trolltraining.com, by the way, a sponsor of our show. John Wesley. Who who deserves more credit for troll training? Troll or Wesley? <laughs> Al. Come on. Okay. Yeah. I thought this was the point where you're going to really make fun of Al, but you didn't. You actually. No, I mean, Alex does a really good job at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, John Alex just, is a liberal. <laughs> Uh, John just hangs out. I mean, he does. <laughs> he just hangs out with Jason. You know what I mean? Like they, he's he's Jason's number one babysitter. Yeah. You know, but yeah. he's paying him a pretty big premium. Like yeah. I get all that. But uh, yeah. Big Al does a lot. He does he does a good job with it all. Check out trolltraining.com. Helped out Grant Harlan. Helped out A Ray. Helped out a lot of privateers. And uh, whether you're a vet rider, whether you're an up and coming amateur, Aiden Aiden Kiefer was using troll training for a little bit. Uh, trolltraining.com. Please check him out. All right, uh, Lax Defense Coach Welton. Uh, has there been any? Has there been a time driving Phil to club you thought just pulling over and leaving him? <laughs> <laughs> we used to take my little Fiesta that yeah. I used to Uber out of, and yeah, we argue about gas money. That was the deal. Is I'd drive him and he'd pay like the twenty dollars for gas. But no, I mean he's taken my belongings and thrown them out the window before because he's been mad at me. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's deserved it for sure. Yeah, the hat. The hat, yeah. Can, we, still can we tell the story on here yeah. about their soaring eagle? Right? Go ahead. Yeah. The listeners I mean, know. it doesn't, make you, all, doesn't like make you really look really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's all part of growing pains of the sport. Okay. I had to do the same thing with people. This, I what, got 2013. Blocked. So there's a what? racist soaring eagle. 2013. No, I was going to talk about Soaring Eagle. Yeah, when was that? 2013? Oh, 2014. 2014. No, 2016. Uh, yeah, Soaring Eagle Casino had a uh, had a race. Yeah, yeah. Big purse money. Yeah, big purse money, 10 grand to win, and they paid all the way back to eighth place. It was 1000 bucks. <laughs> and Marsh, or J-Bone, just like, yeah, I take the company truck up there. It's a long bed tundra. We had Murph. He, he drove, and um, I told Marsh, I said, hey, we, we go up there, you know, and I had a really good year that year with JGR. I made quite a bit of money and did all right. And I'm like, can we go up there? We split hotels. We split gas. He said, okay, yeah, cool. 
you know. So we go all the way up there, and we split everything, and we end up racing. <clears throat> I pull a whole shot. I win. I make ten grand cash. Marsh ends up ninth. Nick Way, eighth. Nick Way got eight. eight. <laughs> thousand Marsh bucks made eight. zero fucking. Zero money. Thousand bucks for eighth. Zero for ninth. <laughs> zero for ninth. <laughs> So I'm all stoked. We went, you know, had a couple brews that night because it's the yeah. end of the year or whatever. It's blast. And the next morning we wake up and we're like, all right, well, fuck, we're kind of on E. We pull on into the fucking gas station. I'm sitting there, but Dunger in Park said, Marsh. He goes, what? I said, your, it's your turn. He's like, for what? I said, for fuel, dude. He goes, but I didn't make any money. You did. I said, that wasn't our fucking deal. Get out of the truck. Such a dick. <laughs> Such a dick. <laughs> Ten grand to nothing. <laughs> yeah. 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 And he got out there. He swiped his fucking credit card, and we're driving on down. And all of a sudden, I look back. He's got this stupid ass dad hat on. And I'm driving. I'm looking in the fucking. Meanwhile, mirror. Phil wears dad hats now. I can yeah. Just, I don't wear dad hats. You do too. No, I don't. We're driving. I'm looking. I fuck. Hate this thing. <laughs> I turn around and I fucking, <laughs> I just fucking grab his hat off his head and I roll, or I, I roll down the window. No, like all like weird. I'm like, why are you rolling down the window? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, <laughs> and I turn around and I'm driving. And I fucking reach it off his head and I chuck this fucking hat. So you didn't like my hat. Window. And Marsh just was defeated. Made <laughs> no me. money. Paid for gas. Lost and the I hat. chucked his hat out the yeah. fucking window. Just, that's, even, called, that's called growing pains. I don't even know like what to ask. It's like, why? Or yeah. like, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. That was it. Yeah. Oh. yeah, Marsh and I have had some good times. Some good run-ins. It's fucked up. Yeah. He made no money. He owes me a hat. Yeah, and you owe him a hat. Not my fault he didn't make no money. Phil yeah. says that I owe him. I'm eternally in debt with him. That's for an unpayable debt. Unpayable. Just, yeah, just for, for like life advice and stuff? Life advice. Life yeah. advice, yeah. 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 <laughs> Dude. Yeah thinks he's going to pay me back for all that shit <laughs> not a chance all right all right from the moss 912 phil what is more annoying march banks not giving you five seconds in practice or jimmy d complaining about his lyme disease <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one dude jimmy d made a comment to me like this <laughs> that year is a good one <laughs> this year he made a comment to me because he's, he's found something something is out there to help it yeah and he said no i don't gotta hear fucking phil bitch about it anymore <laughs> You scarred him for life, dude. <laughs> I love Jim. Fuck. We used to, I used to not be able to handle Jimmy back in the day, but he's like he's grown on me a lot. He's a good dude. Uh Yeah, I don't we know. We got it, dude. You got Lyme disease. We get it. We get it. Um, I don't know. I wish yeah. I wish Jim still raced. Yeah. He's fun to watch. Yeah. I don't know what's more annoying. Yeah, we'll go with Jimmy. But now that he's not racing and we don't have to hear about it anymore, it's okay. So now I just got to deal with G fucking kicking my ass every week. All right. Uh, dumbass race fan for Marsh. <laughs> this is going to be good. I think you've said in the past that you weren't that big of a fan living in California. Are you enjoying it more now or would you still like to go back east? No, I'm, it's growing on me. Got a pretty good friend group there now and. Uh, it's been nice being able to have access to the Yamaha test track. So, is that pretty much any time you need it? Like, uh, yeah, they've been really, really yeah. good about it. Yep. Yeah, both tracks. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, we like schedule it with oh, uh, okay. with Mark and Jim, and yep. yeah, it's been it's been really good, and I've I've had a great living situation. I got a good group of people out there now, so it's definitely growing on How's me. How's the chick situation? Absent. I got nothing. Marsh is a full blown Cali boy, and he's given up the East Coast yep. dream. Yep. Mm. It's surprising because it, uh, Jacob moved to Florida, and I thought he was – I mean, he's yeah. still dressing like he's Cali guy. <laughs> but I thought, yeah, he's giving it up too. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Louisville 486. Uh, thoughts on bringing back lime for the dirt? It was successfully used for years prior to Limegate. Obviously, we don't need to add it to standing water, but could it help track condition? Yeah, it could definitely help, but – I think they're scared to death of using it. I mean, they yeah. got involved in lawsuits, right? So, yeah. I mean, if it comes down to that, I mean, yeah, you, you can't use that. It I comes mean, down to irritable skin rash when you can't yeah. even walk the next but, day. It's but like, you never had it before. San, before they made a mistake at San Diego, did you? Did you ever notice the line? I, I don't know. No, I don't oh. know. No. Yeah, maybe not. I, but right. just. I mean, obviously that one time was inexcusable. I get that. Yeah, yeah. Certain places it might be okay, but it can't be good. <laughs> For you or the bikes or whatever, right. so I don't know. Uh, I short don't gray guy. Job before the main event. Short gray guy. Phil, would you cut off both your middle fingers if you were guaranteed a Supercross title? 
Um, I'm doing the math right now. Yes. I mean, if I got paid Zach's bonus. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think you could do okay with no middle finger. Yeah, I mean, that's why I was just looking at it. Yeah, I mean, how do you yeah, write but if you're guaranteed you a Supercross title, for sure. How do you write? I don't need to write anyway. You text. Okay, you got a he went to Supercross title. Yeah, yeah so I'll go get a prosthetic. I'll figure it out. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, let me find another good one here. Uh, from Blair Park, Steve, do you know anything about Millsap's new moto track? No, I didn't know. It. No, he's got a moto track. Mm. Oh. Just, just uh, got approved seat? for it. Yeah. In Havasu? Oh, wow. That area. Uh, how far is that for me? It's pretty. I still can't. Hour there, and a half, two hours. Yeah, I'm out on that. I heard there's a track. Uh, there's a track in Barstow that we're gonna go to. It's a private Talk track. Talking about uh, not is that like, fair? Uh, no, I don't oh, think so. One. It's a private track. Um. And then there's a track in uh, off the 40 in Kingman. Some private track up on the hill is supposed to be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Kingman's like a two hours away, an hour and a half. Mm. Um, let me see. MX44, uh, Phil, what was that top secret line down the left of the rhythm section? Or were you just over jumping them, jumping the jumps? Top secret line down the rhythm section. I don't know. Where's where, On the left side? What'd you say? I don't know. I guess you were going around the rhythm section. I wasn't going around the rhythm section. I mean, the only one was like what kitchen I mentioned. I was going inside, roll, two, two, three, three. I don't know. I don't know. This guy must saw you miss a miss the jumps one lap. Oh yeah, because my bike was blown up. Yeah, I pulled off the track and had to ride around the outside of the track. Yeah. All right, uh, last one. Steve's American Pride. Steve, you too comes back to the sphere for free with backstage access, but it's just different variations of the national anthem <laughs> over and over. Are you in or out? I got no problem with the national anthem. <laughs> I want to. Oh, now he's got no problem. No, no, no. Oh, I, I don't have a problem with the song. So they tell them that's to sing the, the song and get the, the fuck night. off the stage. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess that's right because it's different variations. Is the yeah, is the, is the, yeah. Is the question? Yeah, it's right. easy at the sphere though. What are yeah, you doing? Yeah, fuck me. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> Dude, the sphere's good. <laughs> Anthony, you ever seen YouTube the sphere? Uh, just from your Twitter feed. No. <laughs> um, we were looking for it today on our way out to uh, Hoover Dam. We we're like, where the fuck's the oh, yeah, sphere it's, it's, at? We can see other it. Direction. It was a lava lamp uh, last night. Was it? Yeah, you could see it from Flemings, from parking lot. Really? At Flemings, you could see it. I was when cute. I was <laughs> paying for your guys' fucking did, $600 dinner. Did you go dinner. to Flemings? That was great. <laughs> yeah, $600. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> $600. He even Weird. paid for our Takes espresso care martinis. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think it's kind of a dick move to be like, hey, I'm not paying for the booze. Isn't it? No, yeah. I would have paid for it. Yeah. Yeah, you guys <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, appreciative that you did. Yeah, so well, yeah, I, I wanted to go to Outback. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was fu- I was tuned up last night. <laughs> you were. You <laughs> I were, was, I could tell. I was tuned. Uh, all you guys were. Who drove? <laughs> we Uber. Oh, we Uber. oh okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. It'll look like Wolf on Wall Street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll to the hotel. <laughs> or the um, battle tank would have been down. Yeah, would not have been down. And I didn't know this fucking guy was going to be there either. Yeah, so well, like, <laughs> what am I going to do? Hey, I'll pay for everybody but him. Yeah. Like, that's, <laughs> Everyone but the mechanic. That's a dick move. So, like... Yeah, he's a mechanic too. I appreciate uh, that part of it. So no, we did mention that mechanics coming. Like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember that part. Working men of the sport. I know heroes, you underrated know? heroes, heroes of the know? sport. Dialed. Anthony Lewandowski. Lewandowski. Um, all right, is that it? No, oh, that's horrible. Motorsport.com. Please go there. Check it out. All right. Uh, did we cover everything? Did we got everything? Uh, we got a weekend off. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Are you going? You staying in Charlotte? What's your weekend time? off plans, Steve? Yeah. Uh, well, fucking uh, JT is going to Italy for a GP, and I was saying on the review show, I don't know how much money you would have to pay me to get on an airplane for this mm-hmm. weekend. Like, mm-hmm. so I'm home. Like, I'm just staying yeah. home. I'll get yeah. on a bicycle, and uh, and that's about it. So now I'm blessed that my pops called me today. He goes, hey, uh, I'm gonna have sh- uh, shitty weather up here. I'm um, thinking about coming down. Is that okay? Oh yeah, yeah, Dad, you can come down. Yeah, yeah. You so know. he's gonna hang out. Yeah, he's gone. He's on his way. Nice. So uh, I'll deal with him for a co- as soon as he walks in the door. It's like an hourglass, though. You know, it's like yeah. It time started. Yeah. You got basically <laughs> maybe four fucking days, dude. And then you get the fuck out. <laughs> you know? Oh, Marsha's there hanging out with me and my dad one time, but. Yeah. 
Oh, your dad's cool. Oh, he's a fucking trip, man. Um, he's rad. And you're gonna you'll be back in Boston. Um, yeah, I'll be back in Boston. Yeah, back in, back in Boston. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was kind of cool for you to race arena cars, right? S- some extra money. Yeah, it's nice. Extra thing, right? Keep me, yeah. keep me in it. Yeah, yeah I coached all week uh, in, in SoCal doing just like private lessons yeah. at, at the public tracks, and I'll probably get in a couple more lessons this week along with riding. So. Yeah. So we won't see you in Canada this summer. It's not looking good. No. <laughs> uh, all right, Tomac Peters Shanty Kitchen Crockett, best interview tonight. KP, because you and him buried the beef. Um, I'm going to say Tomac. Okay. Yeah, Tomac was good. Yeah. It was good to get him out of his shell a little yeah. bit, kind of bullshit. Yeah, you helped you know? with that, I think. So, uh, it's good. Anthony? I'm going to say Shanty, you know, mechanics. Mechanic life. Got to stick together. Mm-hmm. Got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll go Tomac, though. Um, <laughs> Marks? Yeah, I'm going to go Tomac. And Tomac. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll yeah. go one Shanty. Yeah. Five mm-hmm. Tomacs. Um, perfect. Uh well, thanks for coming in. Uh, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Um, Anthony, thanks for jumping in. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening all these years, yeah, I guess, yeah. right? Full circle moment. You know, started as a listener and yeah. now I'm in studio. Yeah, what was, what was the coolest bit of memorabilia in here, <sighs> you think? I mean, when I first got into motocross, Reed was my guy. So okay. probably the Chad Reed jersey, but yeah. I keep Which looking. Which one? Uh, I'm looking at oh. the... Yeah, so that Yamaha that's an actual one I stole out of his locker. You can see all the number ones on it, like the wins. <laughs> I got so, a. So that was like a that's a real one out of the locker, and then uh, that one's pretty rare. My one favorite, one the contract on the wall. The con- the Tony Lessie yeah. contract, yeah. yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> <Beat that. laughs> Marshall reading it out loud, really. Just, <laughs> no matter how old that thing is, it's just like yeah, it's no. Pleasure, Framing man. it was a great move. Great move. <laughs> it was a great move. Great Tony move. lost it when I took it out of his hands. <laughs> lost his mind. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for coming in, Anthony. Uh, Thank you. Good job uh, all year long. Keep it up, man. Hopefully, we'll see you in a factory team at some point, man. That's the goal. So, that's cool. Uh, Marsh, thank you. Yeah, good luck thanks with the for rest having me, Steve. Year. It's been great. Philip. Mm-hmm. Thanks, buddy. Thank appreciate you. It. Always appreciate fun. you having us out here. Always fun to have you in, whatever you're in studio for sure. And then uh, when we will give you a break for a few weeks, you know, <laughs> on the show calling in, you know, we'll give you a break. Until Nashville. <laughs> no, maybe we'll even – unless it goes horrible at Nashville, then we'll get you uh, on. No, I will not. It's Anthony's birthday in Nashville. He's prepping for it. Yeah. Yeah. 30-30. Yeah. Showdown's yeah. going to be – Yeah, it's going to be a banger. Hey, it's going to have to be on Showdown East-West. Yeah. Who you got, Steve? Ooh, it's a good one. It's a good one. Um, I think the West is deeper to me. The West is deeper. No, I'm deeper. saying that personally between me and Phil. Well, I, I, <laughs> Dude, are you fucking for it's real right now? Man. There's one target. <laughs> <laughs> the fact you put yourself on my level dude, is mind-blowing. It's there. That's it. <laughs> it's mind-blowing. <laughs> it's it's mind-blowing. You're out of your mind, dude. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Uh... All right, Marks. Thank you. I like Talon. The confidence. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> thank you, sir. Marks, when you put the NOS together. Yep. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thanks one of these to, days. Thanks to our sponsors, PulpMexShow.com. Please check them out. I want to read them off one more time. Let's just do that. Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, Decal Works, X Brand Goggles, Renthal, Michelin, Mi- Race Tech Suspension, A Chair Beats, Firepower, Maxima, OGO, ORW, Pro Filter, FMF, Guts Racing, Renegade Race Fuels, Atlas Neck Brace. Phil Nicoletti once wore Atlas neck brace to victory in Canada. No. What? Mm-mm. You were wearing it in Canada. No. I wore it down here until that went south. Works Connection, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com, WUSA, Get Data, Wisco Piston, Lifted Trucks for Sale.com, Factory Chassis Parts, Ethica, Troll Training, MTX Braking, all on board with us. Uh, thanks to Roto. Thanks to Pookie. Uh, thanks to Moser. And, uh, and you people, thank you people for listening. Uh, no race next weekend, but we will be back here with the show. Uh, the Verb Moto guys will be in, uh, Wes Williams, Chase Stallo. Uh, I think Doug Dubox is going to be in studio, some other Yamaha people. So really, it'll be fun to, uh, fun to be here next week. Right, guys? Shit. Yep. <laughs> they sound stoned. Yeah, what the dude. fuck are you doing? This is, this is my fucking deal. Uh, all right. going down. For uh, Anthony Lewandowski. Phil Nicoletti, Marshall Welton, I'm Steve Mathis. Thanks for listening. See you next week. I'm going to be honest. I didn't even want to come on tonight. There's something I want to get off my chest. And it's about that summer when you went away to community college. I got an offer to do Playgirl magazine. And I did it. I did a full spread for Playgirl magazine. I, I mean spread, man. I pulled my butt apart and stuff. and I was totally nude and... It was weird. I 
I mean, you probably didn't hear about it because I went under the name of Mike Honcho, but I just wanted you to know that. If you could hear me, if it got into your brain somehow, that I spread my butt cheeks as Mike Honcho.